Welcome to the Whatever Dating Talk podcast. Thank you for tuning in tonight. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. I appreciate that. We're coming to you live from Santa Barbara, California, every Sunday and Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm your host, Brian Atlas. I'm joined by my co-host, Kiki. She's back there, bit shy. A few quick announcements before the show begins. This podcast is viewer-supported, heavy YouTube demonetization, so please consider donating through Streamlabs instead of super chatting as YouTube takes a brutal 30% cut. Some quick maths for y'all. So if you super chat 100, YouTube takes 30. If you donate 100, Streamlabs only takes three. Streamlabs.com slash whatever link is in the description. Donations and super chats, $10 and up will be displayed in stream overlay. Donations and super chats, $50 and up will be read slash answered. If you want to interact nearly instantly with us and weigh in on the conversation, consider sending a TTS, text-to-speech message, that $100 and up triggers TTS. TTS is via Streamlabs only. See the description for all other triggers in full details. Uh, please keep the Super Chats, donations, TTS respectful. Let's see, we have channel memberships. To become a member, hit the join button. Tier one is just $5 a month. You can also gift memberships. We're also live on Twitch right now. Pull up another tab. Go to twitch.tv slash whatever. Drop us a follow and a prime sub if you have one, and we'll check back in and uh, shout as many of you guys out as we can. We got merch, shop.whatever.com, stuff you can wear to not be naked, don't be a criminal, get some merch, follow us on Instagram, at whatever, any girls who wanna be on the show, and you can make it to Santa Barbara, DM at whatever on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram, bd underscore Alice, I never post, last post from April, not gonna clog up your feed. With uh, bullshit food photos and whatnot, check out my nonprofit. Big labia matter, BLM for short. If you're considering getting a labiaplasty, shoot me a DM and I will talk you out of it with a vigor. Definitely no ulterior motives. Definitely not a ploy. Um, if you can't catch the full shows, we have three clips channels, links in the description. Go subscribe. Without further ado, we're gonna have the guests introduce themselves. So please tell us your name, age, and occupation. Go ahead. My name is Pearl Botts. I'm 31 and I'm a singer, songwriter, and content creator. Gotcha. And uh, you recently went pretty viral. You yes. had a, a TikTok yeah. clip, Instagram reel go very viral, which we'll react to after we uh, get through all the intros. Okay. But uh, there's a New York Post article. Were there any other news organizations that <clears throat> published anything or just? Yeah, uh, the Daily Mail Australia. Oh. Um, honestly, a few. I don't remember them all, to be OK, honest. well, we'll yeah. get into it yeah. here shortly. What about you? Hi, my name is Ava Marie, and I'm 25 and a recording artist. Gotcha. And you sing too, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of music do you both make? Uh, R&B and soul. We met at a songwriting camp. Okay. So. And what kind of music do you make? I'm all over Rapper? the Rapper? R&B, pop. R&B, pop. Any rap? Let's say. No rap? Um, you Can you drop know. some? Never say never. <laughs> drop a freestyle mm -hmm. on the whatever podcast. <laughs> you guys said you make music together, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Can we, are you a soprano? Yes, technically I am, yeah. Can we, maybe we could hear a little, you wanna? Sure, maybe later. Maybe oh, later, later. okay, yeah. we'll save it for later. We'll save it for later, sure. What about you? Um, my name's Jacqueline, I'm 33, and I teach English. Teach English, okay. Um, in high school, elementary school, what No, you... it's ESL, so it's like a private campus. So okay. it can be 17 to 100, it doesn't matter. English as a second language, yeah. gotcha. Mm -hmm. And are you primarily teaching like Kazakhstani kid, what? Uh, the biggest group right now What's is French. It tends to move like. You're teaching French kids how to speak English. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that's the dominating. Gotcha. Yeah, are right you in Can Are you in Canada? Canada. Well, that's no. typically where in North America yeah. you'd expect yeah. a lot of French speakers. So. No. Yeah. Okay. All right. What about you? <laughs> My name is Kylie. I am 25, and I do tattoos for a living. Okay, very cool. How long have you been doing tattoos? A couple years. Gotcha. All right, cool. Hi, my name is Ali. I'm 25, and I am a project specialist for a supply company. All right, welcome. Hi, I'm Tiffany. I'm 18. I go to UCSB. I'm majoring in political science. Welcome. Hi, I'm Jackie. Uh, I'm 23, and I code for a living. You code for a living? <laughs> yeah, nice. I'm a software engineer. Software engineer? Okay, gotcha. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm 19, and I go to Quest College as a criminal justice major. All right. Sweet. Y'all know me. Chase, 28 years old, professional photographer and brand consultant. Rock and roll. We're going to go around the table once more, so please tell us what your current relationship status is. So, are you single, talking stage, situationship, friends with benefits, relationship, married, 
polycule, sex cult, harem, a member of a harem. <laughs> if you're single, how long have you been single? And what's the longest relationship you've ever been in? Go ahead. I'm single. I've been single for two years. And the longest relationship I've been in is a year and a half. All right. Got it. And you both live in LA, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. What about you? I'm single, I guess you could say since September ish. So, and like, you, you guess? Eh, <laughs> complicated. What, do you, what um, are you trying to do, Nick? What are you trying to do? Nick, what are you trying to do? <laughs> what are you trying to do, Nick? <laughs> it's so over right Bro, now. Bro, actually, hold on, hold on. Where's mm -hmm. the fuck? Nick's getting guillotined. <laughs> It takes him literally 30 seconds. What the fuck was that? Shit? Go to StreamYard, F11. Jesus Christ. Okay. Scuffed. Um, it's okay. It's all right. We're back. We're back. <laughs> Go ahead. Who, where did I live? You were, I she think was you saying, were. She was saying it's complicated. So you've been single since September. Yeah. So t about two months you've been mm -hmm. single. Longest relationship, I guess, on and off for four years. Whoa, okay, ish. on and off for four years. Everything's with an ish. Ish. <laughs> what does that mean? And wait, it's currently complicated? Is that? No, with a single. Okay, yeah. single for a couple, three, yeah. let's say two, three months. Longest relationship, four years, but on and off again. Uh, how many, like, breakups were there? How many times was three. it off and back on? Three? Yeah. Oh, just three? Okay, that's... Some people will, in on-again, off-again situations, that shit will break up every week hmm. so you know dozens of a times a solid strong three <laughs> okay all right so not too too toxic but a little toxic mm. <laughs> pretty toxic mm. who uh, <laughs> of the times there was a breakup who was initiating it was it you or the guy i'm always the one you'd always break up for sure and why then, why'd you take him back you know uh, <sighs> you know Ch Just people will say things away. people will change for a certain amount of time and show action that follows up what they say but then slowly old habits come back mm -hmm. it takes a lot for someone to change you really have to want it for you you know there's a Seinfeld episode about how it takes a solid three times to really break up with someone and I really I think that's true but hmm. anyways so who would come back to who? Would you go back to him or would he come back to no, you? No, no, he would DM again after the blocking was up or make a full new fake account, full new number. Between. Yeah, that particular person made a new Instagram and a new number to contact me, so, and emailed. Wow, and yeah. he was able to slide through your defenses. Um, you know, I, I'm not like ruthless, so I'm just gonna, I'll be like, I'll hear you out. We can meet for coffee, see what's up. Okay. Attest did the, same, the vibe. Did the same problems keep surfacing? Sort of, sort of. A new additional ones would come up. I feel like as you spend more time with someone, you learn more about them, you see them more so in a different light. You spend more time with them. So new things were coming up for sure. And then life threw some curveballs his way that changed yeah yeah you know was he very because you said he would make like new numbers and different emails like you would say no but would he keep like was it badgering pestering to a degree yeah okay Cause yeah. It, yeah yeah how did he not give you the ick by doing that well he did like okay. at the, well, obviously but at then the how end. did he recover from giving you the ick time I think because I just didn't really care anymore like I didn't feel the same way so I was like you know I'll just hear you out as a friend I was already talking to someone else it would it was like I think the longest in between was like a year once I, we went without speaking I was over the whole thing so I was like it was more so on some friend stuff and we both had changed and grew and were in different places of our life so then it just became completely different I was different I don't know and then it kind of took a while and then then it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but you said, we're here now. Okay. You said you were single, you've been single for two months. Mm -hmm. Was this on again, off again relationship the one that ended no. two months ago? No, okay. different. Different relationship. Okay. Different. Uh, while you were in the on again, off again relationship, was it exclusive? Was it monogamous? Or were you guys seeing other people or? Well, that's definitely part of the issue. Um, we were seeing other people-ish, but-ish. Ish. 
so can we much, define so ish? many ish, issues ish is ish. like <laughs> do you want to be doing that and should that that was not see eh, i guess you would call it a situation chip honestly it was during college too so it's a whole other that was a whole other thing okay but college is different who is it more of an issue with that you guys were seeing other people definitely me you had more of an issue with him seeing other people yeah oh okay yeah but you were seeing other people too yeah but so why, that why was, was it, kind why of why was it more of an issue that he was doing it? Because I specific we specifically had a conversation about how that wasn't going to happen, and then once I figured out that was happening on his end, because it wasn't on mine originally, I was like, "Well, I'm not just going to sit here." Wait, so hold on, let me get this straight. <laughs> I'm not trying to pry, but no, you, go ahead. You yeah. broke up with him and then yeah. blocked him later. Later, okay. Yeah, so what was the agreement that. before you blocked him? Hey, we're not going to see anybody. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. It was. And then you blocked so him, and then ago, he saw people. Yeah. But if you blocked him, why? Why would you care? Well, no, he saw people before that, and uh, obviously that triggered me being like, okay, well, I'm not going to see you anymore and be okay. with you. You know. That makes sense. Because I we specifically had a conversation that you just went against. I'm all about honesty, because like. He yeah. violated your trust. Yeah, Did and trust is important. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Betrayal was like the main feeling he do that before you guys broke up? Say that again? Did he do that before you guys broke up? Did what? See other people? Yeah, that's why we broke up. Wait, point of clarification. Were you, when you say like during this whole on again, off again thing, when you were seeing other people, was it during on stages or during off stages or both? Eventually both because the okay. lines were so blurred at that point. It was sure. a mess. You know, okay. if Sounds you've like ever been a in a toxic <laughs> situation, <laughs> it just, you know. Good times. It was doomed, Good clearly. Times. But, yeah. you know. Okay. All right. Well, there you have it. Um, <laughs> what about you? So I am very much single. Um, very much single. <laughs> very much single. <laughs> what, is, what is the difference between single and very much single? <laughs> I'm not talking to anybody. I just ended a four-year relationship similar. I was like, oh, it sounds like she's talking about me. Yeah, four years on and off. I just like... Two weeks ago, it was two ended. weeks ago. Wait, yeah. So oh, you've been so single for two weeks. I've been single for two weeks. So that's fresh. How does that yeah. feel right now? Um, it's mixed feelings because it was, yeah, just definitely toxic. Definitely a lot of what she was saying, you know, just like my trust was not there. He cheated on me, um, and he was just—I don't know—he had very weird tendencies, I guess. Like, like how so? Uh, I don't want to talk too much about, about him, but you know, um, he was very shy, like shy to the point where like he wouldn't even go in, like in anywhere with me. Like we would go to like the dispensary, and he would be like, "Can you go in?" And I'm like, he never would want to go in like anywhere. And then was he like scared? No, and I mean like if we went grocery shopping and stuff like that, but it's like I don't know, he's really weird about the dispensary for some reason, and he like he didn't ever want to hang out with any of my like roommates, my friends, like ever. So it's like him and his friends were always number one, and then it was like I came second. Sneaky and, link. Um, <laughs> hey, probably. Probably. So wait, probably. four years on again, off again relationship. How many yeah. times was it on and off? Or Honestly, off and on, like like seriously, like three times. Oh. So I was like, sounds oh. like so you guys say the same, same guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Could be. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. th three times, really, just three times. Yeah, okay. seriously, three so times. Nice. Seriously. Rule of three, I guess, like yeah. she said. It's true. It's um, true. It takes three times to break up. So, mm -hmm. okay, three times. Um, more often than not, who is breaking up with who? Oh, sorry, hold on, just a sec. グリットワンモータースポーツドナーティド99ドルヘッドヘアイコールレッドフラックスハウメニータイヤーズハブユースラシェットエバースタベットエニワンザレベルオブトキシティヒアイズエピックドットオンアンドオフアゲインシームスツ
Do you want, should I go? Yeah, 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 go for it. Go for it. Red hair equals red flags. How many tires have you slashed? Ever stabbed anyone? Mm-hmm. The level of toxicity here is epic. On and off again seems to be the theme of the night. Drug use and toxic behavior seems like it's oh, going wow. to be a great show. He's, he's out for fun. you have a response to that? Um, there was no mention of drug use, um, so I don't know where you got that from. That's for her. That's, oh. That's for her. But okay. How many tires have you slashed? None. No? Yeah, no. because... Never stabbed him? No, okay. definitely we, not. We've had some stabbings, oh, not on the show, but no. recently. I do women. not promote violence. Okay, good. Good. Sorry, Grid 1, that it, can't, I fi- it should be fixed now. It should be... <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Um, so... I think I was asking you more often than not who was breaking up with who. I think that's where we left yeah, off. Yeah, it was pretty even. Like, it was pretty even. Um, yeah. So? I would say equally we did. Like, um, he would break up with me, and then, like I, like, I would want him back, and I would break up with him, and he would want me back. Like, it was very back and forth. But you said it was only, there was only, like, three breakups. Three major times. Like, where oh. it was, like, there was space in between us, like, talking or hanging out. Where, like, other times okay, it's just, like, the saying. toxicity of, like, you know, like, F you. Like, I'm going to go do whatever or whatever. So, so would there ever be, like, a minor split? So you're talking major split where there'd be, what, weeks, months? Yeah. But maybe a minor split where it'd be, like couple days. days yeah exactly how often would that happen Oof, a lot a okay lot. <laughs> uh-huh. i still consider that like a, a technically off period a but. lot like i want to say like 15 to 20 times damn yeah okay so including the major and the minor on and offs you said it was still pretty evenly split yeah okay yeah, and does different. that change anything for you like were there like little minor like okay Okay, B, I'm just we're done, and then like t- the next day you guys get back together. Have you? Did you have no. that? Okay, no. all right. I got a follow-up <laughs> question. For both of you, were there any red flags at the beginning of the relationship where you could have predicted this behavior? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What did that look sure. like? That's like huge growth rule number one. What you see in the beginning is what's going to end it. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. can't change the person. Yeah. Okay. Period. So. So what did you see in the beginning? Oh, you know, Playboy vibes, blah blah blah, whatever. What, 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 is, what does that vibes. look like? Yeah. Um, like, well, first of all, it was again college, very different time, but going out to parties a lot, playing on the sports team that was really big. Like, constant girls are always around, fawning, whatever, and they love the attention. Someone who can't be alone ever always needs like their team to build them up. Mm. You know, that sort of vibe. And it would be like pulling teeth to have a date actually be set for things, you know? So, yeah. So you wanted the Chad that was fooling around with all the other girls. I and wouldn't you, call you, him a Chad, you but... You thought you could save him? <laughs> you thought you could change him or what? I didn't think I could change him because I think it kind of... It's always the guy who I, I feel like I don't necessarily care about either in the beginning where it's just some casual thing we met casually it wasn't a planned anything and I'm like oh like when we first met I was I had no clue who he was and was very like who are you like "Mm." like I wasn't really like oh my god who is that like I did not feel that way and then slowly but surely just time passed started getting to know the person hanging out and then like feelings crept up on me so I, I had no intentions of being like I'm gonna bag this guy and change him like that was not the vibe gotcha. at all just kind of organically grew yeah um yeah and then feelings got deep on both ends but just wasn't the right time have you had a rebound yet <laughs> not yet <laughs> what about you rebound you said it was two months ago September. well the thing two months ago is a different guy from this four-year thing but have you had a rebound from the diff- the most recent guy sure yeah Sh- sure yeah <laughs> okay all ish. Right. ish ish rebound ish <laughs> got it What about you? So I am single. I've been single for a few weeks now. And um, my longest relationship is about three and a half years. Recent breakups. A few weeks. How long was your most recent relationship? It was like five, six months. Yeah. Oh, and what about yours? How long was your most recent one? The September breakup, I guess. Like eight-ish months. Was yeah. it a situation ship or like a proper boyfriend? <sighs> I guess you, well, it, it's... Um, I feel that, I feel that. You know, you I just, it was a proper relationship, and then the last month it wasn't, technically. 
Why? Because we broke up before, and then we ran into each other at something, and then we were like, uh, fuck uh. it. <laughs> and then we tried it again, but it wasn't really what it was before. Before, yes, it was. Okay. Uh, this is Sorry. a total non sequitur <laughs> that has absolutely nothing to do with the conversation we're having right now. My OCD is like, you guys are both wearing yeah. jean jackets and sitting right next to you. You look like an amorphous mob, blob. Is one of you, like, could you maybe, just to satiate, satiate my OCD, could, could you, like, maybe remove the... Unless, like, you are wearing something underneath. Whoa, yeah. okay, hold on. The way yeah. I, can, I can take my jacket off. Just because... Okay. Just because, like... Help differentiate. Nah. For you. Yeah, like, I'm... Yeah, my... The tisms kicking in um did your turn <laughs> i went i went already oh you did yeah. wait huh she oh, said she's single, single week, broke up a few weeks ago for three and a half years yeah yeah okay gotcha um wh why did he dump you he didn't dump me oh sh shit my bad <laughs> what what an assumption brian rude <laughs> Rude. Why, why did you dump him? Well, it was it was, oh, mutual. It was mutual. Yeah, okay. it was super mutual. Just not each other's people. So rebound. Have you had a rebound? No, yet? not yet. No rebound. No. Okay. What about you? Um, I am newly in a relationship. A little over oh. a month. Congrats. Congrats. Thank you. How is it? Um, it's new. Um, because you said that. I got like my heart shattered back in March. Sorry to hear that. So it's okay. Um, so I had to start over basically everything, relearning myself. Um, well, how long was that relationship, the heartbreak a one? A year. One year. Exactly okay. a year. Damn. <laughs> Since the day I met him. You broke up year. on your anniversary. Wow. Yeah. Longest Brutal. longest relationship? It was that one. Oh, you and said it was, was a, a year, you yeah. said? Yeah. Okay, it was going to be like the happily ever after, like, oh my gosh, he fixed a heart he didn't break. And then, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Talking stage. Okay, talking stage, um, and but you haven't met this guy, correct? No. Never met him in person. I'm meeting him in like three weeks. Mm -hmm. He lives in where? Alabama. And okay. Or, How'd you guys no, he meet? He goes to school in Alabama. He lives in uh, Nola, New Orleans. How'd you guys meet? Um, he saw me on TikTok and DM me on Instagram. What was your TikTok? Something talking about Kanye. <laughs> what did what, <laughs> what, what, you say about Kanye? I have no idea. You do, what? <laughs> I think she, is it, is it like cancelable? Were you saying Kanye was right? I I don't know. Sh you have here. Show us your Kanye tattoos. So you have on I'm your arm. Number one Kanye West fan. That's oh. show us the other angle, Nick. Other angle. How many TikToks Wait. have you made of Kanye? Other angle, maybe. Well, other, I, I don't know, but maybe this quite one? a lot because. Wait, show us again. There you go. And then, don't you have a Life of Pablo on your shoulder? Yeah. Okay, we'll it's on my on, Instagram. We don't, yeah, it's on our IG if you need to see it. Um, okay, so, but you've never ha dated anybody, no. nothing prior to your no, nothing. Alabama talking 100% pure. 100% what? Pure. What do you mean by that? <laughs> like pure. Like what? What do you mean? What do you mean? Like sexually pure. Okay, so. Virgin? Okay. What about you? Uh, I. I just became single yesterday. Oh, oh shit. No. I'm so sorry. So sorry to hear that. <laughs> if you can, just speak a little closer to the microphone. Uh, newly single. Yeah. You guys split up yesterday. Yeah. Okay, how long were you guys uh, dating? Two years and a month, I guess. Two point. Damn. Okay. Is that your longest relationship? Um. Yeah, pretty much. And... Was it a was it long distance relationship or? Yeah, he lives in South Korea, so the time difference is kind of like really different. Yeah. Are you uh, Korean? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So am I. Oh my god. <laughs> Me too. Man, Wait, so many breakups. Really? What? Oh my. No way. Wow. Are you mixed? Half Korean. Okay. Half Korean. Oh, if we cool. get like one more girl, we got black pink here. Okay. Um, <laughs> Is that offensive to say? I don't know. Is that? I think that's okay, right? Was that, was that a reference? What'd you say? Blackpink is a South Cor a Korean pop. It's like a bro girl band. Girl yeah. group. Mm -hmm. thing. Okay. She sings. True. You could sing. Prob no, absolutely not. <laughs> Software engineer, so she could. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't sing, it's but I can dance. Beautiful. That's all you need. K-pop team. K-pop team. Yeah, Let's go. Halfway. The trio. Um, so many breakups at the table. <laughs> it's a heartbroken panel. Um, so, Damn. but did you guys meet in person? 
Yeah, yeah, of course. We went to the same college. Okay, so he like mm -hmm. he moved to for work or? Uh, he went back to South Korea for grad school, and uh, he he's a South Korean citizen, so he couldn't really stay here with us. Oh, her. I see. Mm -hmm. So he was here in the states for uh, college. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Whose whose decision was it, if I may ask? It was kind of mutual. I think it's really hard to do long distance. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, it's tough. Yeah. Was it on the rocks a little bit or? Yeah, I think our personality didn't really match that well and it was okay in person, but like if since it became all the arts, it was really hard to like keep it up. How long was it? Makeup. How long was it long distance? Mm, well, since he graduated, which was like after winter. I guess so like maybe like seven months but I did go back to South Korea to see him and then he also came to Seattle so it's a long time to do long distance yeah, that's stuff okay what's uh, the time difference between here and South Korea so it's right now it's like five right so it's like 10 a.m. there I, I think. think it's like 16 hours yeah. okay <clears throat> that's a tough one how did um, you said you guys met in college right yeah okay gotcha uh, I think that's all the questions after that. Uh, what about you, Emily? I'm single, and my longest relationship was six months. How long have you been single? About a year. One year? All right, six months. All right, cool. Uh, let's, uh, let's go into the, the news article. Uh, Nick, if you're able to pull it up. We about, got, about Pearl? Yes, about Pearl. What'd you do, yeah. Pearl? <laughs> Last know. episode, a girl stabbed her boyfriend. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Wait, what? Wow. Really nothing. Wow. She claimed that. she threw a cup and then wrestled him on top of him and cut him with it. But the police report said that she stabbed him with a kitchen knife. Oh, lovely. She denied that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Another super healthy oh, wow. relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> this article, I okay. cannot. Yeah, put this over there. I use this... Oh, wait, hold on. They ruined Game of Thrones, donated $100. Okay. Good to see extra Emily back. Have her on more. Chat ships you both BTW. Uh. Though if Brian and Emily had kids, they'd be pale as ghosts. <laughs> Case, would Real. you rather smash the hottest trans woman oh in the world or the oldest woman in the world? <laughs> uh, Hashtag Deus Vant. Maybe we save it for you a little later. Know, we save it for a little later <laughs> later on in the show. Here, I'll pull it back up. Um, we can. Okay, we'll save it. We'll save it. Um, yeah, for for the record, oldest woman in the world. <laughs> I've stated it before. Allow me to state it again. <laughs> Maybe we can get into that a little bit later. Uh, okay. Well, let's do the article. All right. Uh, I use this hack to shame cheap men who want to split the bill. Guys say it's manipulative. Now, do you take issue with the, the title of this article? Um, I would say that I said... <laughs> well, <let's call laughs> okay, we'll Motorsports okay, donated on $100. Harip Hawk. That first chat was scuffed. <laughs> Lot of recent breakups. Must be holiday season again. Time to shop for a new one. <laughs> to the ladies, any shopping plans for the holiday season? A new man, perhaps? Anybody? I already got mine. So. She's. Are you. The, you're <laughs> the only wow. one. Okay, all right. Um, was it. Uh, he said the first chat was scuffed. Lots of recent breakups. Must be. Time to shop Isn't for a new it, boo I think in the, the rule, holiday season. The rule is actually you, you shouldn't break up during the holiday seasons mm -hmm. from, I think, Thanksgiving to Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or no, is it? I think it's, well. Whose rule is this? Uh, I don't know. I just heard a thing. Like, you just shouldn't <laughs> break up. That? Yeah, <laughs> actually, no. I think it's from Thanksgiving through the New Year. And if you want, you can extend it through fa Valentine's Day. But mm -hmm. Thanksgiving through New Year, you don't break up. I think that's the rule mm -hmm. because bad time. Yeah. That's the unofficial Brian unofficial no rule. rule. Don't break up during <laughs> those time periods. Okay, let's yeah. read. Let's get to the article. Thank you, good one. Uh, and I think you were saying. Do you feel like this is fair? Is it fair? Is it a fair title? I would say that it is inaccurate and an in interpretation of the video that I posted. Why is it inaccurate? Um, one, it wasn't a hack. It was not used to shame rich or cheap men. 
and um, maybe guys say it's manipulative is the truth in that. Mm. Well, let's so. read the article a bit and then we'll pull up the video. So uh, I don't know, like this is, it's a lot of uh, edi editorialism with the New York Post all the time, but. Uh, this 100% genius hack will get 50-50 cheapos in check. <laughs> Splitting the bill on a first date has become a topic of contention amongst singletons online with dissenting views on whether a guy should be solely responsible for picking up the tab during the inaugural Nick, outing. scroll up a little bit. Why don't they just call scroll it a first up, date? Scroll up. The inaugural outing. But one shady dater, you're the shady dater, one shady <laughs> dater has devised a deliciously devious trick that's sure to leave tight-fisted fellas with egg on their faces. Wow, this is quite an article. Oh my God. Okay, Curtis cool. Unders Corleone donated $100. Ladies who would go on a date with Brian. Bro. It would be a great date with a candlelight dinner at Red Lobster. You bring the candles, and Brian will use words like baker's dozen, bait, <laughs> simp, and chat. Sure. And Leon, I loved Bohang, SK. Party until 7 a.m. You want to increase the TTS threshold? Uh, we'll leave it for now, but if... Should we just shelf them till after we're done with the article? Um, we can... We'll go around the, okay, he's asking, would, would you go on a date with me? A lot of you are single, so I well, fuck. Who would around. go on a date with Brian? Raise your hand. No takers. I don't know you. Here, so. we'll just. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. You, you can say yes or no, I'm not going to be offended. I would go on a date. Yeah? Yeah. I think maybe, maybe I would. I don't have any tattoos, is that? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. Okay, yeah, I, I figure girls who to. like are heavily tattered or do tattoos might prefer a guy who's tattooed but she okay. can give you some tattoos bro <laughs> uh, she can know. tattoo her name on your leg i'm okay with that I'm a, uh I no <laughs> <laughs> um if it's like friendly i guess but well, i guess that's not into the thing. mic oh sorry if it's friendly <laughs> Well, you'd only be friends with him? Well, Are you friend zoning him right now? No, I'm not. Is that a friend zone? <laughs> you just got friend zone. Friend zone, Rip. <laughs> Shit, can't win. Uh, oh, no. Oh. It's all Sorry, good. bro. Didn't you Chase, what about you? Chase, oh, I would go on a date with you, Based. bro. Let's fucking go. Let's go. LG, we're back. Yes. We're so bad. <laughs> the bromance is real. All right, okay. Let's pull up the article. <laughs> uh. Uh, if you want to can get the rest of it. Yeah. When a man wants to go 50-50 on a date with you, do this. Began going out guru, Pearl Bots. <laughs> You're a guru. An aspiring singer from LA in a trending TikTok how-to advising all the single ladies on best practices for politely jabbing a prospective partner who let's, expects them to pay. Let's watch the video. Let's just watch the video. Nick, if you could pull it up. What an article. What? Yeah. When a man wants to go 50 50 with you on a date, do this. <clears throat> oh my god. I'm so embarrassed right now. Um, wait, you wanted to just be friends? I'm so confused. This whole entire time, I thought this was a date. Oh my god. Okay, I'm so sorry. Here's my card. Here's my card. <laughs> <laughs> And so that went viral. Yes, it did. How viral? Got like um, eight million views, I think, on oh, TikTok, wow. right? Yeah, something like that. I think it's yeah. When a man like wants, when a man when a man wants. What was the uh, Nick's getting the guillotine? What was the uh, response to it like in terms of like the comments and stuff? Were you getting hate? Were you getting support? Um, definitely a lot of both. I've gotten a lot of horrible emails lots of really d like bad dms telling me i should do all kinds of stuff i've been called every like racial slur i've been threats like literally an insane amount of all kinds of different what's, what's of the worst thing anybody said to you i mean i don't know if i'm even allowed to say it on here am i uh maybe don't probably yeah best. it's it's pretty probably, like probably not best. according to any kinds of guidelines of any yeah, kind, yeah. So. don't worry about it you yeah. but people have been mean yeah a, been a lot mean. of like also just like stupid you're the, you're the worst woman on the internet like just kind of like that's like the more tame stuff i would say what i saw though when i looked at some of the comments on the video you do have some negative comments but it does actually seem predominantly from women that you actually a lot of women co-sign mm -hmm. what you said is it would you agree with that a lot of women seem to 
Agree. I've been called genius a lot of times too. Genius. So okay. I've also been called a philosopher. Ooh, philosopher. <laughs> wow. Aristotle. Guru. So yeah, I mean okay. a lot of positive things too. But really, like whenever you make any kind of content, you can't take anything too seriously, either from the good side or the bad side. Like any, you just have to be yourself, and people are gonna comment. And it's kind of cool that it, you know, gained a lot of traction and like. Because this kind of topic isn't necessarily the thing that I care about the most. There's a lot of other things that I care about talking about the most, but um, you know, having a bigger audience is always cool. Um, and I do have opinions about dating and stuff, so yeah. Have you ever pulled that move on a date? Uh, no, I've never had to. Like, I don't really go oh. on dates where, well, basically, <laughs> Ever since I decided internally that the energy I wanted to bring was to find the kind of person who is like a lifelong partner, like somebody who could be the potential father of my children. Like when I had that mindset, um, I just brought different energy to the places I go. And the men who approach me, um, you know, if I don't vibe with their energy, then I don't go out with them. The people who I do vibe with, they just don't have that kind of energy. I've, people always take care of the bill. I've never had that issue since I decided that. Um, never, like, never. Since I decided. Oh, since you decided. I have, I have the, had experiences, past. many experiences with people who went 50-50. And what I, why I made this video is because when I grew in self-confidence and self-worth and because of the work that I've done on myself, because I do think that uh, there are a lot of women who expect to be treated like princesses or queens or not do anything, but they themselves are not doing the inner work or becoming the person of character or becoming somebody who could attract that kind of a person, but expect that kind of a treatment. So I do think that there's a lot of responsibility on the woman to become like that. And if you're attracting men who are wanting to split the bill with you and who are getting mad at you or whatever, all these people in the comments who are like, telling me I'm a horrible person or using them for their money I'm like well you're telling me we would also never I would never go out with somebody like you like your energy I probably wouldn't connect with and also this video wasn't necess necessarily supposed to be a hack or advice it was more like a skit to illustrate a point I don't really think that you should do this because I do think that it can be you know, shaming towards men. And I don't want to shame men at all for anything. And I do think that sometimes men are overvalued for their income, just like men are, women are overvalued for like their physical appearance or for sex. There's, there's, oh, did you have something? I mean, you said a lot of things that I actually agree with. I wasn't expecting that from you. Oh, well. I, I, I have, I have not, not to like, <laughs> not to shit on you or no, whatever, but I, like I, that's when fine. I watched that video, I was expecting like yeah. a serious like mm -hmm. princess complex and right. that was, that was a, actually a pretty good yeah. answer. Yeah. And I think that, you know, we have to all take this into consideration when we're watching things on social media. It's like, it was a 30 second clip of like a very small piece of how I think and who I am. And of course, nobody is going to do all of the research, go through like all of the other content that I have, like nobody really knows you. And honestly, like the sensationalism of this one clip has kind of made me rethink what journalism in general is about, like with more serious topics. If this kind of a silly video is getting blown out of proportion and like making people think all these types of things about me based off not what I said, but of other people's interpretation of it, like how much more serious is our understanding of reality with like actual news? Like it, I don't know, it caused it's, me it's to reflect, point. you know? It's a good point. I mean, so. the purpose of journalism nowadays because of internet advertising and generating clicks is to make things as sensational as possible, exactly. which is kind of warping our entire perspective of reality. Mm -hmm. Did you have, I have some stuff about what you said. Did you have anything you wanted to say about her? Well, there's, spiel? there's a, uh, I think three other videos of yours that we thought were interesting. Sure. Worthy of being pulled up. And certainly the, uh, grid one motorsports donated $100 surprisingly based there. Question for the panel, are okay, you a feminist, could... and if so, what yeah. does that mean to you? Uh, we'll go around the table on that. Do you consider yourself a feminist, and what does that mean to you? I do consider myself a feminist. Um, what, is what, is, it? what does that mean? A feminist, to me, means that it's, it's a recognition that there is inequality in the ways in which women and men are treated and that there's a history of inequality. Um, and it's the fight to reconcile those differences 
not so that men and women are the same but that they're given the same opportunities and so you think like women should be should have to register for the draft for example um because you believe in like equality between the sexes so you think should women be able to be drafted for the military um no i don't i think that there's a difference between sameness and fairness i think sameness says yes women should be drafted in the military just like men should fairness is understanding that women can be taken advantage in ways that men will not be taken advantage of like sexually women can be men are actually also can be just taken advantage of in that way too so that's true that's true um but given like the history of what it is to be a woman it seems like women have more abuse when it comes to that um and women are also more susceptible and we're also like the physically weaker sex um and so yeah and also our hormones are very different like in the way in which there's i don't even know if all the women here at this table really understand like the infradian rhythm like because we're not taught about our cycle and the different hormones that we go through in a 28 day cycle yes we know about our periods but we don't a lot of us are just now learning about like the follicular phase the luteal phase like and how all of these different hormones affect our emotions and understanding all that like there's a lack of knowledge and understanding when it comes to being a woman in general so yeah okay to back up a second um With your sameness and fairness thing, Mm -hmm. to be honest with you, it kind of sounds to me like you want equality as long as it's benefiting women, but when it's not benefiting women and men can take the brunt of it, you're like, that's cool. Like, I'm fine with that. Yeah. How do you see that? Well, I mean, if, you know, if we lived in like a properly feminist world, Uh uh, there wouldn't be affirmative action initiatives to Mm -hmm. put more women in positions of uh, like workplace positions Mm -hmm. and in academic positions if we had a truly equal world, women, like I said, would get drafted into the military. Like, Mm -hmm. I think if if feminists want to truly fight for equality, it's like, put your money where your mouth is. But if you only want equality when it's benefiting you, then it's not, you don't actually want equality, you just want a world that benefits women more often. Um. Saint underscore easy donated $99. I don't understand why men are confused about playing the provider role. Women get pregnant and for the better part of a year they are more or less immobilized and dependent on their partner. Gender roles exist for a reason. It's yeah. not that hard to figure. If, if it's too much for too long, we'll boost it. Um, I think you're about to respond. Thank you, Saint. To this no, question? No, no. Oh. Just to, to what, what I just said. So do you want me to specifically address? It just, I, I, it just seems to me like feminists want equality where it benefits them. But when it comes to actual equality, like working all of the roughest jobs in the world, for example, mm-hmm. that are extremely dangerous and mm-hmm. high risk, like when it comes to those jobs, feminists never want equality there. They only want equality in the places where it benefits them. But when men have to pick up the rest of the slack, they're like, yep, that's fine. Like, we don't want equality there. You go do that, men. You know, it's like, it, I, don't, I don't think you actually want equality. I think you just want ben- more benefits for women. If you're defining equality as um, equal outcomes throughout society, equal outcomes throughout society, what do you mean equal opportunity, or no, like we oh, all that's do what, the that's exact same thing. Wanting, yeah, women talk about wanting uh-huh. equality throughout society, but if you're, I think equality is a tough term because uh, if by equality like you're where if you want, you, do you want equal opportunity instead? I think I, whatever you're talking about, like defining equality as... um, Do you want equality of outcome or equality of opportunity? I would say that I don't think that women are fighting for... uh, Okay, so... Do you want equality of outcome or equality of opportunity? Because I'm talking about equality of outcome. But if you want what many feminists want, which is equality of opportunity, I guess the question I have is, what opportunities do I have that you don't? Okay, I would say that this is how I would respond to that answer. I think that, you know, <laughs> I'm telling you we should raise yeah. the TTS. Yeah. This is crazy. Well, that was short lived. Men are more likely to be sick than women. Women have rights men do not have. Men have no parental rights. Femism has failed you. How can the patriarchy <laughs> help you today? If, if it does it like more, we'll, we'll boost it. Go ahead. Okay. (laughs) I think that women were in a position for a very long time where we were being 
treated very horribly and we still are in positions where we are treated very unfairly and very horribly. Well, how so? well, well what, also, what evidence do you have that throughout history, broadly speaking, all women or most women were treated, I think, did you say poorly or unfairly? Mm-hmm. I think she said horribly. Horribly. Mm-hmm. Hor- yeah. It's not clear to me if women were specifically because of their gender mm-hmm. or just because they were women or happened to be women that they were treated horribly. I mean, there were people who were being burned at the stake because someone called them a like witch. Like the Salem witch trials? Yeah, like that I would there say is unfair. There were also like men who were enslaved and forced into yeah. conscripted labor and military service that women were protected from. Yeah, I'm not saying it wasn't bad for men, um, but I would say that there are just, yeah. I think before we continue, because the initial question was, asking everybody if you consider yourself a feminist why don't we just go around the table yeah. get everybody's answer yeah. to that yeah. do you consider yourself a feminist and what does that mean to you yes um and to me i think that means equal opportunity also outcome though right because honestly at the end of the day if a woman does want to be drafted or does want to go fight for our country why not not let her yeah like it's not about it's not about women not being able to serve it's more that men have to register for the selective right. service and women don't have well to. i think the argument is like might as well then make it equal though right because so you think women should be drafted for the military in order to prove this point, sure, we can say that just because. I think that's a terrible idea. I mean, but the thing is, your I'm for art, it. because I'm, the thing, I'm, absolute, I'm, I'm absolutely for not it. for but it. But anatomy, I don't, want my, I don't want my daughters getting drafted. Well, yeah. Okay, wait. So, but sorry. anatomy wise, like Pearl was saying, we're born not as strong upper body wise. Like, for example, like I knew this one lady, I forget her name, but she was like this karate instructor and I saw her do more push-ups than all these men that were like jacked, but the way she had to work so much harder to get it like that than them, because it is a little bit like naturally easier for a man to bulk up doing upper body stuff, whatever. It's not just a it's little just bit, like, it's a yeah, lot. Right, so I feel like when it comes to, you're addressing a lot of physical jobs, right? Mm-hmm. So I feel like in, now flipping the script of like a lot of caregiver jobs i feel like women have and you guys can't give birth we can never give you that like as a a a thing to do like we will always be the person to bear a child and go through that and put our bodies through that so it's like at the end of the day complete equal everything is technically not possible if you're talking about physical jobs physical things because anatomy wise genetically we are different so it's like there's only so far that argument we're gonna reach a ceiling with that stuff but when it comes to opportunity like and what pearl was saying i feel like going off of that as i i'm in the music industry i go to a lot of talks i talk i see a lot of women that have gained very very powerful roles in the music industry but it's like one in five on the panel where there's like an a and r that's a woman and the way she explains how she got there and how she you know a lot of the time is in a room full of men and it takes a very i think well-rounded educated group of people to when a woman speaks up in the room treat her and respect her word just as much as a man i think i do see that a lot and sometimes it's subconscious as well so i think it's bringing everything to a conscious state of when a woman speaks and a man speaks at an equal educational level let's say you respect both their word evenly like that is what feminism is to me and do you think that because there are you used female a and r um what is that's art something repertoire something in repertoire what does that an a and r works at a label and kind of like scouts new talent <clears throat> yeah, listens to music what, um, what is what's it's uh what does it stand for though i think it's blank i forgot what the a stands for I'm but it's blank and repertoire uh do you think that this discrepancy is due to sexism um some somewhat maybe okay. do you think the fact that for example <laughs> that women earn more in modeling or that women earn more in the sex work industry do you think that that's evidence of sexism against men um i mean i don't know much i don't know i mean maybe yeah Yeah. and i do want to go around the table get everyone's answer on this just to add on one thing um do you think for example women women's nba or Mm -hmm. women's soccer the fact that they get paid less Mm. or women's tennis for example think that's uh, unfair do you, do you think that that's unfair or evidence of sexism i mean i do because if i'm looking at the work that a person does like if 
like a, a female soccer player, why is why is she not getting paid just as much as a male soccer player? Do you want to know the answer to that? Well, well I know. Let, maybe we have the everyone else okay. give their take on that. But uh, so here, let's go around the table. Are you feminist? What does that mean to you? Do you what do you think about <laughs> women getting paid less in the WNBA, soccer, athletic fields, et cetera? Um, I'm not a feminist. Um, I definitely like more traditional. Based. Um, but I guess for me, I think in today's world, like uh, men just like, they want that kind of woman without being like the type of man that deserves that kind of woman, right? It's like, if you want me to rub your feet, make your food, <laughs> wash your clothes, all that stuff, but yet you're not providing for me, you're not even giving me like, your, you're not even making me a priority, right? So. I don't know, I guess I feel like that part is like lost on, I don't know, this generation. You want me. a traditional world where women can be traditional and the men are also traditional. Mm -hmm. And they're actually living up to those values. Definitely, okay. like if I had a man that was actually living up to those values, I would. Not a dude who's like afraid to go into the dispensary. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna be clear, he, he's not a bad guy. He's not, he's just, yeah, just different personalities, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, but a feminist is someone I think who believes in women's rights and um, and really advocates for them, right? I'm just, unfortunately, don't I, I wouldn't consider myself one. And I think that the WNBA don't get it because it's like views, right? Like there's way more views for the NBA, so it's like the money that people are putting into it, it's like yes. not as much, yes. yeah. Okay, would you consider yourself a feminist? I don't think I would consider myself a feminist. I support women, um, but I guess I just don't identify with the current feminist values. Why, Why is that? Um, I feel like modern feminism, I mean, I'm totally cool not getting drafted. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to get good. drafted. As you should be. I do not want to. Yes. I'm okay with not being completely equal yep i think it works out better yeah it's good for a society to protect its women for more i think so yeah um we shouldn't send them into the meat grinder <laughs> i don't i don't want to go yeah. <laughs> i think that's totally yeah. fair and reasonable as well but again, they want to go to war though but that's not always that, i'm but kidding yeah. <laughs> um but yeah i i support women um but i'm cool not being totally completely like equal okay that's that's fine with me cool mm -hmm. how about yourself would you consider yourself a feminist i'm gonna preface this by saying that i am not educated in the matter okay. but i am i am more like jacqueline where i'm very traditional i am very also which is kind of like contradictory i'm also very independent like i have my own full-time job i don't need a man to rely on for um you know money or anything but also at the same time I'm just very, I grew up traditional, so I don't know anything else, to be quite honest. Sweet. Cool. How about yourself? I'm not a feminist. I do believe in equal opportunity, but I don't think that it makes sense for us to advocate that, advocate for that in today's society. Why, why are you not a feminist? Because women already have all the opportunities men have. Do you feel like feminism was like a healthy movement? Do you feel like it's become unhealthy it's, at this point? Yeah, it's toxic. Why is it toxic? Because it's making men feminine and women masculine. So true. So true. How about yourself? Um, I don't think I'm a feminist, but um, I, I wouldn't consider myself like traditional because I wouldn't want to stay home. I think like both genders should have like kind of like if, if they're smart and if they're really good at like coding, for example, then I think they should get into coding. But I don't think if Speaking you're to the mic a little oh, bit more. if you're like not qualified Seek for the job, I don't think you should be selected Seek just because you're like a woman or a like man. So you feel like if a woman's qualified for a job, she should be able to get it. Yeah, if if she's actually qualified. Do you do you intend on having a family someday? Yeah, of course. Do you want to have kids? Yeah. Would you want to keep working while you're pregnant and stuff? Well, I'm I code. I can just code at home. Okay. <laughs> cool. How about yourself, Emily? Feminist? Um, no, I wouldn't consider myself a feminist. I. I don't really like the new wave. I mean, people talk about like third wave, fourth wave feminism. There's just like too many. I feel like women already have all of the equal opportunity that we need and that we wanted. Um, but now it's begun to like take this sort of turn where it's like we want to support all women, but it's not women we're always supporting. So I would say um, 
I'd rather protect women and no, I don't want to get drafted. So. What do you What do you mean it's not always women who you're supporting, Emily? Um, so I'd say I see more. Are you telling me it hurts women for trans women to go into their bathrooms? Is that what you're telling me right now? <laughs> Yeah, I think it hurts women for feminists to support that movement because you're putting women in an unsafe situation nine times out of ten. Um, and yeah, most, most often than not, I see the feminists supporting that kind of thing, so I wouldn't really identify myself with that. Are you telling me that feminism has gone way too far? Yeah, it's not even like the same thing it was back in the 60s or anything. Are you telling me it's low-key destroying our modern world? I think you're pretty base, yeah. <laughs> We're back. Yeah. We're back. Where'd you want to take it from there? Uh, let's see. Well, that was the chat. So there do, was. Do, do you want to talk about why WNBA players? Yeah, make I need less? to give these here. Maybe you guys can pass these down to give one to Tiffany and give one to uh, anonymous. Sit on these guys. You guys need see boosters. Chase, you're causing mitism to flare up. That or it's the vaccine. Change your shirt so you don't have a floating head on the background. Bring yeah, it does. King it's down. like uh, Brian, yeah, I look like I'm blending in. I'm like camouflaged right it's now. Camo. Wearing an orange jumpsuit. Jesus is the way. Uh, all <laughs> right, for causing you. your tism to act up, anonymous. <laughs> Anyways, uh, to go back to the WNBA thing, this is, your position is one that I've heard many, many women say, and especially like you can look at the women's soccer team, the national women's soccer team for the USA. They're always like talking about how unfair it is that they get paid less money. Mm -hmm. The reason why it's like that is because sports and sports broadcasting is a business mm -hmm. and the reality is far less people want to watch women play soccer it's not like right. there's some like gosh. grid one motorsports donated 100 dollars. okay chase last one sorry it throws you off ladies that think you are feminist please try and understand that men value you but feminism must devalue it's men. true Curious, what what qualities do you look for in a man? Here, we'll come back to. Yeah, I think we should. I'll write that, that question down. We'll come back to that. So, yeah, but it ultimately comes down to the, like there's not right. like a governmental organization that's like we're gonna pay them this much. For sure. The teams play. There's advertisers that yeah. pay advertising money, and right. then they get like it's a business. They get a cut of that. But I also think it's because men for so long have been in a position of power and have been looked at as like the more physical, whatever, are the ones who go out and work, are the ones who do sports, are the ones who do this. So they have more years of it being socially acceptable. It's, it's so not, it's like it's not. It's I hate to burst your bubble. Wait, it's not. At. I don't but, think it's that complicated. But related to that. Oh. Go underscore aunt underscore the underscore TBL underscore yes underscore or underscore no donated $99. Be honest, do you THNK it's possible that men outperform women in hierarchies not involving sex plus beauty not because of sexism but because men have to acquire power and resources to attract women and so invest more hours, effort, and energy on competence? It's actually a really good point. Yeah, it um, is. Because there's a there is a mating pressure on men to because there's a lot of women who want men to be providers, but there's not a lot of men who want women to be providers. Ergo, there's a larger cohort of women who in a partner desire a guy who can provide, a guy who makes good money. Therefore, can you make the argument that if there's this massive pressure from the opposite sex for men to make money that they're probably going to want, like have a more of a... There's performance pressure. There's we a have performance to perform. pressure. We have to perform. See, that, that's the thing. Women oftentimes, almost always, are selected by men because of their physical appearance, their personality, their energy, so on and so forth. W women, generally speaking, don't really select men based on just their physical appearance. Obviously, women care about personality. Every woman likes a funny man, for example, and a guy with confidence. But men, in order to you know really secure a woman, they ha we have to perform. We have to make money. We have to be able to provide, especially if you want a traditional woman. Like we have to perform in society and provide value. So there's like competition, right? And the men who are performing the highest typically get the most attractive women, right? This is why like the celebrities, the athletes, uh, that you know, all, all of all of these like wealthy businessmen, they have the greatest selection when it comes to women. So there's like a huge there's a huge competition among men to perform at the highest levels possible. But women don't have to compete in that same way in order to lock down a partner. Does that make sense? Yes. 
yeah. which is kind of what drives this inequality throughout society. Like you have one for, of the factors. Yeah it's, yeah, it's it's one of the factors. Like you have think about like all the billionaires in the world. They're almost all men. Because men, we have this, you know, we were talking about hormones before. Men have the hormone testosterone. This makes us competitive. It makes us aggressive. Mm -hmm. Because of the hormone testosterone, you have, you often have like super driven men that are like extremely focused on their career and bringing value to society. And they become obsessed with their careers mm -hmm. and they make billions of dollars and they rise to the top of the hierarchy. And dudes are driven to do this for any number of reasons. Oftentimes, pulling in the best women is one of those motivating factors, whether or not men are conscious of it. So you have this natural thing that's driving massive inequality in society that just exists in nature. And I don't think it's because of sexism that that exists. I think it's just because of human nature. You guys think that's fair? I think that uh, that is fair. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that is fair. It's, it's the same pressure that women feel to be as beautiful as they possibly can. Exactly. And so that's, it's, it's the exact same pressure. So if I say, if men are like, well, you don't have to wear makeup, you don't have to buy all this stuff, it's like, well, I don't have to, but I do. I have to outperform other women with my beauty in order to attract the kind of man who's, high, who's performing to be whatever, have the most resources or whatever, because men are valued for their resources and women are valued for their beauty. That's absolutely correct. That's biology, that's how yes. we're made. Go ahead, you had something? I, can I, sorry, really yeah. quick, can I say something before that though? I think what, there's many different forms of feminism, but I think the reason that the feminist movement had to happen, although yes, it can be extreme, is because um, men abused that power and because they created the structure of the workforce to benefit them. Yes, maybe in an ideal world, if men like protected women and they, we didn't have to suffer like, and like be scared every time I went outside. I carry pepper spray everywhere I go, just in case. Like, and we hear all of these stories that are like, I'm b being put in danger. I need a man to protect me from other men. Who knows what a society would be like if there wasn't that kind of abuse? And I'm not saying that women don't do anything, but I'm saying, we're just all fucked up and we need each other to help like us balance the scales and for a really long time like there was just this huge inequality as far as like safety goes so i think women are saying like mean? i need to feel safe <laughs> like so well it, I, I need mean, some power i need some financial power because these men are like making me feel unsafe. You know what I'm saying? So that's why we kind of needed that feminism. Well, you, you, I, I think women are much less safe now than they were under the protection of a man who actually loved them. I think nowadays you have so many strong independent women out there that are like boss babes and they're out there working and they're uh, walking alone late at night throughout major cities and they don't have a man who's protecting them and these women get assaulted, you know? Like, mm -hmm. whereas back in the day throughout traditional, what you might call patriarchal societies, uh, women were accompanied by men oftentimes where they would go because yes, the mm -hmm. world is a brutal place It always yeah. has been throughout all of human history. I, I would argue that women were oftentimes safer back then I would also argue too what you call um, Or what many feminists call like liberation and bringing women into the workforce so that they could get their independence and, and uh, You know, this is something that they secured for their own good. I would plant the seed Oh, Great gosh, one sports dude. donated it's, $100. This, bro. it's like it's killing the convo. Sumi. Copy Kiko, please. You carry mace because of feminism. Men used to protect women, but you have shamed them into being soy boys. Realize that men are not the evil you want them to be. What's a soy Copy boy? Copy Kiko. <laughs> I think we should raise it to like 150 so we can have conversation go on for more than two minutes. Maybe Grid, wait, if you can give, it a, give us 30 minutes just to get through this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think, I think <clears throat> you know, I hear a lot of women talk about how they secured independence through jo joining the workforce, and there's an argument to be made there. I also think this idea of, like, liberation and empowerment through working, like, you know, I talked about this on the last episode. Read Alexander Tocqueville's writings. Like, the women of the 1800s in America, they did not see themselves, by and large, as oppressed. Like, they, they knew where their domain was and that that was in the home. And it was, they had pride in mastering that. And they raised awesome families and they were awesome wives. And they, there was dignity in that position. Like, mm -hmm. to be a great homemaker, it's a very, it's a very important role, right? I think get, getting women out of that position and into the workforce for the people at the top who run this whole society, mm -hmm. now all of a sudden you have twice the amount of people that are working in industry to support this entire capitalist superstructure and then paying taxes. 
It's possible that what you call women's liberation has actually been exploiting women as taxpayers when they might be much happier at home as uh, wives and homemakers. They you thought about that? They might be. Um, I, I can't speak for every woman, but I do think that there are some women who just want to work and they sure. want to have that option to work. And I don't, I think that there just should be that option. <laughs> if women, cause I mean, I'm somebody who, yes, I want to be a mother. Yes, I want to have a husband. I do want to have children. That is a desire of mine, but some people do not. And I also have a desire to have a successful business just because I want to prove that to myself. I like working, I guess. Like, I don't know about the traditional workforce, but like, I want to make money for myself. Like. Um, I want to be able to leave a relationship if it's not good. So I want to have that option. And I think before it was kind of forced upon women to choose a certain way. And I think women were like, well, just in case I want to have an option. Has it gone to an extreme measure? I think in some cases, yes. When you say you want to be able to work so you have the option to choose to leave a relationship, yes. do you mean in the context of marriage? Um, any kind of relationship where I might be dependent on a man to support me. Okay. Do you want like a traditionally masculine man? Kind of sounded like that. How do you earlier. define traditional masculine man? Well, I mean, do you do you want like a 21st century kind of like metro feminine guy, or do you want like a you know strong masculine man who's like the leader in the relationship? Like, what kind of guy do you want? What are the qualities of a traditional masculine man? You like, break you, it down. You, you for tell me. me what kind of man. You I'll want. tell you what kind of man I want. Okay. Um, I want somebody who. Um, where there's like mutual support in whatever we feel like our purpose is okay. on earth. Okay. Um, I, yes, I think for me personally, because I do want to have children, I do want a man who, if, you know, we decided to have children, it wouldn't be like financially burdensome for us to have children. And I get to choose like, depending on how much money I'm making at the time, depending whatever, like what kind of man like what his finances are, are or whatever, how, you many, get to how much resources. You what his finances are? What do you mean? No, sorry. I get to choose the wh the kind of man I choose. Like I can look at who their finances and then choose according to that, depending on my situation as well. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay, like, gotcha. Yeah, no, it, it totally makes sense. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm hearing, you know, it sounds like you want things relatively equal in the relationship in, in many ways, in terms of the power dynamic and stuff. Uh, and you also want equal power dynamics and a lot of equality throughout society, correct? I don't want, I feel like women should feel empowered to make the choices that best serve them. Okay, that's not an answer to my question. Earlier in the conversation, mm -hmm. you know, we, we've been having this conversation in the context of equality in society, and mm -hmm. you're telling me that you want, like, understandably, an equivalence in the power dynamic with the relationship. You want to be making your money. You want him to be making his. You guys want to be able to mutually support one another, correct? Um, yes, but if I do have a child, I do want to have the option to not have to work. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you want all of this equality throughout society, but also in your relationship, why do you not want equality when it comes to splitting the bill? Um, well, how are you defining equality? Equality is equality a big when term. it comes to splitting the bill. Like I pay fifty, you pay fifty. Uh, again, I don't think that equality means that you do the same thing. I think it means that you bring equal value to the relationship or equal value to whatever the situation is. Wait, can I say something? So if it if that means you both bring equal value, would that mean you would also pay rent, like half the rent, or would you expect your partner to pay like full rent, groceries, everything like that, even if you're working at the same time? Um, I haven't been in a situation where, I, I wouldn't go into a relationship where I, I would expect my man to pay the rent and pay for all that stuff. If I'm pregnant, so 50 50. if I'm pregnant, um, I mean, it, I think it just depends on your financial situation and who you are with, but. I'm not opposed to going 50-50 with rent. Like if we make like equal amounts of money or whatever, I wouldn't be opposed to sharing. Mm -hmm. I ideally wouldn't choose that. I would ideally like to not have to work, but we don't live in a society where like you can, I mean, you can, you can attract whoever you want, whatever, choose whatever you want. But no, that wouldn't be like, I have to have it or I'm not gonna be with you. If, if, but it depends on their energy. It depends on their ambition, you know, if like, their desire is to do that. Their desire is to provide, to give me whatever he possibly can to take care of me, to make me feel at ease. That energy is more of what I'm looking for than like an actual number. So, okay, so let's say you meet a guy and he's like, yo, I wanna provide for you. I wanna take care of you. He's mm -hmm. happy to pay for the bill on the first date mm -hmm. and the subsequent dates. Mm -hmm. And he's like, this whole like you having a business thing and like mm -hmm. going and working out in the world, 
I don't really want you to do that, but I am going to take care of you and you mm -hmm. trust him mm -hmm. and he wants to, you to be like a stay at home mom. Would you be open to that? I would ask, why don't you want me to work? Well, I can answer as, as a guy who sure. wants a wife who's a stay at home mom. Yeah. Why would I want my wife out in the world working for some random guy when she could be home with me? Like I, I have my own yeah. business, you know, yeah. like I want my woman with me cooking for me, being there to support me, to mm -hmm. take care of me, to hang out with. That's something women are very, very good at when they mm -hmm. dedicate themselves to it. Why would I want my woman out there working at some corporation or whatever when she could be home with me? Why would I want her to do that? Yeah. Um, well, for me, if I'm working some job just to make money, then I totally get that argument no, because it's... it's you're going, if, if a guy wanted to do that for you and he wanted to mm -hmm. take care of you in that way, would you be open to it? I would say that um, the reason that I do the work that I do is because it develops me as a human being and it makes me... It is impossible I, I like, to get so a straight answer no. out of you. I think yeah. you wouldn't be okay. I, don't I think like you to that. do, I you like to do the well, work. I, can I chime in? Go ahead, go ahead. Because there's no way I will never not be pursuing my dream and career. Yeah, like right. I, it develops it's you not as a person. job. I'm an artist. I have to sing. I have to perform. You donated one hundred dollars. Sorry for interrupting, but this relates to the convo. Ladies, would you rather be a boss babe woman who goes fifty fifty in finances, or be a trad wife slash zam who serves her family and husband? Also, do you think you're deserving of a high value man? We'll go around the table on that. Go ahead. Um, you want to be a stay-at-home mom or not? You you said no. Do you believe you're value, deserving of a high-value man? Hold on, I don't understand the question. He's saying, do you want to be a boss What's babe or do you want to be a stay-at-home stay oh, mom? Stay -at stay -at home. Home. Oh, stay-at-home mom. Um, I think that... You answered the question already. You you don't want to be a stay-at-home mom. I will. I would like to be a stay-at-home mom for a part of my life, yes. Okay, while you're pregnant. Do you believe you, you're deserving of a high-value man? Um, yes. Okay. And about, I get to deem whatever that is. Okay, what about you? Not gonna stay home. No yes, I'm deserving home. of a yeah. Okay. What about you? I would definitely stay home, and I definitely think I'm deserving of a high value man. Okay. What about you? I would totally stay home too. I'd be cool doing that. Um, what? Well, what is defined mm. as a high value man? It's a good question. I want to know before <laughs> That's I a answer. good question. I mean, I it's like a, it's a it depends. Value choice. is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, uh -huh. Value is in the eye of the, the yeah, beholder. But yeah. like. Generally speaking, you've got slobs in this world, and then you've got dudes that are on top of their business right. that can provide and snap necks and cash checks. I would say that's a high value man, you know, a man with confidence who can get things done. Then, yes, you I think I definitely of deserve a high value man. Um, I would be a stay at home mom in a millisecond. Um, and yes, I believe that I am okay. deserving of a high value okay. man. I don't want to be a stay at home mom. And I think I'm deserving of a high value man. Okay. All right. Sorry, 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 I didn't mean to press that. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I think it would depend on the man, to be honest. If they make twice as much as me, then I would be a stay-at-home mom. Okay. Yeah. How and much? You're, you're a software engineer in Seattle, right? I mean, yeah. software engineers, that's typically a very high-earning job. So um, I don't know if you're at liberty to... You make six figures? Yeah. Okay. Twenty, And you're 20... Three? three? Yes. 23? Six Killing figures, it. pretty good. <laughs> good job. Yeah, software engineers make good money. Um, so you need a guy to make, what, like 300K if um, to, for you to be a stay-at-home mom? Yeah, and I, would, I, I, would, I feel like I would be a good stay-at-home mom, just that I want to be, like, comfortably living, so if I... I, I could stay at home and also do my work anyways, so it sure. really depends on okay. the financial situation. Sure. Um, yes, I would. I don't want to have children unless I have the option of staying home and um, being with them. I think children deserve their mom at home until, like, they're teenagers. So, yeah, and I think I do deserve my value man. Okay. Miss Lux, thank you very much for the chat. Appreciate it. I think you were about to, I don't know if you recall your point, you were about to come in on, or you had come in on something. Oh, you had more to add. Okay, I think, well, I was... You saying you never want to give up your dreams. Yeah, no way. No way. And the way you were talking about men. Being... Oh my. Mm -hmm. Bro, I'm Ridley telling you. Sports donated $100. Chase face it, equality is whatever copy Kiko says it is. <laughs> Divorce attorneys will be the only winners in her future. Copy Kiko, men do not value your money. We value your femininity. Bingo. A man you will want will not want you. 
Apologies. Can you scoot into the table a little bit? You're just getting caught up. Yeah, before you go on, I, I want to hear what you have to say, mm -hmm. but the point that he's making kind of touches on what that last super chat was. Pretty much every woman at this ch table just said that you all deserve a high value man. High value men look for high value women. High value women have femininity to offer yeah. a man, support, help. Uh, Nietzsche said, you know, a man's happiness is I will, a woman's happiness is he will right? I've found that the healthiest relationships I've had in my life were when a woman looked at me as kind of like the hero in her life and she really admired me and looked mm -hmm. up to me and my dreams and goals and vision were her dreams and goals and vision. And when there's tension there, uh, it kind of, you know, it can tear at the relationship, right? High value men typically are very driven. They're like, they're, they're focused, they're confident, they're on a mission in the world. If you have your own mission that's fighting with his and there's conflict there, like, not a lot of high value men want that. High value men want women in their lives that make their lives easier, who they feel supported by, so on and so forth. But if, you know, if a woman's like, no, you know, I, I, I want to go work and I want to go do all these things. And like, you know, you can go take care of your stuff, but I'm going to go take care of my stuff. Like, I think it's worth asking is the kind of man that you guys are looking for. What if the dreams are aligned? Well, then that's, that's a different story. If you guys have a mutual passion, a shared mm -hmm. passion, the same vision and mission, mm -hmm. that's a different story. You know, then you guys can partner in that way. Yeah. Um, someone I know, a man named Michael Foster, or no, it, I think it was actually Jordan Peterson who said this. He said that the best marriages can only have, don't quote me on this, this might not be Jordan Peterson, but so, somebody recently said the best marriages only have one career under the household, mm. right? When you have two careers, two separate missions, this can create conflict. And typically the highest value men in society, like they need a support system. They need a partner, you know, and uh, they don't have a lot of tolerance for women that aren't bringing that like raw supportive femininity to the table. Also, men want to come home after a long day of work and just vent and the woman be there to be like the shoulder to cry on like, yes. hey, how was your day at work? And they should be comfortable enough to be like, you know what? Work sucked today. Yes. And the woman should always be, well, not always, but in a perfect relationship, I guess, they would be, the man would be, you know what? This is what happened. And the girl's like, okay, well, what are we going to do about it? Yes. How are we going to fix the problem? Yes. Not how are you going to fix the problem so that way I can go and do this? Yes. Like it, <laughs> may I add something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Like as a man on a mission in life, like the thing, the thing about high performing men, like there's, our lives are stressful. There's hard stuff, hard problems that we have to figure out on a daily basis. And as career woman, I'm sure you guys understand the stresses that come with your career, right? I know that when I come home from work, especially if I have kids, if I've spent a hard day snapping necks and cashing checks, I want to come home to my wife in the most feminine mood possible. And I'm like, like you said, like I want to be able to come home and vent and her just be like, come here, baby, let me take care of you. But if you're in a position where you've had the stresses from your life and you come home and he comes home and you don't have that feminine energy to bring your man, what is there for him to support him in the relationship? And if you need that supportive energy from him, like if you want a really high value man, like you have to ask yourself, are you going to be able to get the support that you're looking for from him? Is he going to need it from you? Mm -hmm. Will you be able to provide that to him? If you can't provide that feminine energy to him, what is it that you're offering him? Can you I know? speak to that? Um, and then I want to go back to you. Oh, okay. sorry. Do you want to go first? Or? Um, you can go first. I feel like in response to that, I get what you're saying. And yeah. I think if, if we're asking for more in this way, I understand that it gives and take. I think relationships... A really great relationship is give and take. It's reading the room, seeing what that partner needs at that time versus that partner. Because it shouldn't be one-sided where the man's always venting and the women can, woman can never vent. Venting like, is just an you know. Example, yeah. So, yeah, and I get what you're saying. And In that, a good relationship, both people are going to yeah. be there to support one exactly. another. Exactly. And I feel like just because I'm saying I want to work and I have a passion doesn't mean I can't also be feminine and support my husband or whatever. And... The way you're taught, and the thing is too, I can't generalize for all women, you can't generalize for all men. Everyone's very individual, very unique, very different, blah, blah, blah. But the way you're talking about high level men and being so driven about their career is exactly how I feel about my career. And I, like, like that's my life, that's everything to me. That is my first love, that's my passion. And to have a partner that will respect that, because I'll be able to respect him because I know the feeling so mm -hmm. well. Yeah. And I know 
how it feels to be so passionate where you live, eat, and breathe the thing you do. And it takes a lot to be extremely successful and so I'll get it but yeah it's gonna be a lot harder because that means there might we might there might need to be a babysitter there might need to be this that's why I feel like divorce rates are high because women are working in the workforce a lot more than they were years ago but at the same time you're talking about women in the 1800s being happier I mean that's a statistic based on there was no social media then it was very hard to be aware you only know what you know so they only knew what they knew then mm -hmm. but now we're or, very aware and also it's funny how you say women were safer back in the day because they had men to protect them but a lot of those men were abusing them there was a law that was passed Fake in the news. 90s that was about i'm not going to say the words were not allowed where it didn't allow men to just force sex upon their wife this is a real rule that was passed so they couldn't do that in the 90s and that's crazy to me because your man should be your protector should be the one who's there for you and so a lot of time women had to stay in marriages because they couldn't just get a house by themselves they needed the man to sign off they needed all this stuff and they a lot of the time were married to a man that wasn't even actually protecting them and actually abusing them so you keep saying a lot of the time and i understand what you're saying the points that you're making yeah like, and but, also, but I don't have my, statistics, yeah, so it's that, like, that's, that's you know. Thing. Like, when I hear these feminist art, like, they make sense And you to don't me. have statistics either, so they, it's like... They, they make... I mean, depends on what you want to talk about. Right. I could whip out a lot of stats for you, but, like, I hear these arguments from feminists, but I feel like feminists paint the world prior to, like the 1900s as this world where just all men were beating and raping no, their wives. No, that's not it. Like, like the idea, the idea hold on, the idea that, like, a lot of men were doing this, like, my, I mean, I, my question is, how does it compare it to now? Like, what? Like, right. I would love to know those stats because was it more men that are doing it now? To be honest, I don't know the statistic, but I think the thing I'm getting to is women are, I think, more comfortable and confident to speak up because they. it's all about... This is the... Because they see other women doing it or feeling empowered or whichever, you know? Like, back then, I didn't live in the 1800s. I really don't know what I, was going on. Yeah, I do want to address, because I think you guys have mentioned this a couple times. I mean, there's been a lot of different talking points that have been brought up. Uh, when it comes to physical safety, the way that you feel has absolutely no bearing on anything related to the actual incidence rate of physical violence. Jeez, okay. Yeah, maybe Donated $99. <laughs> Red, as driven as you are, you will likely end up successful and inadvertently by so doing will also isolate yourself from many good men. Successful women also want equal quality men. Successful men want feminine women and don't care about her success. Facts. So, I, can I just speak on that facts. really quick? Ten seconds. Go I ahead. don't agree because I've met a lot of high value men who are very successful that want a woman who has passion and drive and focus as well. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question on that. I can ask the whole table. Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Do you think that men lie to get laid? Yes. Do you think men will tell you what you want to hear to get laid? Never. <laughs> Go ahead. Please answer. Please. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I think okay. there's a difference between passion driven and and what else did you say? Um, well, passion drive and something else. But there's a difference between having that and having a full time career, like you know, 40 hours a week, and mm. you're not going to ever be home or like be raising the kids or, you know, I think I think there's a difference. You can have those qualities mm. while still being like a feminine woman, like you're saying. Yeah, like I, I'm a, I consider myself very feminine. Like I'm, you know, especially my music, I talk about very feminine perspective mm -hmm. of being in relationships, whatever. But I'm also speaking from a career that I'm assuming, like we're artists, so it's yeah. different. Our schedules yeah. are very different. We are very artistic, expressive, we're creating. It's just a whole other mindset in life. So I'm only speaking from my creative career perspective. And it's, you know, it's very I, so unique. okay but to, to go back to the whole thing so you're saying that these really successful men are like super stoked on the fact that you're making money and have a career I, I yeah. would argue that from a pure practicality standpoint uh, the more money a man makes the less he cares about the money that you bring or right. your career yeah. whereas a guy who you know the economic reality of today is mm -hmm. most households are going to need two incomes. Mm -hmm. So I would argue that actually the less money a guy makes, that might be the type of guy 
who is more inclined to have some sort of care about the money you bring. If he's looking long term into like, mm -hmm. okay, I want a family, the economic reality, shit's fucked, inflation, mm -hmm. all that stuff. <laughs> we're gonna need two incomes. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm. He speaking... might care, but you you specifically mentioned like high earners, and I would argue right. high earners actually the more the money the more money a guy makes, the less he fucking cares about how much money makes. Well, I didn't talk makes. about money. I said okay. specifically passion and your career oh. and drive. I didn't say financial anything. So it's like I'm okay. talking about sure. you and and you also said something about what if your dreams align? And I feel like I'm meeting a lot of people who are in a similar career where like the dream musicians. does align. Here's yes. The, here's the crazy thing about like male and you might you guys have, may have encountered this men in the entertainment industry especially like in music if they have maybe they're a little more established in their music career they probably want to fuck you and sleep with you and they're going to gas you up oh yeah you're such a great singer in an effort to bed you hmm. oh let me help you produce I mean, I feel like that's pretty normal amongst can, can a lot of... Can you tilt of, the microphone down? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, kind of what you just asked everyone, do you think men lie to sleep with you? I think yeah. that's just a generic question. So it's not even men in the industry. I feel sure. like men across the oh, board yes, might absolutely. gas you up. Yeah, like absolutely. you kind of they just gas asked. You up. But it's, so it's like, I don't really know what the point is. It's like, yes, and that's kind of your choice and to whether you want to vet this guy out and figure out how real he is or not. Cause then you can make the argument like, is there no one real who ever thinks highly of a woman ever? Like, no, there are real relationships and people who really respect women and what sure, they do and care about. Uh, not, unless you're saying there's no such thing and love's not real and relationships aren't real and everyone's in a lie. Like, no, I, I don't think they're saying, I think they're saying that the same men that will say they will sleep with you because of the same career ch um, choice or whatever is not the same type of man that's gonna eventually like end up marrying you because of the difference in what he wants versus like like what a typical high value man wants, right? A woman that will stay home and support him is not gonna typically wanna marry somebody who has like a career with 40 hours a week, not mm -hmm. gonna be home a lot. So yes, those men will sleep with you, but a lot of, I don't th think it's like you're never gonna find someone either. I think you're a great person, but I think they're just saying like a lot of more career driven men are gonna want women with a little bit less of that. There's and I, I would just add that I think, and it's evident, men and women prioritize different things in terms of what we're looking for in a partner, in terms of what we find attractive. Uh, I think if you want to pursue a career, that's fantastic for you, but in terms of it making you more appealing or more attractive to a partner, like most men, it's it's very rare that it's ever gonna add, it, it's not gonna make you more attractive. It might, it's, it's almost always gonna be a neutral or it's probably just gonna, in a lot of ways, gonna be a negative. Yeah, 100%. I feel like it depends on the guy. It really does. I know a lot of guys, I'm gonna be honest with you, uh, none of them care about a woman's career in terms of like her attractiveness. I feel like there's a lot of high value men that are in relationships or married to women who have a career though. Yeah, they're in They've, relationships or married to, the, the point Brian's making is that it's, for most honest men, a career is not going to make a woman more attractive unless he like wants to be taken care of or like Brian was saying if there needs to be some sort of like split income scenario where because you know it's it's expensive to live nowadays the traits you were describing before like ambition and drive and all that kind of stuff those can be very attractive mm -hmm. qualities in a woman for certain men like I, yeah. I personally like ambition and drive in a woman yeah not necessarily applied towards her career though but as inborn personality traits because like different guys like different types of women. Some guys I know they like like very feminine and soft women that like don't have kind of that like, you know, that edge to them. Like I, I like a woman with like a little bit of an edge to her because it's like there's, there's a drive there. And what I wanna do, the reason why I like that as a man is because I'm like, okay, I have ambitions and I'm like, how can I sync up your drive towards my mission so that we can really be effective as a couple? Grid One Motorsports donated $100. Ready, are you are an artist? Uh, the divorce lawyers watching this are taking notes. 
Men don't like women who feel the need to be the center of attention all the time, and that radiates from you like nuclear fire. Nuclear you fire? <laughs> you a gold digger 304. Oh, it's kind of a compliment. You're saying that your energy is like fire. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's on brand for the redheadedness, too. <laughs> wow, okay. Does that, um, is that, is that make sense, though, like what I'm saying? Yeah, but I think my main statement is like, you just you can't speak for all men. I can't speak for all women. No, there are men not. who do want women with really dope careers and are ambitious because that means they will understand that much more maybe his career and they can align and they might be both doing the same thing they can go to work together they can do this they can take off when they have a video shoot versus vice versa like it could be helpful and i, nice. I think that would go to her point about like having like dreams shared aligning. dreams yes you know um but yeah, I generally mean, speaking, though, it's not like most dudes out there aren't like, yeah, I want to find a woman with a sick career. It's like yeah. that's not what most dudes care about right. at all. Yeah. Can I yeah. Something? Go ahead. Um, I mean, I think the reason that a lot of my answers aren't yes and no is because a lot of answers aren't just a yes and no answer. And so for this situation, again, I can't speak for all women, whatever, whatever. And I do think that there is a point there to say, like, high earners the kind of like dream guy that all these girls are wanting yeah are they going to give a fuck about you contributing to the household income no they have enough money for you exactly and for all the kids yeah. it doesn't matter that's not what i'm looking for that's not what a woman brings saint underscore easy donated 99 dollars. <clears throat> being successful for yourself selfish doesn't lead to happiness you will be rich bored and depressed because you have no purpose in life I know this is true for men, so it will be more so for women. Mm. Stay home and sing a song for your husband. Based. Thank you, Saint. If you want to continue, go ahead. Yeah, I guess what I have to do actually kind of has, what I have to say has something to do with this. Um, yeah, I don't think they give a fuck because women do offer something different than our money. For, to a high value man, a woman in her feminine will offer something different to a masculine man. Yes. Which is what I personally want because i don't want to go 50 50 in life i want a man who's like i'll take care of you whatever whatever wait I, so you want a man who's like i'll take care of you whatever whatever you want a masculine man but you also want to live the boss babe lifestyle and to have total independence from him if you need it the lifestyle that i you're want, saying contradictory things here so what i was about to say um is that for me pursuing a career career let's just call it that it's more about me being the best version that I can be. If I just stayed at home and didn't pursue music, I didn't write songs, I didn't make content, I didn't try to build a life on my own, I would be a shell of a human being and I wouldn't be able to offer my man the love, the care, the support. I wouldn't have the energy. I know this just for myself. If I wake up and I don't do what I'm supposed to do here on earth, which is to have interesting conversations with people, is to make content, is to sing, to make music, to perform, all of those things I'm not pursuing just to make money I'm pursuing those things because it makes me feel whole and when I'm whole I can give to the men in my life with like more vigor I'm able to be there to support him I'm able because I feel good about myself when I do that can I tell you something sure I'm just gonna be totally honest like I don't think your purpose in life is to like sit around and have good conversations and to like make content and all that kind of stuff. Now, I'm not saying that you can't add value to society by doing those things, mm -hmm. but like I'm not looking for a woman whose sole purpose in life is to make content and have interesting conversations. Mm -hmm. I want to get married and have a wife and build a family. You know, like I want a woman who wants those things and sees her purpose in life as being the mother of our kids, mm -hmm. a great wife, and someone that I can build a super healthy and strong family with. The kind of guy that you're looking for, like most high performing dudes, if they're looking for a wife, they don't just want some chick who's making TikToks all day. They want a woman who wants to be the best homemaker and mom and wife that she can possibly be. And I'm saying that the, I can be the best homemaker, homemaker and wife that I can be when I know that I'm acting and doing the things that I'm meant to be doing. And I know what I'm so meant to be You know you doing. can be the best mom and wife as long as you're making TikToks all day? <laughs> can it's I say not something? about making TikToks all day, it's doing what I'm meant to do. It manifests through that. We'll let this come in, then we'll, with a you'll go then. Female physician whose husband stays at home. The common complaint heard in the doctor's lounge is very frequently about her lazy husband. Men have accepted our plight of being successful slash ambitious. Women cannot say the same today. Oh. 
That sounds like a no. whack marriage. Thank you, Cam. Appreciate it. You had something. Go ahead. Yeah. So here's something or like a fear that I have, like kind of you like brought it to mind is that as a woman, if you give up all of these things that could potentially <coughs> keep her financially stable, um, lots of friends, things like that. And if you have a man that you give those things up with and there's no guarantee that that man is going to stay because the second that that man leaves you, you lose everything, right? If his friends are your friends because he doesn't, whatever, he's not okay with you hanging out with your friends, then you lose your friends, you lose uh, like financial stability, you lose everything if that man leaves you. So it's like we risk everything. That's, that's what the purpose of marriage is. Yeah, though. can I... Go, Wait, jump no, in. I got, I got to clean this. This shit's bugging me. Yeah, I, mean, I think you can jump. Yeah, there's a lot to say about that. <laughs> marriage. So, do you actually have OCD? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but um, so marriage is actually what that security is for, right? When you get married and you get a prenup and stuff like that, you're protecting yourself from that financial burden of Sorry. you know, if he does end up divorcing you, you get half of what he earns. And, you know, you have something to start yourself off with. But I think, like, it's a false dichotomy nowadays to say that you can have a full career and a family at the same time because, you know, who's going to be raising your children? Like, either way, you would have to the put that into a third that party. Have to be made. Yeah, that, yeah, that would be the sacrifice. The children would feel that sacrifice. They're not going to have their parent. And, um, yeah, I kind of forgot the rest of my thoughts. Here, we... We will come back to this conversation. I need to get a couple chats. By the way, guys, some of these have totally fell off, so I'm not going to be able to trigger them. I have them. It, it won't pop up. I can still see them and read them, but it, it's not able to be triggered. So I'm going to just try to get through these after, chats. After this, I definitely want to get back to your question because it's important. Oh, yeah, do you want to actually is do it, it before the chat? Yeah, let's do yeah, it before it, the chat. To her point, like, I mean, that's, that's you know, you're, you're raising good questions, and to her point, that is the purpose of marriage. The purpose of marriage. Modest he him a donated oh 100 God. million dollars. <laughs> oh. Respect for women has nothing to do with your job, Here. income, I got it. etc. Here. Hi, ready. Welcome to kindergarten where we listen with our ears and this think with our brains content, before bro. we vomit up nonsensical BS. Are you on the top 10 chart, RN? Don't care then. Someday, 2L8. Okay, here's what I'm going to do for the TTSs. I'm going to just pause. I know, I know in the description it says instant. I'm not going to boost it. I'm going to pause it for 30 minutes. And then what I'll do is all the ones that come through, all the ones that come through, I'll trigger them all at the same time. So okay, sorry it's not going to be instant, guys, but it's just been too d disruptive. Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, that's, as I was saying, that, that, that is the purpose of marriage. You know, like if you're marrying somebody, you're... And if you take it seriously, most people don't take it seriously nowadays. Like, as a Christian, I take it extremely seriously. The woman that I marry, like, that's it. We're together for life. And I'm making a promise to her, I'm taking care of you for life. Like, that's my job. I'm not leaving you hanging, you know? A lot of people don't take that promise seriously, for one. And because a lot of people don't take that promise seriously, that's why divorce laws exist, right? So, like, as a guy, for example, if hypothetically I married a woman and then cheated on her, she would have every right to divorce me and take half of everything I have. And that's why those divorce laws exist and alimony and all that kind of stuff. Like the purpose of it is to protect women. Like if you're a woman and you find a guy who's traditional and he's like, hey, I wanna make you a stay at home mom, give up your career, we're gonna have kids together. If you spend 10 or 15 years not working on your career and then he just drops you, like you're screwed financially, you know? And that's why divorce laws exist to protect women. Unfortunately, because of feminism and all sorts of other stuff, it's now to the point where men can get screwed for no reason with divorce. But like that's that's the purpose of marriage. Like if you're making an agreement with a guy, hey, I'm going to give up my finances and all this stuff. Like there's, it's a promise of protection. You yeah, know? I think my problem is trust too. Like you know, mm -hmm. like that part. And also, you're dating somebody for a long period of time before you get married. So what about that dating period? I guess. We can maybe pick the, this back up, but I do need to get through a couple chat chats. AB check, thing for the uh, 20 gifted memberships. Again, these, I'm not going to be able to trigger them on the screen, but I will be able to read them. We have verbado, microchimerism, contact with semen through an orifice, allows the chromosomes of a male to absorb into a woman present in the blood, spinal fluid, and brain permanently. The ghosts of boyfriends past forever interact with a woman's neurology. And then you sent a follow-up. The chromosomes also interact with the fetus during gestation. 
influencing its development for every past sexual partner a woman has they are cheating on their future husband with. You can read more about it at the National Center of Biological Information, and this is called microchimerism. I've heard about this. Have you ever, yeah, you've heard I, about I've that. heard about that. It's honestly like the sketchiest thing in the world. Dude. <laughs> it's it's, ba it's yeah. basically the idea that like for every, to put it crudely, for every guy that a woman is with sexually, if he's blowing loads inside of her, he's actually leaving his DNA in her body and then it like incorporates itself into her body and can also interact with the fetus. So like if a woman's had a lot of past sexual partners, there's evidence that her child may end up having DNA from her previous partners. That's what the BS. fuck? Wow. I mean, it's, the, I, that is BS. it might be real, it might not be, Do but you there's, believe it? I, I believe it's possible, Come yeah. Come on. Why, well, what do you mean, come on? We'll have How to see can... the studies. Yeah, we'd have to look at the studies. We'd have to, we'd have to look one. at the studies. I think there's one. But it could be, who knows? No. Well, okay. actually, I did If it's learn... real, it's sketch. There's yeah, no I way. learned that, like, in a mother's womb, her first child's DNA is, like, always in there. And, like, the second child, so, like, if you're mm. a fifth child, you have the DNA from all your siblings before. So I think it could be true. And so you're saying if a woman has, there's a different father for the various children, then another man's D child's DNA is in your other kid's that's DNA. That's crazy. Yeah. Who knows? Who but you were knows? saying that it messes with her mentality, right? Yeah. Do, that's let's, no. let's, move, let's move on. No, that's not what I said. Uh, Derek the Traitor, again, sorry guys, that I'm not able to pull these up, but I'm, I'm going to read them. Ranking the girls out of 10 when it comes to looks only. Okay, wow, 10 being the highest. Starting to left of chase, 85415567. Okay, thank you. I guess Nika ever had a date appointment, I think she means D appointment, <laughs> just before facing something important, share your, th oh, this is Nika from uh, two shows ago. She's one of the stab, she stabbed a dude. Okay, podcast, she's gonna come back on the show. So podcast, Caesar, pre-court rituals, D appointment. Um, ever had a date, a D appointment, just before facing something important? Have any of you ever had a D appointment before going to prison or jail or? <laughs> <laughs> going to a criminal court proceeding involving you That's no in involving stabbing somebody involving terrorism no let's start over here no 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 how about just no no <laughs> no these questions no no <laughs> okay um <laughs> here we go hold up all right we have i believe this is the next one doc Vanablis. three e's equality of value is an inarguable Equality of opportunity is desirable. Equality of outcome results in tyranny and is the guiding principles behind deadly cultural Marxism. Facts. It is an indictment of our education system that some ladies can't grasp it. From Doc Venablis. It's facts. Yep. Good comment. That's I, I never heard the the three E thing and I I've heard of like the equality of opportunity, equality of outcome, but equality of value. I haven't heard that one, but I absolutely agree. Very good comment. What is it that you're list. agreeing with? Well, his whole statement, but I've never heard this three E's thing. I've heard of equality of opportunity, equality of outcome. You're but equality of you're agreeing that equality of value is true or false? True. Okay. Yeah. I think it's equality of value in the sense of like your value in terms of your life, you know? Yeah. 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 Uh, let's see, we have the saint and the sinner. Are we going to talk about how Tiffany and maybe others have the archaic belief that black indiv oh my God. <laughs> that black individuals are less uh, Tiffany, do you want to address this? Well, I never a, said wait, they were less untrustworthy or capable. Wait, I just said that. Is this the saint and the sinner? Go ahead. Sorry, Tiffany. What did you say? I said they're less safe. Less Jesus safe. Christ. Yeah. Are you basing this on personal experience or crime statistics? Jeez. Crime statistics. Okay. Yeah. What crime statistics are you basing this on? I guess just violence. Is this more like gun shooting? Is it that 13% of the population is responsible for 50% of the violent crime? Yeah. Yeah. Real. I think it, now it's 14% and 62%. Now you say a statistic about a race and your races. That's crazy. What'd you say? Huh? What'd you like say? Like a statistic is racist. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the I think movement. this is Marquette. He's a YouTuber. Um, yo, what's up, man? I'd like your stuff. If you ever want to be on the show, we'd love to have you on. If that is actually Wait, uh, is the saint and the sinner, Mar his name's Marquette. Uh, yeah, man. Would love to have you on. Uh, shoot me a DM on Instagram, Al, whatever, uh, if you're down to come what on. What content does he make? 
Uh, he does he he does some live shows like live podcasting and he talks about dating and relationships. How many how many followers or subscribers? But why you? I think he's got like I don't know. There's like gold diggers and then there's follow diggers like Tiffany. <laughs> Yo, wait, Marquette, would you? Could no. I set you up with Tiffany? Fuck. <laughs> she hasn't what? heard his follow count yet, Brian. <laughs> so I think it's over 100k. So yeah. All right, and I think Is let me just double check, no. make sure that was Nika. Doc. Let me just double check, make sure we got. Okay, cool. We're all caught up there, and then we have this one super chat here on YouTube. Win PC 99 girl on the far right. She's oh, she's right gone. Now. Okay, I'll wait. We'll I'll wait. Up. I'll wait for that. Um, and then I wanted to pull up more of her videos, but while we. Uh, here, while we wait for her to come back, I have some pre-show notes from people, so let me get into that. Uh, let's start with you, Ali. Ali, you said, I don't really like hookup culture for myself, but I had a big military oh, phases when I was 20 to 22. Did, I don't know if that was a typo. When you said I had a big military, did you mean hoe phase? Um, well, military phase slash military hoe phase. Yeah, I guess you could say uh, that. <laughs> um, <laughs> whoops. Were, so, you, were you in the military? No. So oh. basically what that means... <laughs> oh, goodness. So um, I... <laughs> Just spit I, it out. <laughs> Just spit it out. I did not know that this was going to be round of okay. <laughs> um, So <laughs> um, I met this friend... And she invited me to this bonfire, and I was like, sure, why not? And literally 99% of the people were military. And at the time, I was very like, oh my gosh, all of them are so attractive. Um, so I wasn't really like a hoe, I guess you could say. I was very, like, I'd talk to a guy, things would get serious, and then stuff would happen, and then kind of would just drop off. Like, nothing would happen. Like, after that, it kind of just... You guys know what I mean? Like, yeah. we just kind of just, the feelings just disappeared. Uh, and then on to the next one and on to the next one. And then, yeah. How many, uh, how many of these military dudes were there? Oh, goodness. Um, <sighs> I'd say probably like 10. Yeah. Is that, was, we have, that's we about, about half a platoon. Time. I think that's half a Nick, platoon. Nick, can you show oh us a platoon? <laughs> show us a platoon. <laughs> It's so easy That's to a platoon? Is Wait, that, Nick, is, could you show us the other one? Is that Navy the other, or is that the, Marine? The other one? I think it's Marine tab Corps. over. Okay, no. Tab I was, just tab over. I was very is this, Navy. It was a Navy how, thing. So like half of... It's like front row. That's a platoon. That's more than 10. That is a platoon. <laughs> okay. Are we... Brigade? Is that brigade? Battalion? What are we talking here? <laughs> um... I don't. I don't. You said ten, right? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was around there. Ten um, what? You hooked up with ten? I, I, around that. <clears throat> yep. Multiply it by three, and that's the real number. <laughs> okay. Um. So you were not in the military. I was not in the military. No. And did you say it was what branch of the military? It Coast was, Guard. It was Navy. I had a very, I'd see, I don't know why all of a sudden they'd be like, I'm in the, I'm in the Navy. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, hi, I'm Allie. <laughs> I had a lot of growing up to do. I am not the same person I was of back course, then. Just want to let you guys know. Of but how, how old are you? Uh, what does it say? Like 20 to 22. Okay. I'm 25 now. So 20, 20 to I, 22. So yeah. you've grown out of your military phase. I got my military. heart broken and then I was kind of just over it. Military. Then I kind of wanted the traditional standpoint huh. and I kind of grew out of it. Hmm. I was Delulu. I was in my Delulu land. Delulu land. Yeah, Delulu. I was very much in there. What's your tattoo say there? The oh, goodness. Um, So <laughs> I'm obsessed with this rapper Here, named show Easy. It, show it. And <laughs> it's the crazy kind. Who? Um, the crazy kind. It's no, the, from G Easy. Who the fuck is that guy? Oh, you wow. know G Easy. I have no G Easy. His I name is Gerald. Tells me like young Gerald. Like oh, no. I don't really listen. To okay, much well, it's music. in his song "Him and I," and it's with Halsey. They dated a really long time ago. I like that Who song. Who the fuck is that guy? I have no idea. Well, wait. So just <laughs> clarification: Was it a squad, section, platoon, <laughs> company, battalion, regiment, brigade, division, or corps? Uh, none of the above. And it was 10, you said? Did you memorize all that for the show? <laughs> yeah. I, I go above and After beyond. After last oh, time. I go above and beyond. Military make this men a are bit. very promiscuous. It's every show, that's Mil how Yeah, it was. And, and back to what you said, they told me what I wanted to hear. 
And okay. I was very naive if they were like, oh, yeah, I really like you. Like, I'm sure they probably had some feelings in the beginning. But then once <laughs> stuff happened, it kind of just. I want to I want to make a point. Uh Oh, okay. uh -oh. it's not <laughs> this isn't going to be offensive towards you or anything. I just want to make a point, And this is to Brian's point earlier. Ladies, men, you, you have to be careful. It tells us in the Bible to guard our hearts. Mm -hmm. Men will tell you what you want to hear in order to sleep with you. You about to write that down? Oh. Yeah. Men will tell men will tell you what I what you want to hear. Yeah. Ag what again, I love like, bombing. They love bombing. Yeah. Love bombing. Figure out mm -hmm. who who it is that you are, what it is that you like, yeah. what it is that you want. They'll tell you what yeah. you want to hear in order to sleep with you. you Got to be careful of this. Mm -hmm. Super common. That's why I left the phase. That's was... how women get their hearts broken. Be careful out there, One ladies. One too many times. Military men. You have experience with that? No, I mean, I'm, I haven't dated one, but I know how, like, promiscuous they are. Like, I've had lots of them, like, hit me up, like, super young, too. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I'm 33. Like, it's all, like, 18-year-olds, and they're just, there's there's always just so many. They just they just want to fuck, you know? Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, so like, going back to you, my first love never really told anybody. Just one day, I was at work and posted another girl, and she ended up being pregnant. To oh, this day, we never broke up. So we kind of stopped talking. <laughs> so, um, my first love was when I was like freshly 18, got my Snapchat the first day he added me, and we were together for a little over a year. And, you know, we said, like, bye, I love you, whatever. And I go to work, and <laughs> an hour later, I'm getting my phone blown up, like, hey, have you seen his Snapchat? Hey, have you seen his Snapchat? I go on a Snapchat and it's some girl on the pregnancy test, a positive, and Whoa. it was not me. Whoa. I have not talked to that man. Talked to talked to that's spoken. not English. Spoke. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I have not spoken to him ever since. We never really broke up. It kind of just, the, yeah. How did you feel when you saw that? Um, I don't remember honestly. I kind of block it out, but it it was kind of. Is it like pretty traumatizing? Didn't you say you congratulated him? Shh, nobody needs to. <laughs> um, a couple months later, I kind of <laughs> stop it. That was years ago. I was like 19, but yeah, I did congratulate him. He said thanks. <laughs> After that, I did not talk to him. <laughs> okay. Oh, here, I'll just trigger this. Thanks. Yo, Zentians, good to see you, man. Good to see you, alimony, Child support, loss of access to kids. A marriage isn't just about you. The amalgamation of the sacrificed freedom yields your legacy well slash said. future. Yep. Real women demurely show what they offer and quickly become wives. Well said, man. Zentience. Based Zentience. Thank you, man. Very good to see you back in the chat, man. It's been a minute. Uh, let's see. And then last thing here with Ali. You said your most recent ex ghosted you and left a note on your bed breaking up with you because he didn't want to be the guy that broke up with you over text. <laughs> yeah, this was the one that broke up with me in March. Um, okay. So. <laughs> oh. Oh. Modest Hikima donated $100.50. Here, i pause it again for a little bit, guys. I think Chase misspoke earlier. Equality of outcome is extra help based on situation to get outcome. Affirmative action. Equality of opportunity is equal chance to compete. Best candidate gets outcome. Chase for AF. Act. Three LA didn't want TTS sucked. Oh, it's all good. Cool. Yeah. Um, if I misspoke, thanks for clarifying. Yeah, I think you might have. What did I say? You, you. I think you said equality of outcome in place for equality of opportunity. Oh, okay. I think you meant to say equality of opportunity, but mm -hmm. whatever. Um, cool. Do you have a quick thing about the the note on the bed? Yeah. So, um, long story short, um, I was at work. Um, he just kind of just stopped talking to me and I was just like, did you bump your head? Like, what's going on? Uh, sure. Leave work early. My friend picks me up, takes me home. Uh, I walk in, not even realizing that all of his stuff is gone. And I just so happen to be like just cleaning my bed like normal. And all of a sudden I just feel like this like heavy note. And it was the key to my room. And then just a note basically saying, like, I'm sorry, I don't want to be the guy to break up with you over text, but, like, this is done. That's insanely lame. Yeah, and it was it was a very rough couple of months. Hmm. Do not want to live that ever Here, again. Let's, <laughs> let's pull up some of the more uh, more of the videos, then we'll get that super chat. Um, I think we just watch all the videos, maybe, and then, yeah, go ahead. 
Going 50-50 with a man is not equal. We live in a culture and a society that benefits men, specifically when it comes to finances. There's so much more opportunity and it's so much easier for a man than a woman. Women are at a huge disadvantage and even still, women thrive in a man's world. Given the obstacles that women have to overcome that men have probably no idea that we even do, paying for a date that he initiated is one, hot, and two, the least he could do. Okay, okay. Um, quite a few things there. So are you talking about the patriarchy? In what? Well, in that, in that clip. Um, you said it's a yes. man's world, I think. Yes. You said it's easier for men, women are disadvantaged, and that women face obstacles. Mm -hmm. So, well, one, do you think that there's a patriarchy? Yes. Okay. What does that mean? Um, that men hold greater power than women. How so? How, how do men hold greater power than women? Yeah. Um, well, in this video, I was specifically talking about the working world. I think in the working world, it's like the structure of the workforce is built for like, for men. How's, how so? I mean, um, like, don't more women have college degrees? Aren't more women college educated? Yeah, it, I think the rates are, when it comes to getting college degrees, college admission, actually attending college, I think it's like, 60 40. Wow, that's a huge advantage that women have. So, how does the workforce benefit men more? Is it college education that we're talking about, or since, is it okay, since, earning power? Well, since 1980. I'm not talking about college. Well, just education. really quick on college since he brought it up. So ever since 1980, it might even, I think it starts 1979, there have been more women going to college, graduating from college, getting college degrees. So, that's a four, more than 40 year period. So, women who graduated college in 1980 are now basically reaching retirement age. So we've had basically an entire, a whole career span of women who in that time period were graduating at higher rates than men were from university. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, how, how yeah. is the workforce more beneficial towards men? You said earning power. Can you provide um, evidence for yeah, that? Yeah, I think, you know, with a lot of the like, more like standard, uh, like tried and true, I'd suppose like high earning positions, like men. Such like as? Doctors, lawyers, um, I don't know, I'm kind what's of the, What's blank. the percentage between men and women so in those professions? I don't know all of the stats. Like I'm, I, I'm not here to bring you stats, but do you think, are there more, do you guys have stats about the opposite? Like well, truly I, curious. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm curious because you're making a claim but I'm wondering if you, do have, you have a counterclaim. I'm wondering if you have no. Well, you made a claim, and yeah. in a court of law, for example, if you present a claim, you have to provide evidence. For I'm not it. in a court of law. I'm no, you're not. But chatting you're having, in a podcast. You're having a conversation, and I'm saying, do you have any evidence for your claims? Um, I mean, I've read stuff before. Do I have it up right now? No. Um, I don't think we like need stats. Like, yeah. I do think, we need stats? Well, no. Well, I'm saying like, if you just walk into a hospital, who are you going to see primarily as nurses and yeah. women, right? So right. women are outperforming men. It's, I don't have stats either, but like but nowadays yeah. he's right, outperforming as in college and getting education to where they can get a job like that. They're outperforming men nowadays. Like, but I mean, relating it back to your original thing, you want men to pay for the first date. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like you cannot on one hand demand, first off, women are paid equally. That's already been uh, legislated back in the, uh, the, I think that was in the 60s. So it's actually, uh, if you as a woman can prove in a court of law that there are men with the exact same um, seniority in your company, if you can prove and show that he's getting paid more for the exact same work, you can actually bring a lawsuit for discrimination. Mm -hmm. So we, we've already legislated, legislated that. It's illegal to pay women less than men for the same work. So, I mean, she's, she's 23 and making six figures. Why, why don't other women do that? <laughs> um, because they're not interested in studying that. Oh, so that's oh, not so a, a choice. advantage. That's a choice. That's so it's choice. Because yeah. yeah. also at the same time, you know, if you wanted, if you wanted to become a welder, you could go learn it, and within a year and a half, two years, you could be making six figures. Why don't more women do that? Where's the disadvantage? Well, I think the thing is with 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 that, is that feminists, when it comes to equal opportunity and equal pay, you only want to secure the cushy, comfortable, high-paying, air-conditioned office jobs. You don't want equality when it comes to, for example, dangerous jobs that happen to pay well or just 
phys physically laborious jobs like I I'm think we should ask someone with experience like would you say have you ever experienced more obstacles getting to your career or like men being given more benefits in the workplace than you um for Check me i i don't think so but yeah, um i i don't have that much experience i guess mm -hmm. i had just started working like a year or yeah a year ago but i also know that at least in my company we just we recently have this like internship program and it's only like females in tech program so i feel like we're trying to get more action. females mm -hmm. in here so i don't think it would be unfair now if there was something else like some sort of male only opportunity that would be feminists would be screaming at their top of their lungs how um so you're making the claim that women are disadvantaged in the workforce and that they uh don't have the same earning opportunities that men do this is a breakdown of many of the blue collar jobs throughout society on my phone right here this is a breakdown of many of the blue collar jobs throughout society with uh how what percentage of each of those jobs are worked by men will you go ahead and read the first 10 statistics off of this please just read them uh, into your microphone roofer 90 percent logger 93 veteran 90 plumber 97 mechanic 92 carpenter 92 coal miner 94 fire, fire, firefighter 95 iron worker 92. So those are like well-paying, decent-paying, blue-collar jobs yeah, that are completely... Jobs. Yeah, you don't want any of those jobs, but you could have any of those jobs as a woman. Uh, why? I mean, I, I just, I don't understand. It's like, yeah. I'm, I'm hearing like, hey, you know, we, us women are disadvantaged, but you just told me I don't want any of those well-paying jobs. Is right. it disadvantage or is question. it that you just don't want the jobs? No, fem feminism can only exist when there's air-conditioned, comfortable office jobs that don't require physically laborious work so true wait it's but true. computer science it's I, true women don't want women I mean, don't again, want you're speaking on behalf of people that you aren't are you know what i mean it's but, like but me saying women, men don't men this like i'm but not it's, a man it's, okay she, so she just said she doesn't want any of these jobs well that's her you know what i most mean women, like there are some women, women that i'm sure have those jobs you can't generalize a whole gender there are some well, okay. I mean, for for example plumbers three percent of women are plumbers or th Three percent of plumbers are women. Yeah. Sure, they're not hundred percent for a reason. So e women do have right. the opportunity, equal opportunity, to pursue every one of those jobs. So I don't think we have an inequality at any point. I mean, if you want to talk about value, like inequality and value, I don't think it's the same. But the, I think the, the question that you need to ask yourself when it comes to the wage gap, this career stuff, it's not whether it's not whether it exists, but why it exists, and. I, at least my view is, the answer is not sexism. There's many reasons, I think, for the earnings gap, and I would say a big one is women's own choices. Women choose to go into certain careers, certain fields. Same with like what they study in university. Women choose to go into disciplines that happen to pay less. So, which is can you, okay, that's fine. Can you fine. give like an example? Of what? Like that specific example. Women choosing not to go yeah, to certain careers. Yeah, choosing a career that pays less. Like, what? Do you, give an example, I guess. Okay, so who here wants to be an iron worker? I, I have, we have some infographics on it, but... Like, who, who, who wants to be an iron worker or welder Nick, at this table? Who, who would be interested older? in making six figures doing not one of those me. jobs? I would, but it's a little dangerous. It's, it's quite dangerous. Yeah. It's quite dangerous. Would you want to do that? No. Would you want to do that? No. Would you want to do that? I might if the check is right. Okay, so yeah, you're making six figures. You might be one of that, like part of the five percent. Yeah. Most women wouldn't want to do that, and mm -hmm. so it's like, okay, you have these blue collar jobs that pay, I don't know what iron working pays, but like welding, for example, it's a it's a dangerous job. Mm -hmm. But it's not because of sexism that women aren't making the same money in those careers. It's because you guys just don't want them. I think that the disadvantage is um, partly because, like, being a woman. I mean, again, there's a variety of women, but maybe like a good like chunk of us like we're not made to do those things like i know that i'm not supposed to do any of those things like so in a way i guess i technically can do those things but i'm not made for those kinds of work so because i'm kind of made for different kinds of work i'm like technically yes i can but i'm not going to make that kind of a money so that kind of money so if a man asked me out on a date and his biology is more built to have a higher earning job then when we go on a date, I would just expect him to take care of the date because I'm not made for those kinds of jobs. And feminism, fe excuse me, feminism says women can do everything a man can do and they can do it better. I, and you're telling me as a self-professed self feminist, 
I'm not made to do those Are we jobs. able to pull up the definition of feminism? I think feminism has many... there's many different There's many different kinds, but if you look kind, it up, I'm curious of what the main one comes up as. Yeah, well, I don't we, agree we can, with that can, kind of feminism, can, I will say. That's that's fine, that's fair. And, you know, we can debate the, the definition of feminism, but to go back to mm -hmm. one of the original points that you made, you mm -hmm. said that doctors and lawyers, men get paid more in those industries, and I would agree with what you're saying that you are not made for the same type of work that men are, mm -hmm. I would say our natures are yes. different as human beings. Yes. Like I, as a man, am geared towards different work than a woman is. Yes. That's not a bad thing. No, it is not. It is going to create inequality though, because for example, you know, you mentioned lawyers. There's, a, a, there's many more high paid lawyers that are men than there are women, I'm mm -hmm. sure. Part of that is because if you want to become a highly paid lawyer as a woman, like you're going to have to freaking grind your butt off yeah, through your I'm 20s and your 30s. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not meant to do that. Exactly. And so, but <laughs> that, and that proves my point. The difference isn't because it's a man's world and it's sexism that's disadvantaging women. It's because you don't want to work through your 20s and 30s grinding at a hundred hour per week job as a lawyer. So it's not sexism that creates the disparity. It's women just don't want to do it. But I have a question. Sure. Like, um, Does that make sense? What's your um, question? Go ahead. Uh, I, I was wondering like, why you or any other woman, I guess, uh, don't really go to computer science more often because I feel mm -hmm. like as a tech job, we, well, I sit at the office if I, well, if I go to the office and we have AC and it's like all comfortable and stuff and we also make good money. So why mm -hmm. don't you do that? I wish, I wish my brain was built like that. <laughs> I just am not like that personally. And I do think that more women can do things like that, you know, have, and I think that it's typically thought of as a male job and a lot of girls just maybe aren't really thinking about that. Maybe they think about being a homemaker or a therapist or whatever. Um, but yeah, I think that there should be, or not should, but there's a lot of opportunity there for women. I think most women, most feminists would rather just complain about the wage gap than actually take jobs they don't want. I, when you said like, um, just now about how if a woman wants to be like a really high pain like on top of her game lawyer she's mm -hmm. gonna have to really bust her ass but do you do you think she has to bust her ass more than a man who has the same desire or the equal amount she might have to bust her butt Why more than a think? man because I mean law for example well I'll use my own career mm -hmm. as an example so I've been doing brand consulting with a company and uh, one of our chief executive officers is a female and in her industry, she's like, she works in finance, basically drafts uh, financial agreements, pitches mm -hmm. super high powered, like billionaires regularly, right? She's the only woman that does it in her industry. There's maybe like one or two others that are at the, at the level right. that she's at. And it's not because of sexism. It's because she has to bring really strong masculine energy to the table. And people will take her seriously when she does it. Like mm -hmm. she's a professional ball buster. She's mm -hmm. a badass. Right. But she has an energy right. that's much more aggressive than most men have. Mm -hmm. And because of that, men take her seriously. Mm -hmm. I know maybe two women that could bring that same energy to the table yeah. and be taken seriously by men. Yeah. And it's, be it's just like women are, they're, they're typically not wired in that way. Whereas, right. so with something like law, like, it's not necessarily because of sexism that there's not as many uh, high-performing female lawyers. It's like, it's a very aggressive job. For sure. It's a super aggressive job. But I do think what you just said does support the feminist argument that a woman does have to be a little bit more stepped into her masculinity in order to be respected. Why can't she be feminine, but also a lawyer and still have her word be respected? You know, I mean, like I can the, say the, something I, in the, a way the, the idea, that's maybe like more sweet, but like they're gonna be like, oh my God, this say. like girl. It's, it's, it's a lawyer you know. is not meant to be feminine. They're meant to be cut. Right, exactly. but like, I, but I naturally am just a feminine talking mm -hmm. girl. So why do I have to put on more of like a masculine character in order taken, to be respected, though? Well, and that's the feminist argument: is like I should be able to be me and, and have the same knowledge and education as you, and be able to speak the way I'm speaking without having to be an absolute like vicious beast about it in order so to it's, get my it's, word it's, across. It's, 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 I hear what you're saying. It's not the result of sexism. Hmm. For example, for me doing business, like I have to aggressively negotiate with people when I'm doing business. For sure. And if I wanted to just like approach it from like a soft, lackadaisical perspective. Yeah, that's not good. Nobody yeah. would take me no, seriously. No, for sure. And it's not, it, it has nothing to do with my sex. It's just mm -hmm. the energy that you're bringing to the table. Like, but I do. I'm, if I'm looking at a lawyer, let me put it like this. If I'm, if I'm looking for a lawyer, let's say we have two people. One's a man, one's a woman. 
the man is kind of like effeminate and soft and he's not particularly mm -hmm. aggressive. The female is a total ball buster and mm -hmm. she's very aggressive. I'm going to hire her most likely rather For than sure. the soft, effeminate man because she's going to do the job better. She's yeah. masculine energy. But she's I masculine think, energy. Mm -hmm. But again, you're speaking from your perspective and I think there are some people in the world that no matter what, they might still look at the woman Especially depending on how she looks or even she'll have to maybe even be more self-conscious of what she's wearing just to even extra be taken more seriously. Like especially when you look at women in politics, when you look at female lawyers and in order to be respected, like you're saying, like they really are super tough. They have to, you know, be it's a tough world. Yeah, it is for sure. And I it's definitely, a world. but I also agree, right? Like a man being kind of wishy-washy, like you don't want that either. You want a man who's also very firm and just equally speaking his mind in that way. But I do feel like because a woman is a woman, I feel like they're, like you said earlier, like a couple of minutes ago, you said she might have to work harder than a man. Yeah, she might have, she might because have to work against her nature. Yeah. I mean, let me, let me ask you this. Let's say you're going into a big lawsuit over some music stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody stole your music. You have to sue somebody for $500,000. You got two people. One's an aggressive man. The other's a soft, feminine, soft-spoken woman who's not particularly aggressive. You need to hire a lawyer. Which of those two individuals are you going to hire? Definitely the aggressor. Exactly. For sure. And that's not a result of sexism. It's just because you no. want the person who's going to get the job done best. Right. And that has nothing to do with sexism. For sure. But I do think women do have to put on somewhat more of a hat in order sure. to do that. You have to defy that, your own sure. nature. Um, and just like and define social norms and like stereotypical See, fe feminism says we need to change we need to change that we need to change, change the what? fact that women need to adopt a different nature to succeed that's what feminism says. i don't think that but i do think there is an initial assumption a lot of people in the world make if they see one person versus another just bare sure bone, yeah every everybody you know? everybody um, comes to conclusions because i do head. agree like in order to be a lawyer you do have to be very tough you have to be speaking with very strong will obviously you want that but at the same time there are a lot of people that regardless of the woman still doing that they're still going to view her a certain way it's just human, you know human nature but it's like yeah it's, it's human not, nature it's, yeah it's not like mean or like <clears throat> um like you're discriminating against somebody it's just like you said you're working against your nature so you're working harder to make yourself more respected but like if you get a police officer and he's acting all feminine and just like oh no one's going to respect someone like that or like a lawyer if you walk into a courtroom and they're just kind of Oh, going around being all feminine like you're gonna lose and you know you're gonna lose that <laughs> trial like but you know I'm, saying, I'm saying like for a woman who's not acting like that though but like that, there are still people feminine, who are still. we know yeah but to, to act cutthroat and aggressive and strong like that is a masculine trait so to be mm -hmm. feminine and to do that you're going against your biology and you're taking on more masculine traits I think she's saying even with a woman who has that masculine energy pe some people still won't take her seriously and mm. yeah you're not wrong I mean there's just natural biological yeah. sexism that exists right. between both sexes for sure I'm gonna let a couple of these chats come through We've got a couple notifications coming we have Carla Carla Catherine Gillarains we donated $99 this new generation of women are oh, ruining shit. our chances with real traditional men, oh. which are becoming a dying breed. Oh, oh. Christ is Lord. I wish more Christ. men think like Chase. Christ Dude. is Lord. Amen. Also, thank you for the compliment, Carla. Thank you. Appreciate it, Carla. We have another one coming in here, here in just a second. <laughs> just a second. We got Grid, moment now. Grid One Motorsports. Yeah, these, these are going to linger. Okay, we got Trevor Brown. Thank you for the membership, man. Grid One Motorsports you, donated $100. <laughs> Cheap copy Kiko, do you think before you speak, can a man sell pictures of his thumb per honor and pull six digits a month? It's true. Can a man walk into human resources department and get hired simply because he is a man? Affirmative action. If you action. do not know the answer, please learn. Oh. Ooh. Oh, Grid, shots fired. Okay, Grid One Motorsports, all right. Can I say something? There's another. Okay. Make it, you got, Do you, you know the lumberjack on Instagram that makes like millions of oh, dollars? Oh, Thorin? Just, yeah, just the like, guy who just smashes. Yeah, I love that guy. Exactly, and he's like <laughs> super famous just from cutting wood based off of his physique and his. He doesn't look, make so millions that, of dollars. Does he come, come on, on the show? I, I invited. Come Do you know on. who I'm talking about? The guy who like tat, who's got the sleeve yeah. and he yeah, yeah yeah he cuts wood. Uh, Leo, I'll pull that up again in a sec. Donated ninety nine dollars. Yeah, thank you, Cameron. This is a man's world as it was built by men. The competition in the world also makes a man's success very difficult. Yep. 
So that man by knew that Nobu is also a champion amongst men. Yep. That's why he is so successful. Men pay their dues. Do you on the right? Yeah, but who gave birth to you? Ooh. And why can't you say women don't pay their dues and women can't work as... I'm so confused as to why we can't also equally be working hard for a career. Modest Hikima donated $101. When CS grad stats are 85% men, 15% women, oh. and the workforce reflects this as 60-40, you are statistically hiring less qualified women, basic math. Ask Jackie, she was wrecked to take stats. If all women did STEM, maybe would be problem. Reality is, they don't. Men and women pursue different things and have different interests. Bro, is he saying is he Wait, saying that eighty five percent of grads are men and fifteen percent are women? But having it's aggression 60, 40 as a man is not conducive to roles like being a grade school yes. teacher, nurse, caretaker, etc. This is also why employers are more inclined to hire women for these roles over men. Men are often discriminated against for these. Is it discrimination for a woman to prefer a female OBGYN? Or like a female to do her Brazilian wax? Well, would a guy a, want no. a personal? Would a guy want a girl to do his Oh I think well, I think it's valid. His check. Would you rather have a guy or a girl do that? Check my junk. What? Check your I'm like I'm um, Here. are you talking Help about me. like a prostate? Exam? Prostate. Yeah. Would you want a guy or a girl to check your prostate? Be honest. I just prefer uh, not to get my be prostate honest. checked. To be honest. <laughs> you should. Well, that's not bad. But just be honest. What do you? I mean, isn't it? Isn't it? Don't they just put? I it, don't care. Personally. Come on, straight I'm just answer. Just gonna get it done. I don't care. Honestly, I don't ah. think I would care. I wouldn't care. I mean, if she was super hot, I'd be like, ah. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right, we have Leo here. Boomers had second wave feminism. Don't need a man. Gen X had it. The, in their whole lives millennials got third wave men are evil slash source of my problems at a young age how on earth could you think society favors men only men 70 to 80 plus lived during a patriarchy word yeah i would i would on that note i would actually argue that we live in an often female dominated world like almost all of my teachers growing up were women and man did they make sure all the boys stayed in line and throughout high school almost all of my teachers were female. And then in college, I would say probably 70% of my teachers were female. Like, it's not exactly really? what I would call a patriarchy. Yeah. It is that's interesting. Inter well, that's your specific experience because I don't know what the, again, statistically that is because I had an opposite experience. Most, most of your teachers were growing up were men? Yeah. From junior really? high on, mine were men. Interesting. I mean, oh. I had, I had almost all male teachers in junior high and it was freaking awesome and that doesn't mean just because your teachers are a certain gender mean the whole world is female dominated because of that and one work teachers force are, are paid like shit yeah i was just thinking <laughs> that they paid horribly and there's always teacher strikes and i know union. none of it's none of university. those women want to go do the tough blue collar jobs it's just sexism you know they're so disadvantaged <laughs> all right we have win pc 99 girl on the far right if you believe in equality what is more equal than splitting the bill on a date is that to me? Yeah. Oh my god, this honestly this question is boring, but um <laughs> again, like I said, women don't it's not the money that I bring to a relationship that's valuable. And if he asked a woman it's on the a date, then, then but, it, but yeah, we're in, I, and I don't know if it was First more of all, so this is you. a YouTube channel, so it's not that much better than I'm a giving TikTok. you a hard time. <laughs> okay. Um I would say YouTube though just to, I mean just No, just, YouTube is more profitable for sure. It's not even about profitable. I think it's more uh there's a greater degree of uh, effort that typically goes into a YouTube video than oh, a TikTok video. Oh, for sure, video. for sure. Uh, in any case, I was thinking about that earlier. I was thinking to myself about the fact that you have worked so hard to set up this entire facility and like build this channel and do everything. And there's so few women in comparison that are building really successful YouTube mm -hmm. channels like this. Why is that? Is it because Blair of sexism White. or women just don't want to do it? What are the stats on that? I feel like there are a lot of YouTube channels that are run. Yeah, there, do you have There some are a stats? lot of YouTube channels that are run, by, run by like women, but when I'm thinking about like successful podcasts and YouTube channels, mm. there's a I lot. Mean, by, by large, the majority of the ones that I see going viral across the internet are typically run by mm. men. Maybe what that's, are the, maybe what that, are the stats maybe that's, on that? Maybe that's it's, just my algorithm, though. Do you think it's just probably my algorithm? I feel like it's pretty even. I see tons of successful women on YouTube. Do you think it's because that's my algorithm? Them. Do I think it's harder for I, women to be successful as a YouTuber than a man? Okay, unrelated to dating, I'm just I, sorry, I, I gotta don't. cut that off. No. Okay, Jackie mentioned females in tech in internship at her company. Does this mean I can have a males in tech internship and that is all fine and dandy, or is that somehow sexism and the v reverse is not? Um, 
Well, I don't think you can have males in tech internship just just because our company is like I don't know if you go to the elevator, there's like eight guys and two girls. But I personally, I think that's also unfair. So. Okay. You think it'd be unfair? Wait, you think it's unfair that there's eight guys and two girls? No, I think it's unfair that there is only females in tech. I, I think it should just be like both genders. Okay. I think a lot of women just don't want the job. <laughs> well, I think they're trying to push more women into it, though. Because like you're saying, like we want... If we want equality, that means we do want women to be more in jobs, like you're saying, that are higher paying. And so things like females in tech or whatever it was called is their way, I think, of trying to get more women into the field so that can happen. Yeah, it's basic you know. affirmative action. Um, go ahead. Are you finished with that? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm like, uh, this is like a genuine, like, curious, I'm like just genuinely like, wondering this and like wondering what everybody's viewpoint of this is um because obviously like i see i i understand what you guys are saying and like we have different perspectives and i think we need your perspective like and you need our perspective honestly like we need each other to like really get to the truth because you i might have an extreme view to you and you have an extreme view to me but we need each other because the truth is probably somewhere in the middle in my opinion that's i mean that's a uh, fallacious argument but in my opinion ahead. um and so i guess i'm just wondering because i do see like the lawyer and the doctor agreement and like the whole like jobs are more aggressive that's why i don't want them because i don't want to be in my masculine i want to be in my feminine and i do and i am drawn to more positions that tap into my feminine mm -hmm. but i guess i kind of wonder if the structure of law from the beginning had more feminine energy it was more balanced it wasn't so aggressive would there be more space for women and is that what women are fighting for not to be in a man's world but to make the nature of the job more feminine somehow the i don't nature know of the job i don't know more feminine yeah because the way that what it does is that right mean now for a job to be more feminine so for instance let's just take business as like Sure. Just general business. What, what is the primary goal of business? To make money. Okay. So, for instance, like, for me, when I was like, oh, to have a business, I have to network. Oh, I have to do marketing. I have to do sales. Like, all that stuff, I'm like, uh, it sounds like I have to be all aggressive and shit. I don't really want to be in that vibe. But when I, re when I, um realign my thinking of what um, marketing is I'm like oh marketing for me can be me being deeply myself and sharing who I am and then when I think about sales sales is just solving people's problems right and so for me I don't like thinking about it sales but if I think about it as empathy if I think about it as oh you have a problem that I know how to solve and like I'm empathetic towards you that's feminine that's a feminine energy when I think about it like that I'm more drawn to sales I'm more drawn to networking if networking is building a community of people who support me if I think about it in a more feminine way I'm more drawn to business like that I'm not I'm just saying is there space for feminine energy in a masculine world when in the masculine workforce no and why? Why is that the case? <laughs> a resounding <laughs> no. I mean, that's your opinion. So, I mean. No, I, look, I, I'm not trying to be disrespectful or anything. No, for sure. This is a discussion. It goes back to what I said like 30 minutes ago. The feminist perspective seeks to restructure reality itself. Restructure what is at this moment. What has been and will always be. How do we know what will always be? I mean, you can, just, <laughs> you can look at the pattern of the last 5,000, 6,000 years. We've changed, though, no? Uh, yeah, we have, and a lot yeah, of those changes so... have been bad. Here's the thing. Let me, allow me to answer sure. your question, okay? okay? Yeah. Law. Can we restructure the structure of law in order to make it more feminine? Mm -hmm. What are two lawyers doing? In a, in a court of law, two lawyers fighting against one another, what are they doing? Um, trying to prove their client innocent. Well, let's only linger on this because I feel like we've already dedicated nearly an hour and a half on this. Let's try to... I'm going to wrap it up quick. Business, law, medicine, all of the sales, for example. These are industries where you have to win. You have to win. It's not about like, like teaching, for example. 
I had female teachers that were very good with empathizing with the students. That's an important, just built into the structure of the job. That feminine energy is important. Law, you are working to win for your client. Business, you are working to win. Sales, yes, empathy is important, but salesmen, the most successful salesmen, are the most aggressive at the job. They're working hard at it. Like they're, the, I know a lot of salesmen, they work freaking hard at their jobs. That's not one where you're just like feeling and like, you know, just in your feminine energy. It's like you have to work hard and follow up and like constantly follow up in order to hit your goals and your quotas and so on and so forth. These are, it's, it's masculine energy and the world is a competitive place. And in order to succeed in a competitive world, you have to bring the masculine energy to the table. Mm -hmm. It will always be like that. So why do you think that um, like feminine jobs aren't highly paid? Is it just because it's not like as needed of a skill? There's super, like, I'm just, there's super I'm just models curious. that make like millions of dollars. There's singers, dancers that make millions of dollars. Like it's, you're talking about very masculine jobs that are male dominated because you have to bring masculine energy. Well, it's also, it's also a question of scale too. Like a software engineer, for example, you can create a product that has scale that can reach thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people. So there's more opportunity to make money. Whereas if you're like, a nurse or a caregiver, there's only so many patients, for example, that you can see in a day. So you can't really scale that. And also human beings, you know, you were talking about hormones before, you know, as a woman, like you have, especially at different parts of your cycle, you have feminine energy that you feel, you know, human beings are wired temperamentally on a biological level to be drawn towards certain things. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why STEM is a male dominated field is because a lot of women just aren't interested in it. We're never going to change that. It's, it's just, it's the nature of reality. You can't change the nature of reality. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And we, we have two more videos from you, but we'll maybe get into them a little bit later on in the show because I, I want to uh, try to bring in a few of the other people here at the table. We have Jacqueline here. Jacqueline. Mm -hmm. In your bio, it says, you are the real sleeping beauty. Mm -hmm. What, huh? What does that mean? I just love sleeping. Huh? <laughs> you like sleeping? Yeah. Same. I see. Okay. It's in your Instagram bio, so I was just curious. Yeah. You say, uh, so you're a 33-year-old teacher from San Diego. You just broke up with your boyfriend mm -hmm. who was eight years younger than you. Yeah. Uh, and, look, and you're looking to just talk about my crazy past with dating as I always pick the worst guys. Yeah. Um, and so you were in a relationship, if I recall, you said, four, was this the four-year one mm -hmm. that ended two weeks ago? Yeah. Uh, so you, were you 30 and he was 21 when you guys met? 22, yeah. He was 22 and you were 30? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, and how did you meet him? Online. Dating app? Um, yeah. Craigslist? Exactly. <laughs> no, it was um, a live stream app. A live stream, Omegly? What is that? And the no, one it's called Meet Me. Huh? Meet Me. Meet Me. Yeah, and you so, can live stream and get... Oh. So were you live streaming and he messaged you or you mm -hmm. messaged? Yeah. What were you live streaming? Just my day. Oh, okay. That's yeah. Cool. All right. What was his message to you? I can't remember. I, I think he was like, hey, your baby. <laughs> <laughs> he asked for my Snapchat and I said, I don't have a Snapchat. I said, if you want to get a hold of me, my Instagram and was, uh, was he in San Diego? Instagram. Yeah. Too? Okay. Yeah. He's in Bruh. South Bay. These women, man, they talk to guys that immediately ask for the snap right off the bat. And then they're like, why doesn't it work yeah, out? I don't, yeah. even, I don't really have snap. <laughs> Four years later, why didn't it work out? <laughs> uh, you said, okay, so on, on again, off again relationship. Mm. You said he was cheating and ghosted you multiple times. Yeah. Ghosted you. Yeah. During the relationship. Yeah. So okay. when, so the times when he would break up with me, he would do it in like such a, like a savage, disgusting way. Like he would just like stop talking to me, like uh -huh. cut all communication, like nothing. Like he wouldn't tell me anything. Like he would break up with you and then just stop talking to you? Or he would just not Yeah, even... or he would get mad and just like cut communication. Isn't that like the best route? Like when you break up somebody Hell that no. you should not talk to them? I want to know answers. Like what's nah, going on? No, you don't deserve, you don't deserve <laughs> closure. Yeah, You don't deserve closure, closure. exactly. No, no. And like. <laughs> it, whether you're a man or a woman, if you want out of a relationship, you can. You don't need to provide justification for, in my view. I mean, you don't I need think to, you should have a proper breakup yeah, conversation. Yeah, just send it. Yeah, <laughs> but also, have you ever been ghosted? Do you know how that yeah. feels? 
and you're okay with just yeah, it's, ghosting somebody? It sucks, like, okay. but then eh, what are you going to do? Yeah. I totally and I mean, disagree. I mean, for, yeah, if you've been married for 10 years, just text I me. totally disagree. <laughs> I want, I'm you're divorcing kidding. you, babe. Just send me a text. I'm, I'm, I'm being a bit facetious, but... Yeah, um, okay. No, but I mean, like, would he break up with you in person? Or how would never. he... Like, oh, okay. Never. Never. Would, he would just get mad about something and then just, like, stop, like, cut all communications off. Like, probably go bang a couple chicks and then Based. miss just me. Just kidding, just kidding. No, just for kidding. sure. That's just that's. A, I'm almost positive that's what happened, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know for sure, but I'm positive, right? And so then he would, whatever, miss me, this, that, and then come back and then... Like Do you, wait, so okay, he's a younger guy, right? Have you yeah. always dated younger guys or? Since I've gotten older, yeah, I don't know. So at some point it switched where like I was the older one and they were younger. What, but when, when was that? When did that switch? Because I got older, I don't know. Like <laughs> When I was younger, it was like older guys and now the older Is that the biggest age gap, the eight year one or have you had bigger? No, I would say that's, yeah, absolutely. That's the biggest. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with with that with with age gaps in adult yeah. relationships yeah um it although it does seem to me typically women are far more likely to date older men so that's a bit unique yeah. um so okay you met him on a live streaming thing yeah were you fine were you guys living together no okay no he were you financially mom. supporting him given that you were perhaps a bit more established in your career you were older than him or you was know, it 50 50. Nah, not at all like it was definitely you know i i noticed like at the very beginning of us talking that he would do some like things like he'd be like oh you're gonna buy me dinner right and i was Thanks. just like i let it slide a couple Whoa. times and then finally i was like this is not some kind of like sugar mama type shit like this is not gonna go on like you know and then after i like was assertive like he stopped doing it like he didn't do it anymore so then when we got more comfortable with each other then it was much more like you buy something it, it got became normal because we both had bought things if, for each other so many times if you were dating a 30 year old guy would you expect him to like if you went on a date would you expect him to pay for stuff if he asked me on a date yes okay we should okay well i don't want to We'll come back to the whole who pays thing, but um, okay. So he was. Would you consider him a leech, kind of? No. Not a leech. Mm -hmm. Not no. a leech. Okay. Right. Selfish. Oh, selfish. Selfish, okay. but right. he didn't. Yeah. Okay. You also wrote here. You dated a Romeo pimp one time without realizing. <laughs> Yo. Yeah. What is a Romeo pimp? Okay. So a Romeo pimp is a type of pimp that when they type of pimp. Okay. Yeah, I know. Oh, this, so is, a, okay. this is all new to me too. So when I learned, but it's like a type of guy who he like love bombs girls so that they fall in love with him and then from that point he manipulates them to go out and have sex and make money i did not do that oh I make that very clear did he okay. i did not you? do that did he probably yeah you? he did i i didn't know that he was a pimp at all and it's a really long story of how i even like did came he wear to a fuzzy hat him. <laughs> no and that's so funny i was like that's how i envisioned pimps but like no, no, i'm no. from san diego and like san diego is just was it a white guy he was Middle Eastern. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, How did he, he, so he's a legit pimp. He like, went to jail for four years for when he was pimping. 18 for pimping and pandering. And so he, while he was dating you, did he, were you aware of like other, like he had a roster of women he was pimping out? No. So I met him after he had gotten out of jail and I met oh. him through a mutual friend who, had, who was living with me. Did you know he had been in jail? I didn't know he had been in jail. How recently? I, did. I didn't know what for. How recently after he got out of jail <sighs> did you start dating him? I'm not 100% sure. I want to say it was like maybe six months. Six like, months? It wasn't very long. You said Wait. you didn't know. It never occurred to you to ask why he was in jail? I figured it was drugs. I, You know what? I almost oh. want to say, because this was a while ago, I almost want to say like they said it was drugs. Like They didn't say it was pimping and pandering. Like His friends did not tell me, nor did he tell me it was pimping and pandering. Like They had said something different. I don't know 100% <laughs> sure what it was. If it was, I can't remember, to be honest, but it was not what how, that. How long were you dating him? Oh my God, like a, like a, so disgusting. Like maybe like a month. A, it was, a month. Yeah, it was so bad. Like Wait, question. So at what point in that month that you were dating him did you find out that he was, was, you're saying he used to be a pimp or even when he was dating you? I don't know. I don't. Well, he think tried to so. turn you uh, turn you out. I think yeah, that's the word. he he would like manipulate and like make suggestions. Like, oh, if you got a boob job, you know, you could make a lot yikes. of money stripping. That's a yikes. Like da da da. Huge and so like I saw flag. these things and I was just like. 
like what the fuck you know and then finally i had another friend that's a huge yeah. dude i think it's hilarious he went to jail for pimping and gets out immediately starts trying to yeah again. yeah trying to turn her out. <laughs> yeah fuck. and like it was just like a really creepy relationship like he wanted me to like stay like i could not talk to any guys like my head would have to be down like he wanted me to stay in the room when he left and like all this stuff and i just was not about it like i was like huh. was I he trying to it. isolate you from like people in your life hell yeah yeah that's yikes yeah Wait, why did you decide to date someone who went to jail in the first place <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a great I don't question. Know. Yeah, that is a really good question. I don't know. That stuff doesn't necessarily bother me. I guess like huh. um, doesn't strike you as like a red flag. It should. It yeah. should have, right? Yeah. Um, looking like hindsight, but I would um, say so. yeah, you know, if somebody has like a criminal record, but they're like doing something better for themselves, I, like I said, I choose horrible guys. Like. Horrible. We'll get into that. We'll get into that. Why? I have some notes here. Um, wait, so remind me, what point in the one month relationship did you find out that he was a pimp? Like very close to when it ended. I, I want to say like yeah. it was like a week before like shit, shit like hit the fan. Like my friend ended up like dragging him out of my bed, like beating his ass. Like it was a whole thing. Your male friend or female friend? Male friend. Why? Like, Why did he do? I don't know. They had like a fight or something. And then he like, that was my friend who was living with me at the time. So they had a fight. And so we were literally asleep in my room and he came into my room, ripped him out of bed, beat his ass and threw all his stuff out. And like pretty much gave me the rundown of like, everything that was going on what he was doing and after that i was like thank you well, and well, what was he doing f you just talking to a bunch of girls trying to pimp again you know trying to like you know live that life so and you, pimp again. You, was your friend trying to save you from him basically i think he had gotten into a fight with him about something like non-related and it just fit the narrative for him i don't think he like went out of his way to like be like a hero or anything okay. i'm not gonna give him that credit but <laughs> it worked in my advantage okay yeah yeah huh why do you why do you pick such bad guys I don't know. What's, I don't what's know. What's your relationship like with your dad? Oh, it's really good now. Um, it was a little bit rough growing up, but I have a really positive, good relationship with my dad. I have for the past ten years. So, but growing up, it was a little, little rocky. Yeah, but now good. So okay, you dated time. this guy. He was in jail. Um, you said you'd like to talk about how hard it is to date in this day and age. Yeah. Uh, how? Um, I think the, um, one of you guys had mentioned it. It's just like with social media, it's like everything is, it's just, it's so hard because you just have constant temptation. Like you have constant, like you can hit up a girl in their DMs and you can do this and it's just constant temptation all the time. Oh, so are you saying that it's a, it's a man thing? No, like I the think men it's a have both thing. The They're men have temp to hold on. The men have temptation, and the women are totally innocent not in this all. whole social media not at all. dynamic. Mm -mm. Okay, not at all. I mean, there's lots of temptation for women too. I mean, there's lots of guys that will DM you. I mean, I probably way so more than men, depending on what guy you know, what kind of guy you are. Sure. But I just think there's so easy now. Like, it's so easy to like not value the person you're in because you think you deserve someone better or you're looking at this girl and why doesn't just like comparison it's just so like mental fuck mm. you know and so it just makes things a lot more difficult i think but you don't have to do social media that's true or you could also like how would i meet people then if i didn't do social media i love your go out and hang out with people <laughs> i know it's so wholesome huh? yeah i don't know like <laughs> wait so are you saying social media is a bad thing or a good thing I think both. I think both. I think there's a lot of good things that come from social social media, like you know, creativity, um, like stuff like this. Like I I watch YouTube all the time, like every day. Yeah, you know, just like dating wise. Dating wise, definitely. I think it's bad. I think it's toxic Didn't and bad. Didn't you say like that's how you meet people? Yeah, it's the only way I meet people. That because she wants to stay home. Yeah, right. I'm you a homebody though. I'm a oh, homebody. I don't I really see. go out. I don't really. Oh, I don't drink. I don't good. go out. Like oh, I'm a complete pretty. homebody. Like I want to like I want to stay in all the time. Did so that's you my used problem. to be that way? Like did you used to like in your younger years? Crazy when partier. I was super young, crazy like party. 17, 16, 18. But like, I've been a homebody for a long time, which oh, okay. is why I don't really meet people home like the normal good. way. It's like, I have to meet people I like through. A homebody. I'm a homebody. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You said that uh, it makes you feel pretty hopeless in actually finding someone that you'll marry and have kids with yeah. so late in the game. When you say so late in the game, do you mean because you're 33? Is that yeah. what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. And um, and you mentioned that the relationship that you were in, it was a four year on again, off again relationship. It ended two weeks ago and this person was uh, eight years your junior, is that correct? Yeah. Do you think that being in an on again, off again situationship mm -hmm. You consider it a situationship, correct? It's definitely a relationship. Oh, relationship. Yeah. Sorry. Um, 
with someone eight years your junior who, I mean, clearly you aren't going to get stability and commitment from, right. especially for the past four years when this is a pretty critical time period for finding a husband, um, do you think that maybe, I mean, you he was 21 when you were 30? 22, yeah. Or 22? Yeah. I mean, do you think most 22-year-old men are like ready to get married and... Yeah, I mean, kids I wasn't married or ready to have kids oh, okay. at that moment at, in my life either. Yeah, Isn't I, that like I don't. The, pro, I think on probably. average that's around the like twenty nine. I think, or is it twenty seven? The average age of yeah. marriage for women. I yeah. think, or maybe it was just like with him in particular. I just okay. didn't see that, or I wasn't like. Ready. But you spent some pretty critical years there dating yeah. a man eight years or junior. Not yeah. that I have anything against age gaps, but I suspect most twenty two year old men are not really looking to get married yeah. and have kids and whatnot. Yeah. By the way, the TTS is our- Can you pull that last TTS back up? I want to just maybe get through some so, of this it's stuff. It's so I'll, relevant, dude. Here, I'll, it's sure, let me, so let me take a look. Uh, let's see. One sec, guys. Uh, one sec, okay, here we go. Why don't we pull it up? Grednak donated $99. Oh. Oh. This shows that women choose the absolute biggest deadbeats and afterwards say all men are the same and most single mothers chose these people and wonder why they don't pay child support. Also, Chase, thanks for being a reason for my way back to Christ. Stoked to hear that, bro. Grednek, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, it's, I would say that that super chat touches on the point you're making pretty well. Hmm. <laughs> You're saying you want one thing, which is you want to find a husband and, you know, someone to have kids with, correct? Yeah. And you want to find a good man. You've expressed, you know, a fear of, like, ending up with a deadbeat that's just going to leave you hanging, right? Yeah, definitely. Why are you messing around with these 21-year-old dudes and these dudes that are just out of jail? Yeah. Okay, so let's... Uh, the guy who is just out of jail, we're just not going to count him. Well, we, can, no, like, we count him. It is, uh, no, we're going to count him. Was, that was a very quick mistake, but... Um, with him, I don't know because like people will ask me, they'll be like, "Do you think that the age gap had anything to do with you guys like breaking up?" And like it didn't. It wasn't the age gap. It was just literally I'm not like asking about why you guys would break up. If you want to find a solid dude, why yeah. are you dating? Why, why are you dating these non-solid dudes? I I pick the worst guys. I why don't swear. you start picking good guys if I, you want to get married? I you know. can't keep playing this game forever if you want to be a, a wife and a mother. Yeah. Do you want kids? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, all right, some Chad comes along, he's like 22, he's like, what's up, girl? And he's trying to smash. Are you gonna date him? Or are you gonna be like, no, nah, I'm looking no. for a husband? Yeah, no, I'm not gonna date. I'm not gonna make that mistake again, because like you said, I think it's like a critical time period if I did want to have children. And like, I do want children, but like I made that face, because like my sister has two children right now. She's three years older than me. And every time, like, it's like, oh, they're a lot of work, but it's like, I hope one day that I do, um, but, yeah, I do definitely need you to think be. It's worth like reevaluating your dating strategy to like optimize for the kind of guy you're looking for. For sure, like whoever I allow like into my space, because it's not like it's like like I have like options. It's like I'm just choosing the wrong guy because I think that's what I'm attracted to, which is an issue because I'm think attracted, you're attracted to, to the wrong kind of guy. I'm definitely attracted to like the wrong kind of stuff for why, sure. What what, what, what is, is that? that? Just like bad boys. Um, so I know typical. it's so. I know so it's so typical. typical. <laughs> We should go around the table on this. Oh, Who here man. likes and is attracted to bad boys? One. Oh. Come on. Come, come, come on. on. Bad boys. It's really you know. I've never been attracted to bad boys. Oh, okay. That's okay. good. All right. No bad boys? Come on. There's been one or two. Last one or two. There's been one on or two. On and off relationship. I mean, one or two on. bad boys. Um, but I wouldn't... Like, from a first glance, like, I feel like they're not that, though. Like, they're not, like, the typical yeah. stereotype. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like... Not fresh out of jail. And it's not attractive, and that's why it ends, because I don't like it. Okay, like bad that. boys? Yeah. This is weird, but I tend to like guys that were and are now like, like a reformed, a reformed, a reformed bad, bad, guy. bad boy. Yeah, yeah. You know, they were bad, they've been through a lot of shit, and came out on the other side, different person. I don't know. I like that. No, I, I'm not surprised by it at all. The yeah. psychology completely makes mm -hmm. sense. You like the bad boys. I just want to fix them. And then Classic. once and then once I figure out that I can't, I'm like, peace out. Sorry. It's not working out. Okay. Bad boys? No. No, no I like guys that treat me well. So wholesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's immature. Okay. You got to fix this bad boy habit. Yes, I do. 
It's not. Well, I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> we should watch that. Um, if you don't, if you don't Which fix video, this, you're gonna like Wicked. screw up your the window of opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Can I give you? Can I give you just one one oh, piece of advice? Please do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening. I don't know. The one you sent. If he <laughs> asks like, <laughs> for your Snapchat, stop it there. Oh. And then I just give them my number. No, if he no no, 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 no don't no, go no. out with that guy. If he oh. asks for your Snapchat you know, at all, what does he ask? I agree with that number, fully. Your number, look, number look, first. let me let me break it down oh, okay. for you, okay? Dudes that ask okay. for Snapchats to use a, a a common term nowadays, dudes that ask for Snapchats are fuck boys. Okay, I'm blowing a lot of dudes' games out there right but now. Also but also, extremely immature ones. Like, be a little more clever at least. Yeah, yeah like, I mean, be so a smart funny. fuck boy if you're gonna be a fuck Look, boy. It, Are it's, you kidding it's, me? It's like this: if a guy's asking for your Snapchat, he wants no record or trace of your guys' messages. He also probably wants nudes, yeah, and he's yeah. not. He's making it clear right off the bat he has no not serious, serious yeah. intentions for the what relationship. What about if the girl asks yeah. for his snap? Is she's that a, a she's to like the streets. 15? <laughs> to the <laughs> fucking streets. She goes. Instagram. If a girl asks for my snapchat i'm I don't like even yo fucking have how many snapchat. freaking dudes are you hooking up with to be honest uh, really? Do you what what's she trying to hide yeah why exactly why What's can't the hide? message be permanent son yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. would you apply the same um ideas to in, uh, instagram or like any social media no instagram is okay. different Insta yeah. so the thing about instagram i mean if you're trying to find like a partner through instagram there's stuff you can do you know first off yeah. you're going to attract what you are so if you're posting booty pics all over the place and yeah. like thirst traps and stuff like that, you're gonna get guys that just wanna smash. Those yeah. are the dudes that are, that are gonna be sliding into your DMs, right? If a woman's posting like tasteful, conservative, modest images of herself where she's showcasing her beauty but not like her body, she's going to attract a different caliber of guy. And it also comes down to what is the DM that he sends you? Yeah. You know, like read, read the energy. Is he just trying to smash or is he like genuinely curious in who you are as a person? Yeah, because if guys are if guys are trying to smash right off the bat, like it's probably not a dude that's serious about a long term relationship with you. Yeah, no, not necessarily. You can smash pretty early on and still want a long term relationship. I know? think a lot. I'm I think, ruining Brian's game right now, but like, <laughs> no, like a, a long term relationships. I've had some long, fantastic long term relationships out of five year or two year nine months. You can hook up on the first, second, or third date. Just saying. Just saying. Chase. Yes, and marriages will still come from that. But what what Just I saying. the point that I'm making is, you're a woman who's looking for marriage, right? Mm -hmm. You're a woman who's looking for marriage. If you're if you have guys sliding into your Instagram DMs and they're trying to smash right off the bat, the percentage of them that are actually trying to have a marriage with you are probably going to be quite low because a lot of bad boys nowadays know they can slide into a girl's DMs and smash. How do you know the difference between who is a bad boy and who is just faking it? Do you want to know the real answer? Yes, I do. If you refuse to have sex with him right off the bat, then you'll know real quick whether or not he's a bad boy. How long? I don't know. That's a whole Well, other. I mean, if you're trying to optimize for marriage, just don't have sex with him until your wedding night. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, then good luck. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Yeah. You know, but I mean, seriously, if you hold out for like a month or a couple of months, like if you don't want to wait for marriage and you hold out for, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dates, whatever, you tell them, hey, I don't want to have sex right off the bat. Like the guys that are actually serious about you for you are going to be willing to wait. I have a fear that if you make a man wait, he will cheat on you. I mean, uh. <laughs> Then well, then you don't want them. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah but I, I have I, one of the issues I have with this whole like waiting thing. That ought to have look. It's it's a difficult position. I think it ought to have been your standard the entire time, though. You spent your twenties fucking around, racking up. I'm, maybe you didn't, <laughs> but if you spent your twenties just jumping from dick to dick to dick, and then <laughs> you hit your thirties. Okay, now I've got to find a husband, and now you're gonna make this guy who's deserving of marriage you're gonna make this guy wait it just like at least from my point of view i feel like that guy's a sucker so i but it's a damned i do empathize with women on this because on one hand it's like well i'm not going to advocate for you to just continue perpetually throughout life just running like letting men run through you but also it's like as a guy like i don't know chase how you'd feel about this let's say a woman that you encounter and perhaps you wouldn't even date a woman like this to begin with but you found out that she had 30 previous sexual partners and i know that's too high for you and that's pretty high body count I'd, i reckon uh she all those guys she slept with them the first night but then for you 
we're waiting till marriage to have sex. On one hand, it's good that you're ceasing your promiscuity, but also it's like, I don't know. It just like yeah, doesn't I mean, it's, sit it's right gonna, with it's me It's going to be a tough pill to swallow for a guy, for sure. I mean, it's like, hey, you let all these other guys hit right off the bat, but you're going to make me wait because you want to try and lock me down. Like that's that's gun. Wait, going there's to be a, a meme tough about this. Nick, can yeah. you find the flower cuck meme? There's a meme about this. No, it's you're going to have to Google it. Um, so it, it is also like the thing. It, it is also kind of a, a female mating strategy. Like a lot of women hit their 30s and they slept with a bunch of dudes. They slept with a bunch of dudes in their 20s. But then they're like, hey, like I want to settle down now. And yeah, like that's going to be a tough pill for a lot of guys to swallow. But like, again, it's like you've got two, the way I see it. You've got two options. You can either keep screwing around with guys that aren't serious about you and then find yourself in your mid to late 30s mm. with fewer options mm -hmm. which a lot of women do and then they end up unhappy and on antidepressants drinking wine with their cats for the rest of their lives <laughs> you don't you don't want that outcome don't talk about my aunt like that <laughs> <laughs> show it to me on on this monitor it's like that's that's one you path. don't you don't need to that's a risk minimize just or actually, maybe you do. I don't the know. other path is no. It's not that. It's be, be wiser. It's that about one. But how you're going about this? Different. You know? Like mm -hmm. the, the idea. Look, the ideal outcome here, especially for marriage in general, you want to find uh, a guy you, who doesn't want you just for your body sure, and doesn't want you just for fine. sex, but who loves mm -hmm. you for you. Mm -hmm. You know. And the thing about the sex, image, when you introduce sex into an equation, it complicates everything, right? Like mm -hmm. the way I approach it, it's like, okay, if a woman tells me, "Hey, I want to wait till marriage." I'm like, if I really love her, like, I'm not saying I'm going to want to sleep with her beforehand, but if I really love her, I'm going to be like, yo, like that, I share that value. Like I want to do that, you know, and it's not going to be a problem for me. Like I really love her. It's like, yes, let's do that. You know, but if a guy doesn't really love you for you, he's not going to be content with that, you know, and I'm not saying that you have to save yourself for marriage. I would advocate your, I would advocate that. I know Brian disagrees, but like removing sex from the equation the point that i'm making is it's going to filter all of the guys that just want to use you mm -hmm. you have to filter all of the guys that just want to use you yeah is my point and you haven't been filtering them and for your goals getting married having a family you need to start filtering out all the bad boys that just want to use you yeah she's not attracted to those guys though I can be. No, I am. I'm not. I'm not not attracted. To Maybe them. you need to find What's what that she's term? talking about. The reform bad boy. I, exactly. Are there? Is that a thing? Is it a thing? Is there a reformed if bad it's boys? It's not. It should be. There, is. there, there is. has to be. I've seen them. Yeah, bad boys used to be bad boys, and now they're good boys. Yeah. There's this term called hebristophilia. It's basically. Uh, let me let me just look it up really quick. Hold on. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I know reformed bad boys. Like, I know dudes with, like, 100-plus body counts that became Christians, and then they're oh, like, yo, like, crazy. I'm saving it for marriage now. So, hebristophilia is the pho phenomenon of an individual being sexually aroused by a criminal offender, and this is much more documented in women than in men. <laughs> so, that's uh, so real. I think uh, there is a non-negligible cohort of women who I would say, perhaps not to the extreme of say being attracted to and pursuing a man who's like a serial killer or even a criminal uh, but they've done studies on this and a much larger non-negligible portion of women cohort of women find dark triad personality traits attractive narcissism narcissism Machiavell machiavellianism and psycho psychopathy mm. um you ever seen the stats on the most common types of uh pornography that women look up uh, no. Oh you? man, it's crazy. <laughs> the fi I think the five most common themes that women look up in, in pornography are uh, werewolves. <laughs> what? Hey. Yeah, werewolves, pirates, surgeons, billionaires. And I can't remember what the last oh, one is. Is this for, I don't know if it's for, for prawn or if it's for like romance novels. That's for pornography. Oh, werewolf cool. porn, yeah. huh? Yeah. <laughs> Those are the most. Those Where's are the this most, werewolf those are the most, shit? Those are the most common uh, yeah. Google Looks, searches. Also, like ladies, Jordan, Jordan Peterson's talked about it. Like women yep. just sending like a bunch of like serial killers letters. Like, yeah. like that that's, comes that's, into play. That's crazy. That's a little concerning. Uh, Emily, we have actually. Let me just trigger these. Uh, yeah, nah, 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 nah. Here, let me trigger these really quick, and then I'll. I have a couple more. Yo, Adam, thank you, man. Appreciate Adam it. Adam donated ninety nine dollars. All I'm hearing is you ladies aren't willing to do the difficult jobs that pay a oh, decent wage. A ago, okay. That isn't discrimination. That isn't sexism. Oh. That's lack of effort, oh. lack of will to provide. 
I don't break oh. my back because I love doing it. It's done for my gal. Oh, there's a good video. It's a great comment. There's uh, two videos. He's right. There's the kid video and then the uh, working. We'll react to those clips later. Um, and then we have Doc Vanadlis here. Microchimerism is real. It has been well studied in women with autoimmune disorders. DNA from free fetus crosses the placenta. Also can acquire DNA via blood transfusions. However, DNA from sperm donors, that's news. I'm trying to find that data from Doc Vanadlis. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. We have Emily here. Let's see. So you were on the show. You've been on the show twice. Um, have you gotten any DMs from guys? Like sliding into the DMs? Yeah, a, a lot. lot. How, How many? many? Um, well, they filter out of my requests if I don't respond to them. But I'd say like probably more than like 30 or maybe 20 oh, to 30. Okay, that's not, that's not too much. Crazy. But have, have you responded to any of them? I responded to one because it was really nice in the way he wrote it. I was just like, oh, like, I got to respond to that. He was really respectful. What did he say? Um, he was just saying, gave me a lot of compliments, said I was respectable, and um, brought up a few of the points I said last time, just said that I was bringing, like, common sense into a lot of things. Sure. You wrote in one of your pre-show notes, modern dating scares you because of how many people just want to have meaning meaningless casual sex and not actually connect. Mm-hmm. Mm have you ever had casual sex <laughs> in high school yeah like, oh okay all right yeah. uh you said i wish dating was how it used to be seen in old movies with traditional gentlemen who will court a lady and take her out on lots of dates and hold the door etc uh ladies here at the table do you agree with that do you wish that dating was how it used to be traditional old movies think of the flowers notebook. holding the door Wait, doesn't I haven't seen the movie, but doesn't this motherfucker like build this chick a house? Yes, yeah. the that's whole some house. Simp yes. shit. That is simp as no, fuck. That's awesome. Don't build a Sorry. fucking house for some chick. What? And doesn't he die? Does he die for her or some no, shit? No, oh, no, that's no. Titanic. He takes care of her until old age. No, 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 he no, built no, dementia. No, no, no. Bro, this guy built end. her a fucking yeah. house. Even the blue shutters. Yeah, everything. Bro, that's so. I haven't seen the movie, so I don't know. It's actually um, quite romantic. <laughs> Bro, imagine like, but come on, modern times like building a house. Oh, let me, that's like the, let me build you Dog, a house. Dog, if she's, Hello? if she's the woman of your dreams and like it makes her whole world, like what's wrong with that, man? Oh, and yeah. you, and you lock her down. Like what's wrong with that? I think with today's housing, like if someone could build you a house, then mm -hmm. yeah, I'd yeah. sign up for that any day. Especially if it's like a man I'm going to marry. You can build my house. I could say it in the future. Yeah. My man built this house. Like that's such a flex. But dudes, okay. dudes are watching right now, taking notes, and they're like, Don't. "Yo, I need to figure out how to build a house for Emily." <laughs> uh, but okay, so you said you wish dating was how it used to be seen in old movies, traditional gentleman, court lady, et cetera, et cetera. Um, just around the table, do you agree with that? Um, I'm somewhere in the middle. Oh, okay, all right. I like courting. Yeah, sure. Uh, definitely courting. Yeah. That would be lovely if that happened. Yeah. Yeah, I think it could still exist if you pick the right guy. Wait, sorry. What is like what? modern dating like? Emily, Emily, why don't you explain what it. is modern dating like? Well, Emily, yeah. explain it. Go ahead. It's modern so dating. Here, um, into the mic, please. I'd say. <laughs> so I think a lot of a, a few of the ladies here. Um, oh. oh. Loose pussy energy wow. donated ninety nine dollars. Here I'm a positive wow. after this one. Didn't know Chase. What? Oh fuck! Sorry. Oh, trying to get saved. She wanna get saved. You sorry, can't save her. Now. Us lured feminist on the right fell. Get used to being alone with your cats. Oh. Abdul, mm. you know what to do. Get the rocks. Hashtag your shirt sucks. Get the rocks. Yeah. Right, I'm Abdul, a, I'm a yeah. fire back. Get the rocks. Get the rocks. I'm a fire back because he's calling me a, a simp and Captain Sabaho. Look, bro, you can call me whatever you want to call me. The reality is there's millions of women out there liking, making the same kind of mistakes that she's making, and it bums me out to see anyone uh, spend the rest of their lives alone and unhappy. I don't want that to happen to her if she keeps messing around with bad boys for the rest of her life. And I would like, hopefully, some other woman out there to learn from these mistakes and correct course, dude, because these freaking wine ants living with their cats on antidepressants are ruining our society, dude. These are all the women that are voting for Hillary and railing against the patriarchy and doing all this kind of stuff. We need less of this, okay? I need, I want to stop this. Thank you. 
<laughs> Shots fired. Oh. Okay. Um, Emily, what's what's like traditional dating? Okay, so I'd say traditional dating is... Um, wait, did she ask what modern or traditional was? Modern. <laughs> modern dating is like, yeah, women are expected to pay 50-50, like she said, or take on like a, a little bit of more of a leadership role in the relationship, like planning dates. Not based. Um, <laughs> what? You don't think like no, 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 no. the the woman should should follow in her man's lead? Like I no, feel no, like a lot of that. I was agreeing with you, but go ahead. Oh, you okay. are okay. Yeah. okay well, yeah. not about the paying thing. Not about the paying. Brian thing. doesn't like paying. Not about paying. The right, <laughs> right. We Brian doesn't, long, Brian right? doesn't want to pay. He doesn't want to build any houses. No houses. He wants to slide zero. into the DMs and have her come over Ze with zero financial yeah, investment. Zero That's beautiful. Right there. That's great. <laughs> Cheapest approach possible. Boom. Whoa. Modern. Solutions to modern problems. Like, <laughs> go ahead. Emma. In other in other societies, like not Western culture, uh, in other cultures, men were like <laughs> required to show like bank statements and huh? financial like bank accounts just to prove that they could like financially provide huh? for a woman. Like, no, that's true. Like, that's honestly statements. that's honestly based. Like, yeah, in a lot of cultures, men were literally required to show like this so is how much based. money I have, this is how, my taxes, I can provide for you her, know what? her family. Bro, if I, I was a dad. That, hold I would on, want let me say that. this. I agree <laughs> right? with that. I agree with that. Yeah. I also, you know, in old in some of those societies where they had to show like bank statements or had to like show, I don't the know, like probably like, had to be like able to bars cook. of gold or some shit. I don't fucking know. <laughs> also, they would be like, they had to look at the pussy and make sure the hymen was intact. Hello, is that Sometimes, did that actually happen? But I feel like be, if you want that, then shouldn't women be virgins? Th there's no way to tell if a hymen intact is the result of losing your virginity. Actually, that's you true. know that, right? That is true. Okay. However, I'm just saying. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that's how it used to be, son. And also, like, but back then they didn't have a microscope to go up there and check if it was. No, still you just intact. you don't need a microscope to look at a fucking hymen. How did they, you just how did look they at it with your eyeballs. How, you can see a hymen. How did they check? I can see a hymen. No. Here, get on the table. No. <laughs> Bro, what are, you, what are you taking like tongs out? Like, yeah. What, are, what do you mean? You don't need a. Just spreading. I don't yeah, know. Like, I'm a fan. It's deep like, in there. <laughs> The hymen's not deep in there. It's, it's literally it's by the cervix. How do you think the it's hymen, no, 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 no. Whoa, am I teaching you female anatomy here? The hymen's oh. at the e entrance of the vagina. It's not at the cervix. Entrance? The, hy Wait, the hymen. Wait, are you actually teaching me anatomy? Is yes. it really at the entrance? It's not at the cervix. <laughs> I thought it was near the cervix. <laughs> no, the cervix is at the very bottom of like the we vagina. Need an OBGYN That's why it was so like, like, yeah. like no, the hymen is at know, no, like, no, no, the hymen is at the just bro. Why am I teaching women female anatomy? Hello, it's at the entrance of the vaginal canal. No, <laughs> nah, let's not pull that. Up. Why? why? <laughs> How do I know this? I because I'm a sense. researched, I'm a learned man, but, Chase. I know yeah, these things. Yeah, Brian's right. Like if you were, hey, I'll agree. I'll agree with the idea that we need to go back to showing the father bars of gold for his virgin daughter. I think that'd be sick. Like we should totally return to those traditions. Not saying yeah. that we need to take out calipers and check for hymens. What do you think like, about that? The whole gold bar hymen thing. <laughs> Are you down for that? No. You're not down. It's not feminism, bro. Is it not down? No. For which part, the gold bar part or the hymen part? Not down the virginity, for either. The virginity thing? Okay, okay, we'll come back to that, we'll come back oh, to that. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Emily, hold on, all right. You said that, uh... wait, okay, hold on. So, okay, if that's what men are, were and are expected to do, so be traditional gentlemen who will court a lady, mm -hmm. take her out on lots of dates, hold the door, get flowers, provide, etc. What are women expected to do? Um, yeah. Well, you you create a home. Obviously, if you're dating long term and you live with somebody, so like. But but let me ask you a question though. Let let me try to clarify. So, women. It seems to me that women demand men on the very early on in the relationship to adhere to these traditional gender roles. Mm -hmm. But women say, well, that's because months or years down the fucking road, maybe possibly I will have your kids and I will be the caretaker of the home. I'm asking up front, what are women expected to do? Because you can go on a first date with a guy and, and expect him to pay for the first date. And there's like, how You're many asking first what women are expected to do? Usually it's have sex. Like traditionally speaking no 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 modern modern day so men yeah no i'm yeah. I'm, but I'm asking from a traditional traditionally sense, what speaking, are women expected to do well traditionally speaking there would not be a lot of time in between the the dating and then finally getting married it would be a more like a quicker kind of how quick 
Mm, I'd say traditionally lots of people, and this still even happens in the South. People get married like very early, around like 21, 22. Like, especially well, how, in the South how? where it's more traditional, women and men will get married very early on, and then the woman is already performing her role in the house. So it's like more of a matter what, of how okay. long are you going to date somebody it's before courting, you so actually You're, you're making, but okay, but we do also live in modern times. So. I guess my argument I'm trying to make is is that women, even feminist women or modern women, still demand and expect men to adhere to their traditional gender roles when it comes to protecting, providing, paying for first dates, et cetera. So again, I'm asking, if these are all things that men are expected to do early on in the relationship, mm -hmm. what are women expected to do? Oh, I think that's particular to every man. Actually, there'd but be... A, no, not the really, case? because I, I feel like I every man well, would... Well, let's... Would, I, I'd rather let the women answer this. I feel but, like a lot of men would agree on what they would traditionally want her to give them, but I feel like some men, like he said, he wants a woman to be there and be his entire support system, so I feel like that's... He could probably speak for a lot of men, but... But, okay, you've listed, like, I'm sure all the women here could mm -hmm. list, like, a dozen things or a handful of things that you expect a guy to do fairly early on in a relationship. So I'm asking, what do you think men expect you to do or to bring early on in a relationship or the courtship process? I would say good behavior, probably. Well, that's first. expected of both men and women. Hold right, on, let's let but, the girls answer. Okay. No, 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 go ahead. Do this you have more? Great, this is a great question. Do you have more? Um, no, actually, I, I want to hear what everybody else has to okay, say. Okay, here, yeah. we'll... Actually, here, we'll go with you, we'll go around, then we'll end with you. Go ahead. Well, I think it would be good to establish who does think courtship, traditional courtship is cool. You said you were like 50-50. No, she wants men to pay for the first date, so she's not 50-50. First date, but are, are we also yeah. talking about courtship, like traditional courtship, or no? Well, she wants, I'm assuming you want that. Um, like courtship is a very specific term. Yeah, what is that? I don't know exactly date, let's, what that I mean, means. Dating. I think we're getting away from the... Okay, for example, in your video, you say you want a guy to pay for the first date, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what you're expecting the guy to do. What are women expected to do? Yeah, um, I would say that the beginning stages of a re relationship, both parties are signaling the value that they offer to each other. So a man, by paying for the first date, is signaling provider energy. So I think what the woman brings is signaling to a man that she can bring feminine energy. So that's by not being overly masculine, that's by being a nurturing presence, that's by being interested in what he has, it's getting to know his mission, his values, and seeing they, if they align with hers. And it's signaling to him, like, I will also allow you to be this masculine role in my life, and that's also what I'm looking for. Um, so that's what I would do, and that's how I've found success. People can do whatever they want. Um, that's what I would say I bring to the table. The question, again, is, like, what I bring to I feel like I completely agree. Like, I feel like... It's not what you bring. It's, like, what, what should be expected of you if you're expecting the man to take that masculine role and pay for the dates and court right. you. Well, here, let me just really quick, I, just yes or no. Uh, who should pay for the first date? Um, I would prov I would like if the man paid for the first date. The man who asked me, yeah. The man. I'd like the man, but be fine with 50-50. Sure. The man. The man. Um, the man, unless I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> I think whoever asks should pay. Well. For first date. Who, who here has asked out a guy? No. And if you, well, and, and if you have... If you had to break up the percentage, more often than not, who's asking who? Go ahead. Oh, well, are you asking if I've asked? Yeah, guy? have you asked out a guy? No. Have you asked out a guy? Yeah. More often than not, though, who's no, asking who? Definitely guys are asking girls. What percentage for you? 90% oh, the guy's asking, maybe one time you asked a Yeah. Yeah, one time she asked a guy out, okay. I have, I'd say it's like 80, 20 sure. guy asking. I will pitch the idea, but then he'll ask, so. I'm not sure what that means, but okay. <laughs> I've never asked. Never guy. asked a guy out? I have not. Huh? I haven't. Emily? No. 
But so wh how can you sit there and in good faith say, whoever asks should pay, yet you know by your own admission that it, it's just almost, I, I don't know if it's naive or just glossing over the fact that de facto, we know that men have to take initiative and men are the askers. Well, well, no, I, that's, you're assuming that I've never ever paid for a date before, I feel like. That's no, but what we're talking about, you said whoever asked I've never asked somebody. Pay. I've never asked them on a date. So yeah, I'm saying if but I if, asked a man on a date, I would pay for it because I'm asking them to go out and spend time with But me, whoever like, asks idea. should pay is, it, it ignores the fact that men are almost overwhelmingly being the initiators in the vast majority of heterosexual romantic relationships. Yeah, I feel like if you want to take a woman out and you're asking to take her out, you should pay for it. Right, but saying whoever asks should pay ignores the fact that there is a burden on men to be the askers because we as men, we can't just sit back and wait for women to come to us and ask us out on dates because it happens so infrequently. Yeah, I guess it's specific to the situation. Like if you're already dating someone, like I've already dated somebody and I was like, hey, you want to go get ice cream? And then I paid for it because I asked them to go do it. Like I, I suggested it. They didn't, it wasn't their idea. It was something I wanted. So like that's where I've done that, but I've never been, went up to right, a man and say, hey, you want to go on a date with me? So I don't know that experience. I've right, never but had to do that. Whoever saying whoever asks should pay, you may as well just say men should pay. Because we know that women, well, yeah, cause women I, don't really ask men out on dates. Right, so I wouldn't date a man who's not going to ask speaking. me out. That's what I'm saying. I'm not going to date a man that's not going to be confident to ask me out. Like, I'm not going to Right, so there's, ne but there's never, never an gonna opportunity. something I'm going to have to do, is my point. Okay, fine. What's wrong with men paying for the first date? Yeah. I have some thoughts on that. I got some thoughts. <laughs> What's wrong with it, Brian? Well, I, and I interrupted myself to ask the who should pay question, but we were going around on what is, ex what is expected, what are women expected to do? So if we're talking about, I think all of you said you'd like a return to dating as it used to be seen in old movies, traditional gentlemen who will court a lady, take her out on lots of dates, hold the door, buy flowers, etc. So if that's the expectation for men, what are women expected to do? I think we left off at you maybe, or maybe it was you. So this is like in the scheme of like the general scope of the relationship, not like just the first date, you mean? I'd say early on. Early, early on. on. Yeah. I mean, obviously you're getting to know the person, right? So okay. I think just showing... Both of you are doing that though. Yeah. I mean, but showing interest in him, like... Both of you are doing that? I mean, you, yeah, you support the conversation. Maybe I do bring him something depending on time of year, birthday, I don't know, occasion, whatever, like life, life, I don't know. Like I've given guys gifts, you know what I mean? Okay. It depends. I'm not like, even necessarily talking uh, something tangible like mm -hmm. paying for a date or a gift or something, but what about you, go ahead. Um, I think she brings loyalty. And Men bring that too, but okay. Mm, do they though? I mean, I don't know. Not as much as women, I don't think. They bring loyalty. Okay. Women bring loyalty. I on think. the first date, are you loyal on the first date? Oh, we're talking first date. Okay. Well, what do women bring on a first date? They make you feel good, right? You get giddy, you get butterflies. They make you feel. I mean, that goes both ways, but okay. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. So we're talking first first date. What? First few dates early on in the relationship. Okay, I feel like. We're talking in a traditional sense, right? Sure, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Can you, can you say it one more time? <laughs> okay, please don't make me repeat myself sorry. one more time. So she said she wishes dating was how it used to be seen in old movies. Right. Traditional gentlemen who will court a lady, take her out on lots of dates, hold the door, buy flowers, etc. A lot of you said... I, I agree with that. That's how it ought to be. That's how it should be. Maybe some of you have that expectation with the men that you're interested in dating. So if that's what men are expected to do, to pay for first dates, hold the door, be gentlemen, be protectors, be providers, I'm asking you very simply, what are women expected to do? I would say or be bring. modest. Be what? Be modest. Okay, sure. Definitely modest. Um, ladylike. Sure. Feminine. Okay. Gentle. Good. Yep. Just sure. What about you? Um, letting him lead the conversation. I don't know. I, me personally, I just want like a guy to know that like I'm gonna take, I'm gonna let him take the lead and just, you know, vent to me. You know, just sure. That. 
Um, I guess just being feminine and looking good. Being feminine and looking good, okay. Um, yeah, looking good and be a good listener. And also, I think you can kind of like hype the guy up to make him feel like they can protect you. Okay. Emily, did you have more to add? Or? Yeah, so um, I agree with a lot of the things that um, they said where, you know, gentleness, femininity, um, all of those traits which um, elevate a man's status. So what you're actually doing as a woman going on a date with a man, you are elevating his status. You're signaling to other men that he is capable of providing and attracting a high-value woman like that. That is elevating his status to other men because it's, it's a virtue signal that he can get this many women or this specific woman and keep her. So yeah, I think it's, and it's always been this way. A man back in the day seen with a very nice pretty girl on his arm was considered a good, it was respectable and it brought him respect, value, and it's, yeah, it's like I mean, a if, s- esteem issue. If that's my girlfriend, perhaps, but I, frankly, if I'm meeting you at like a lounge for a drink or a coffee, I don't give a fuck what anybody in the Wait, coffee shop... Wait, so you don't shop, care what she looks like? That's what I'm no, talking that's about. That's not what I'm saying. But no, that, but I don't that is care the point. about the other men in the bar and like, oh, look at me. I've got a hot girl. I hope these other guys notice me and think I'm super cool because so, I'm on so a date wait, with the so hot what chick. What is it that you want, I don't give Brian. a fuck. What is yeah. it that yeah, you like, want? So you're saying water. you would walk into so, a date with a woman dressed like, let's say, like a, someone off the street, right? That's she doesn't care about her. It is the point, though. That's not what I'm saying. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Brian's talking about behaviors that he's looking for in women. Okay, so so Brian, what is it? What what behaviors well, would you sure. expect? Well, the point I'm trying to make with this question is, you listed all these things as how you want traditional treatment, but I went around the entire table, and a lot of the women here had difficulty articulating what, given that the man would be doing all these traditional things, you had difficulty articulating what your end of the bargain is, what you're supposed to be bringing, as a in a more traditional courtship let's say um you don't even know what you got to do on your end of the bargain and i see all this all the time on the show on dating apps women will talk endlessly about all the things they want in the guy from looks to personality to money yet what are you bringing to the table to deserve that sort of thing and you need to ask yourself the reason i bring this up does the guy that you want want you you want that traditional treatment what are you moving through the world in such a way that is deserving of being able to secure that type of guy? Because if you want a, man, a good man who looks a certain way, who's attractive, has a certain status, makes good money, it's not about what you want. It's about what does he want. So what is it that you want, Brian? Well, okay, in if you want, like that. I'm saying like if a lot of these, a lot of women want the traditional treatment, mm-hmm. they want courtship, they want guys to pay for first dates, low body count. The lower body count, the better. If you have a past of promiscuity, how, if you're, for example, I don't even want to go on a date with a girl that's entertaining another guy, who's dating another guy, who's sleeping with another guy. So a lot of people, and men do this too, but if you're moving in such a way where you're sleeping with other men, you have a guy that you're sleeping with, and then you expect traditional treatment, like, it's not going to happen. I think I was agreeing with you because I'm saying like if if obviously if a woman looks like she is promiscuous and has a high body count, that's not going to elevate your status. That's what I'm saying. Being sure, a yeah. high value woman is what you bring to the other side of the table. Sure. Let me make a couple points here because what we're talking about in this conversation, it's like we're we're reaching to reclaim how things were in the past. We're talking about this concept of courtship, right? Courtship is a process that historically has been used to bring a man and a woman together under the guidance of the woman's father in order to preserve her chastity so that the two of them can get married, right? This is a process that's reserved for traditional women done by traditional men. Nick, it's, can you close the doors? It's funny because like, as I'm sitting here at this table, it's it, it's evident to me, like this is, you guys want this traditional treatment. Like I think every, every woman dreams of it. You know, you hear the story about the guy who built the woman the house in the notebook. It's like, wow, that's so romantic. That's so sweet, right? Like that's that's like a traditional thing and I think all women in their hearts of hearts like they want a guy who's traditional like that who wants to pursue them and wants to love them would you guys agree with that Mm -hmm. yeah yes that behavior like historically yeah the agreement was a guy would pursue a woman like that in a courtship only those two people would be talking so if like if I was courting you for example 
the agreement would be you would not be talking to anybody else. I would not be talking to anybody else. Courtship was also something was, that was reserved typically for virgins, right? Women were virgins throughout history. We can rail about the patriarchy all we want, but part of a father's job was to protect his daughter's chastity because there's a lot of bad men out there, right? Like we, we're dreaming of like reclaiming this thing from the past, but it requires both men and women to actually do each of their roles, which is to Brian's point. Like it's traditionally speaking, a woman's job to preserve her chastity. And a woman who preserves her chastity is going to warrant that kind of traditional treatment from a man compared to, you know, if a woman's sleeping around with a bunch of different guys and then she's like, no, I want you to treat me traditionally. He's going to look at her and be like, well, you weren't traditional up until now. Like, why should I, why should I roll out the red carpet when you just gave yourself so easily to all these other guys, right? That's like, that's the mental conundrum that the guys have. It makes it challenging for them. The ideal, I think, is for both sexes to return to this tradition, but it requires both men and women to fix their behavior. And I think that starts with every single one of us. Yeah, and to add to just the body count thing, so in the same way that a lot of the women here wish for that return to tradition, traditional courtship, men paying for first dates, men providing, men being protectors, men opening the door for you, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and most people wouldn't have any issue with you saying that if I, as a guy, say, I wish women were still virgins, or heck, even had a sub five body count, who are modest, both in behavior and appearance, not blasted in plastic surgery, wanted to be submissive, followed my lead, were not quarrelsome, who knew how to take care of the internal affairs of the household, I would get looked at as, whoa, misogynist misogynist how dare you but that's the opposite side of the coin of the yep. traditional demands that you want from men yep you're equating that to opening a car door flowers like flowers car door like paying for a 10 dollar date like those are such like tiny simple just, like, things. things versus like what you're asking about a woman is like what's already been of her past so in your case past I'm, matters though you past well, matters. no i'm not not saying that but i'm asking like so in order to go on a date for you personally with a woman do you talk to her for a while and ask her about her body count before the date happens just so you make sure that you pay for someone <laughs> who is only had less than five because I'll, she sure. also can lie and she could she'll lie. never know she so could it's lie. like I'm i curious. hope she wouldn't though no i, yeah. I, sh I hope she wouldn't lie but because i, I think honesty curious is because very you're important. basing your actions on the first date based off of who she is or what she's already sure. done so it's like not yeah. a physical or like even a behavioral thing really it's like oh, yeah she can put body a count is, neck on body counts pretty behavioral well, but and but i'm saying like in that first date like like she, that stuff that she already had done regardless sure. of that you know what i mean so it's like she can put a turtleneck on and say she's never been with anybody but it's like why well, I, I certainly hope that our first interaction is not predicated on deception a and right. a lie. But I'm just but curious for you, is that like your norm of like, you usually like to talk to a woman and ask her those certain kinds I'll, of yeah, questions? Yeah, I, I typically would, I'll have a, a conversation with a woman beforehand. I might not just outright be like, how many dudes have you fucked? <laughs> but right. I might try to ask some questions. What's your relationship history? Hmm. That can sort of give me an inkling. Okay, she's dated maybe th this many right. guys. That could be a slight indicator. Does she drink? Does she party? Does she go? to bars, nightclubs, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Let me look at her Instagram. That could potentially be an indicator. Granted, there's a lot of women who are very unassuming. They might be a bit shy. They might actually present modestly, mm -hmm. but secretly they have quite a past. Yeah. So it's not always a perfect indicator, but we as For men, sure. we will try to suss out these things through alternative means. Um, but I'm also okay just outright asking, so okay, what's, fuck mm -hmm. it, what's your body count? Mm -hmm. That's, I'll ask. That's crazy that you put so much importance on body count. Like, that's just so crazy to me. Why is it crazy? Because I just don't see why it matters. Like, why does it matter what... Mm. She, I mean, like, I can understand, like, if she cheated. Okay, she cheated. Okay, that's... I get that. Sure. But how many people she chose to sleep with, I don't understand how that is, like, relevant okay. at well, all. Okay, well, so for... for I'll answer that. And there's a there's a ton of reasons why. I think one of the probably one of the most important reasons, at least for me, is that when I'm dating a girl, I want her even on the first date. I want her undivided sexual and romantic attention. If she's going out and dating other men, sleeping with other men, first off, I don't even. That's not a woman that I even want to pursue. I want a woman to be properly single when I'm even first meeting her. And I think a lot of people don't move that way. Um, so body count, your past, is proxy for promiscuity. 
pro promiscuity is proxy for there's a good chance that when I'm talking to her, when I meet her, she's got another guy in the picture. There's another guy that she's sleeping with. To me, that's gross. I don't want to. I don't want to date you. I don't want to kiss you. I don't want to have. Se I certainly don't want to have sex with a woman who's having sex with another man. So is that complicated for you to understand, or does that kind of make no? A bit more I sense? totally understand. But that, so, so somebody who has a high body count that can be a proxy for current promiscuity. So if you have a high body count, you could be sleeping. Yeah. There's a greater likelihood that you're sleeping with another guy while I'm talking to you. I certainly don't want that. Also, if you have a high body count, greater likelihood of STD. And also you've, you've started to, the more sexual partners you have, the greater difficulty it come when it comes to pair bonding with somebody. If you've had 50 previous sexual partners and I'm number 51, I'm, you're not gonna view me in a particularly special way. At least that's my view. And I think we all, both men and women, want to be viewed as special to our potential romantic partners, to yes. our potential future husbands yep. and wives. Mm -hmm. If I'm number 51, I'm number 101, I, like that's that's and the big thing also this is a differential between men and women so I could list a bunch of examples that I think apply to both men and women STDs I think it's the case for both men and women you could certainly make arguments that um, that the actual act of sexual intercourse the transmission rate might be diff there might be a differential there perhaps women are more sus susceptible to getting an STD than the reverse for various reasons due to anatomy but we don't need to get into that um, the big difference, though, that does not exist in women, that does exist in men, and I would argue this is an evolutionary psychology basis, biological basis, is paternity uncertainty. So men, it's, it's not even necessarily an intellectual thing. A woman who's promiscuous, you cannot guarantee the paternity of your child if she's promiscuous. How are you going to DNA test? And well, but that doesn't undo easy. hundreds of thousands of years of evolution. No. So, for example, a woman who has 10 husbands, right? If she sleeps with all of them, who's the fucking father? Whereas a, a man who has 10 wives, you know who the father is in each of those instances. So women can, if you have a child, you know with certainty that the child is yours, obviously because of just the anatomical and biological reality that women are the ones who give birth. But women, we since we don't give birth, we cannot with certainty know if the child is ours. So one of the best ways to be certain of that is one, if she's a virgin, or two, we know that she's not promiscuous and has a low body count. I have a question. Sure. Um, do you, and do you want to respond to that? Yeah, or sorry. Maybe you respond yeah. and then... I, I don't know. I guess I'm just not... I'm just... I, I, I somewhat understand like what you're saying. Why are women attracted to tall men? Tall? Tall Is men. That? Why are women attracted to muscular men? Because they can protect them, maybe? This, like, I don't know. Okay. Like but giving... But is it, okay, sure, right? So in that same way, men are attracted to women who are not promiscuous. It, it's like, uh, it's ingrained in us. It's you going to further you, your bloodline, really. Yeah. Well, because you mentioned, you mentioned um, well, we have DNA tests now. Yeah. But DN, just because we have this invention of, of human brilliance doesn't undo, again, the fact that there's been hundreds of thousands of years of evolution. It's ingrained in us as men. And again, this thing does not exist in women. Paternity, there, when it comes to the maternity, I guess, or whatever, this, it's impossible to exist in women because when you have a child, you know with certainty that, that that's your child. Mm -hmm. But you could be hooking up with another dude. We don't know. That kid might not be ours. So, yeah. that, so men have a more natural revulsion to female promiscuity than the reverse. Not to say that I think women are totally justified in ha taking issue and quarrel with male promiscuity. Mm -hmm. However, there's not that ingrained biological and evolutionary basis that exists in men. It's, th it's this simple. Let's say I'm talking to two women. One of them has a zero body count. The other has a body count of 50. Which one of them do you think I'm going to feel more confident in her um, being like, w which one do you think will inspire more confidence in her fidelity long term? 50. I'm just kidding. The virgin. Right. Exactly. And it's just, it's a natural, immediate instinct. Right. And it's, it's, it's really that simple. It's like our, our biology, our DNA, like it's, it, it, it hunts for that like purity. And yeah. there is, there is like a revulsion, a revulsion towards that promiscuity because it is 
biologically very dangerous for a man to commit to a woman who might sleep with another man who he might end up raising the child of. But like don't it's, you think it's there's, thousands of years of like programming. Don't you think there's purity in a girl that is loyal to you regardless of body count? Like she's We're talking loyal about to like you. sexual purity. Yeah, but I just mean like taking away body count. Let's say she has a lot of body count, but she's loyal to you. She's never slept with anyone but you since being with you. Isn't there purity in that too? Like, why is it just like... I wouldn't call that like purity. I would call it loyalty. But the question of why it matters is like, for example, okay, so you could have a woman who has a 50 body count and she could be the most loyal woman in the world, but a man is still going to want to know hey, how did that happen? Like what, what, like if a guy cares about body count, he's going to want to know how did that happen? What happened there? What compelled you to sleep with all of these men? Like what was the pattern that unfolded? What was it in your psychology? Like he's probably going to want to understand that if it's something that he cares about because ultimately at the end of the day, it's like, is this woman going to be loyal to me in the future? Like loyalty is extremely, extremely important, obviously to both sexes. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one aspect of it. Another aspect of it too is like, like Brian was talking about before, us men are extremely territorial when it comes to women that we're really into. Like if a guy doesn't really care about a woman that much, like he might not care if she's seeing other guys, but if a guy really likes a woman and he really loves her, he's not going to want to share her with other men in the present or in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's, it's a, sex is a very sacred thing. You know, especially from a man towards a woman. And obviously no woman wants a guy who's going to cheat on her. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's different. Like for us men, it's a very territorial thing. Like that's your woman. Like you don't want another man touching her. And you know, who do you her think, past can affect that. Who do you think cheats more, men or women? I think on average it's men. Why do you think, I think that it's, is? I, I saw a stat the other day. I think it was like divorce statistics and how many of those divorces are filed because of adultery. And I think the statistic was like 34%. It was the women, woman cheating and 38% was the men, man oh. cheating. I think it was slightly it's higher for too men. Too much of a difference. What was your question though? You asked, why do you think that is? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, it's bio, I mean, biologically speaking, men like, we have a, a biological drive to spread our seed as far as possible. It's just part of our nature. That doesn't mean it has to dominate us, but like, it's just part of our nature. You know, a lot of guys, like, you know, guys will, I know guys who have cheated on their girlfriends and they typically just cheat because they feel an impulsive physical desire. Mm -hmm. And that's like, that's real. like, it's hard to describe what it's like being a guy, but like, you know, when you've got testicles, like your body's like, yo, we've got loads, we got to deliver, like get them out, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's different. Like women are kind of wired more emotionally towards sex, whereas guys are much more like physical, like I need to get this out of my system. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why guys more often cheat. Okay. Like cheating for women is like, it's sex in general for women is typically a very emotional process. Like if you, I ima imagine you guys would agree, like if you don't feel an emotional connection with a guy, you're probably not going to want to sleep with him. Mm -hmm. Would you yeah. agree with that? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it's not the same for men oftentimes. You know, guys will just have sex with a woman. I'm gonna try to uh, blast through some of these chats here that are gonna come in and um, hold on, I had one thing. Oh, really quick on the body count thing. You mentioned like, why does the past matter? Yeah. Um, I mean, I would argue, I mean, you certainly a woman who used to, uh, a woman who used to be promiscuous and is no longer promiscuous is more desirable than a woman who has a passive promiscuity and ongoing promiscuity, but I would also say that a woman who doesn't have a past of promiscuity and is currently not promiscuous is more desirable than the other things too. Um, but if past doesn't matter, let me go around the table on this. Would you date a guy who has slept with men? Yes. Oh. I'm not sure. Maybe, yeah. Okay. No. Uh, huh? <laughs> but hold on. Uh, I thought that th th this is past. That's Doesn't... sexual. That's sexual preference, though. Like that. I don't know. That's okay. Like... So you wouldn't date a guy who's bi. No. Okay. Let's say he used to, but not anymore. He's straight. <laughs> it doesn't now. work that way. No. Maybe. You know. You're either bi or you're not. Well, <laughs> let's say it's been like five years. He hasn't slept with a man. No. But then the potential. I the potential in the future it could happen, right? Ooh, bingo! Did I just, did you I just, just made give a point. You, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the potential in the future, it could happen. Oh, yes. man, that was rich. Yes. That's well, good, exactly, exactly why body count matters, because body count is an indicator for uh, infidelity. 
Oh, no. Sleep with a lot of people. Like, they've done studies on this. They've done did the, studies. Did the light bulb just go off? No, I don't think it indicates... Inf- oh, sorry. I don't think your path... I mean, the thing is, I agree it's hard for people to change, but I don't necessarily think your past indicates... Like, I'm not going to assume... It's not My a guarantee. partner is going to do something based on something he's done in the past. I would rather trust who he is in this present so, moment so you're and saying, go you're off saying what he's doing. If you, if you met a guy and he cheated on his past 10 girlfriends. That's different. But that's, that's different because exactly, he cheated. But you're just saying promiscuity. You're not saying that all these women, every single of their 50 body count was a cheating incident. No, that's not what I'm saying. But so. they, they've actually done numerous studies on this. Mm-hmm. Numerous studies. And promiscuity is a very strong indicator for infidelity. Mm. Very strong indicator. And I would yeah, argue, yeah. I would argue that past behavior is typically a very strong indicator for future behavior. Um, but going around the table, would you date a guy who slept with men? No. No. Huh. No. Don't lie, Tiffany. Come on. <laughs> oh, Emily's gone. Okay. Yeah. Let me get these chats. Guys, sorry. We had to mute them because we were just getting too many. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, trigger all of these pretty much all one after the other. Sorry if it, you know, I know we say instant TTS, but it was just getting too disruptive. Raven DT donated I be, $100. I, yeah, okay. I was not False. serious about the hymen You cannot thing, do a purity way. check to look for a hymen. <laughs> they come in many different shapes, and you cannot tell if there was penetration or not. This has been debunked. Check out Mama Dr. Jones OBGYN Yes, I'm, I'm aware that the presence of a hymen or lack of presence of a hymen is not an indicator necessarily for virginity. I was more so just trying to make a point about virginity being something that was that's... Uh, value typically in men we have vash the stampede thank you man uh, vash underscore the underscore stampede donated 99 dollars emily you're so it. amazing she, she's behind Some the scenes but she hears holding it. traditional values i grew up mormon and have been disheartened by the promiscuity of the modern feminist i would rule oh, simp city and build you a house back, I guess. brian your high and game is on point what <laughs> okay my all right oh hold on fuck Yo, before you show that to her, can I respond to grids right there? Uh, no, no, no. Let me let me just get through these. Hold on. Uh, Nickelodeon, can we get a vote in chat? What's more obnoxious, Chase Long-Winded Rants or TTS that keeps Brian's lights on? P.S. Did your BF teach you the difference between nationalism and joining the KKK? What? Oh, this is this is for her. This is for oh. Tiffany. Wait, what? Saint underscore easy donated ninety nine dollars. What are women supposed to do? Yep. Not be a feminist. Ha ha. Okay, thank you, St. Breezy. Did you want to respond to Nickelodeon? What did he say? The... I thought he was talking to you. No, he's talking to you. Oh. Your boyfriend, Brand. Yeah. Well, he's not my boyfriend yet, but yeah. Okay, all right. Um, Emily, this one just came through. Mm-hmm. Wait, hold on. Vash underscore the underscore stampede donated $99. Emily, you're so amazing. Thank you for upholding traditional values. I grew up Mormon and have been disheartened by the promiscuity of the modern feminist. I would rule Simp City and build you a house. Brian, your hymen game is on point. Beautiful. Do you have a response to Grid One Motorsports? That's pretty based. Or sorry, that was Vash the Stampede, excuse me, not <laughs> Grid One. Vash the Stampede was based. Thank you. All right, we have Grid One Motorsports. Grid One Motorsports donated $99. Base Emily, oh, my wife keeps Emily. me around because I build things. It is what I do. She did not marry me because I talk about sweet things. She married me because I get things done, made her feel safe. And since the day we met, she has been the only one. All right, we have... Thank you, man. Thank you, Lucky good woman. One. All right, we have Raven DT here. Raven DT donated $100. Body count is directly proportional to the way she moves in the sexual slash dating marketplace and her overall sexual temperance. If a woman has slept with 100 men, then it means she doesn't respect herself, so why would she respect you as a mate? Disagree? You disagree? I totally disagree with that, and I would flip it too, and I would say, um, do you give that same kind of standard to men? Like, do you, like that's that? It bugs me to my core, and I think like this is the thing is I'm not a feminist or anything like that, but what bugs me to my core is the double standard of 
men can do whatever they want they can stick their dick in whatever they want and it's cool but god forbid a woman have multiple sexual partners that it, it bugs Haram. the shit out of me because put your same logic to yourself and who should pay for the first date the man that's a double standard there's all kinds of double standards that happen Why? to exist some benefit men some benefit women Why? i would say though i don't my personal view on promiscuity i don't think it's good for either either gender mm -hmm. i don't think it's a granted i do think that there are some differences hold Modest on i'll come, I'll come back to that donated 101 dollars women always admitting that they are themselves the liars through the statement slash question she could lie imagine using a hypothetical of lying oh. as an argument Tells a lot about oh. you and your character, Lia Brian Plaza, host the podcast, not Chase. All right. Well, there you have it. Thank you, uh, Jakam. Appreciate it. Um, I th what were you saying? Sorry. I was saying, I, I don't understand why you think that a man paying on the date is the equivalent of like a double standard. Well, it is. A, it's an expectation that you have on men that you don't hold for yourself or for other women. That is a double standard. But doesn't the man I'm ask the woman? Huh? The man asked the woman, though. So? So why would he ask But it's her? a double... I'm, again, there are double standards that benefit women. There are double standards that benefit men. It is what it is. I don't think it's desirable for men or women to be promiscuous because, I mean, one, I don't think, like, there's this trope about, oh, it's high value to... <laughs> like, I, it's high value for a guy to just, like, sleep with a bunch of chicks. First off, like, the risk of STDs... I don't think it's high value if you catch herpes and you're going to be bringing your future wife or children uh, a, a disease. Yeah. So, like, I don't care how fucking attractive or how rich you are, if you're bringing your future partner some sort of, like, VD, that's not fucking high status or cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's certainly not alpha to fucking have herpes, in my view. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> I think men should be held to that standard she's talking about a little bit whereas like that yeah don't just stick your dick in anything because it's, then sure. but yeah but then women would also just naturally follow into your into your most of the time into the lead of the man and not Raven be DT donated $100 I have a body count of seven one was a marriage that ended in divorce the rest were in the pursuit of long-term relationships Good men who want marriage are not whoring themselves around either. Yeah, I mean, the difference is when it comes to the double standard, though, is I would argue that there, there is a differential insofar as it's rather difficult. Comparatively speaking, it's hard for men to get laid, whereas it's very easy for women to get laid. Mm -hmm. So for a guy to be able to sleep with a lot of women, even though I don't think that that's necessarily a good thing, to some degree, that's impressive, whereas it's not impressive for a woman to sleep with a lot of men because it's very easy for women to get laid, whereas it's rather difficult for men to get laid. Agree? Disagree? Sounds like, I don't know. I agree with that. Like any single girl here, if you're so inclined, it's 8.30 p.m. on a Sunday. Like, you could go download the dating app and, like, go get laid tonight. Mm -hmm. even, even below average looking women... Nearly, here's, here's what I've said before, nearly any woman, if she wanted to, could be a slut. I would argue a very small proportion of men can be sluts. They might want to, but the difference is the, is the capacity to do it. I would say maybe like the top 10% of men can say like slut top, around. Top three, maybe. Yeah. Well, also, when it comes to sexual pull, I would argue that take an average woman's sexual pull in order for a man to get the same degree of sexual attention from women that women that an average woman gets from a man he needs to be like an a-list celebrity a top tier like so we're talking top tier athlete musician point where like <sighs> nick what do you do okay <laughs> guillotine um, guillotine um so like it, it, there's just so many differences when it comes to that but um here let me get this last chat here we have Jay Butler on the herpes thing. Butler He's always talking about herpes. On a long enough timeline, if you sleep with enough people, you will get genital herpes as condoms do not protect yep, from this. True. What? 60 bodies equals exposure to 12 infected partners. Now you need to be taken out to pasture and be put down. Oh filthy, 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 filthy. Okay, there you have it. Thank you, uh, Jay Butler. Appreciate it. Let me get some of these super chats here. Uh, one sec here, guys. I'm just waiting. Okay, we have Grid One Motorsports. Wife is a VP for number one investment bank in the U.S. It is a tough job. Most her, 
uh, female co-workers have moved to less demanding jobs. More men bail percentage-wise than women. The toll it takes is high. Our marriage would not survive if I was not retired. Okay, there you go. Grid One Motorsports. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. We have Modest Chikama. Jackie work for a company in Seattle with women in engineering internship. Jackie works for Microsoft. Only big boys getting away with ignoring affirmative action reversal since penalty is zero dollars relatively. Jackie, why MS over Samsung with 20% South Korean GD GDP gross domestic product? What? Is well, you Ferris, I don't work for Microsoft. I work for Amazon. Oh, all right. There you have it. <laughs> we have Mons Chikama. Brian, I encourage you to not let Chase convince you to pause or raise TTS. What is a business? Literally your words in this episode. Maybe let Chase know. Sorry, Chase. I know you're based, but that unbased Chase losing you money. I mean, it's it's sometimes it's a little interruptive, and it so it can interrupt the flow of the conversation. We have Grid One Motorsports was not aware this was the Chase show. Was uh oh. <laughs> I've had three chats ignored. Neat. Oh yeah, it's just we had to uh, pause it. It was just way too interruptive, and we I'm we're already behind with some of the other notes I have to get through. Yeah. So. S sorry, Grid Run Motorsports. I didn't mean to push yours like an hour out. There, there has to be a happy medium between answering them once every hour and a half versus every thirty seconds. What yeah. does based mean? D don't worry about it. Okay. Um, <laughs> it. And the. So if something's like cool and truthful yeah. and like, like based in real, real, got you. Yeah, I mean, and also, I mean, I'm open to the chat's feedback because certainly, like, it, for example, if we had the TTS way too low, like if we said that to 20, it would literally be like we wouldn't even be able to have a conversation. So, I was, it was kind of a balance between, well, I, I don't want to boost it, but let's pause it so it's not instant, and we'll just like pick a specific time to do the TTS. Normally we don't do that. Normally it's just not so interruptive, but it is what it is. We have uh, Grid One Motorsports chats lose relevance when read an hour later. Yeah, sorry, man. It's just we've gotten in so many, so I don't want to have to boost some of the chats, but it's just been super frequent. Frequent this show, so uh, sorry to the, sorry to some of you. I know I first off I really appreciate your patronage, and you guys are spending like good money supporting the show, being patrons. And I know you guys want your chats to be read as quickly as possible. We've just the frequency has been so quick this show that uh, for the sake of the conversation, we just had to do a little pauses here and there. So appreciate you guys bearing with yeah, us I, on that. I apologize too on behalf of Brian. That was that was my call. I didn't mean for you guys to waste your money on your super chats. It was just. It was tough because earlier in the show, it was like literally every three minutes it was, we would yeah, get one. It was very frequent. We couldn't even have a conversation. And I still have like a ton of notes here I need to get through. So uh, we'll try to get through them as quickly as possible. So, okay, I think we left off with Emily, I believe. Hold on. Uh, oh, Emily, you said, I'm dating for marriage eventually, and I look for qualities of a good husband in the people I want to date without even consciously realizing it, I feel like that can be hard with the dating culture today because most people want something short term that doesn't have a lot of boundaries. Who said this? Emily right over here. Yeah. I almost feel though like a lot of women will say this, but while waiting to find the right guy, well, you're, you're gonna have your fun and just have casual sex with fuck boys, jerks, bad boys, and assholes. Not you specifically. But yeah. Well, Not yeah. you specifically, but um, so, yeah. Interesting. I got some solutions for you. What are yours? I, I know a lot of dudes that are looking for traditional women, like solid dudes. I could hook you up. And, and like church, probably. Yeah, yeah, they're almost all Christian. Yeah. Here, we have Strana here. I'll just get it while it came up. Uh, would you marry a virgin if you could and take your chance they would be bad in bed? <laughs> I, I suppose this is for everybody. Maybe this is directed at the man, but I guess we could go around the table. Would you marry a virgin? Um, I guess I'm not opposed to it, but I wouldn't prefer it. You wouldn't prefer it? I wouldn't prefer a virgin versus not a virgin. Why is that? Because um, I want somebody who knows how to have sex. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, because I also feel like I want an somebody who knows how to handle their sexual desire too yes. mm -hmm. because if they've never had sex before and then have sex and then like become a porn addict or just become addicted and like end up cheating because they have never had to control their sexual desire before and well, didn't i don't I know mean, controlling they, their desire though but i'm pretty sure they're controlling you know? their desire um, fairly well but i get what you're saying like, but, but, but you know what i mean like yeah. i feel like they could just end up once they have it like just I don't know not be able 
to be loyal i don't know because i actually knew of this happening once there was this couple and she married a guy who was a virgin and then years into their marriage she found out he was like sleeping with prostitutes and she found his receipts and all this stuff it's a very specific thing for sure and i think it's definitely backwards than what you're talking about i think men that have more sexual history are definitely more well yeah i'm not saying that either but i just i also feel like balance is key for everything so i don't i don't think i would desire someone who's a virgin but i don't desire someone who's extremely promiscuous though either um yeah i would because sex is so teachable like you can teach somebody what hmm. you like it's, like, it's very very teachable yeah. hmm. okay i would but i don't know if i would find myself attracted to a virgin okay badly. um I would. by the way just letting you guys know since i'm going around the table you guys can preemptively you know we don't need like a five second pause but go ahead go ahead <laughs> Um, I would because I'd be marrying for love, not for the sex. I prefer a virgin. Uh, I I don't really care. I look for other qualities. Yeah, I, w- I would do it. Mm-hmm. Chase, what about you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you can, if you're a man and you have strong frame and your woman desires you, like you can teach her how to have great sex with you. And if she really desires you, it's probably going to unfold like that. Yeah, you know, there's a there's a direct correlation between the enjoyment of sex and how how much desire your partner has for you. I would I would definitely get with a virgin. Prefer I'd prefer a virgin or just like low body count. I mean I I don't need the girl to be a virgin, but low body count is definitely uh, preferable for sure. You don't want to get married, do you? Not I heard, really. I heard so. you say that on another show yeah. that you don't want to get married. May you know? Listen. Could I meet the right girl who could convince me she's just amazing? No. It's possible. <laughs> it's not possible. It's possible. You have to convince you know? a man? No. It's yeah. possible. No, I could have a monogamous, lifelong partner, but I think, uh, and I don't want to get in, I don't, just because we're, yeah. we don't have a bunch of time I and I, I want to get through a bunch of notes, but uh, I do think there are some valid reasons why um, marriage is not a great move. From a religious perspective, fantastic. But the, the issue is, when it comes to marriage, the, the state oversees your marriage, not your religion, really. So if, and also, when your wife, if she so chooses to divorce you, she's not going to go to the church. She's going to go to the state to get alimony, to get XYZ, to get community property, to get half the house, to get half the assets. She'll go to the state, not the church. So... For that reason, if, if the state was not so heavily involved in the affairs of romance and love and marriage, I might be more inclined to do it. Prenup. Prenups frequently get challenged and thrown out and sometimes deemed unenforceable for a variety of reasons. Prenups are only as, if a woman is motivated enough, she can try to get out of a prenup. You had some evil women, have you? It's not, it's not I'm just a practical person who sees the reality of the uh, family court system, the bias against men in the family court system, divorce laws, et cetera. It's not so a- I have a question. If you did have a lifelong monogamous partner and she stayed at home for you, and um, mm-hmm. would you set something up for her in case you guys separated and she would have like money after that, like a week, a monthly um, check? Because like if you're not marrying her, but she's expected to sacrifice years of her career to be at home with you sure. what is she if she's not getting marriage in return how is she going to be productive yes, so, financially? so sure. within the traditional paradigm of that there there certainly is a case to be made for alimony being justified if she has genuinely sacrificed her career to be a stay-at-home mother she has made sacrifices in the pursuit of a career and having children and if i were to leave her then that would present to her some substantial financial burden there, there are some very legitimate, rational reasons for alimony being justified. What I don't like, however, is the state coming in and saying, well, okay, you're a really high earning man, therefore you need to be paying your wife six figures a month because you earn this much. Uh, I don't think a woman is entitled to continuity into lifestyle at the breakdown of the relationship. I think there ought to be some degree of limit on the, like these fucking celebrities that get divorced. You know how you get continuity in your lifestyle? By staying with that person. Now granted, husbands, I suppose, 
could be the initiators of divorce or be abusive where it's just so warranted that the woman initiates the divorce. However, I don't think that's really frequently the case. And the fact of the matter is women overwhelmingly are the ones who are initiating divorces. 80% of divorces are initiated by women. So there's gonna have to be some sort of rewriting of these alimony laws uh, to make it a bit more equitable, let's say. So you would rewrite the alimony law? Like what, you didn't really I don't know the specifically do you, do you, how do you I want, would Do you want, like outside of marriage, do you want a, a lifetime partner like that? Oh yeah, definitely. Like to have kids with him? So. Yeah, have kids, I'm, yeah, what, what, kids, we could do kids. She, she, <laughs> she, is, she does raise an interesting point, because I mean, you, you know, if a woman is your stay-at-home wife and all that kind of stuff, yeah. stay-at-home mom, she would, she would be totally dependent on you, and out of curiosity, sure. like how would you give her security in that kind of situation without a ring? How would I give her security in that yeah, situation? Yeah, like how, how could you guarantee her security? Because she's, sure. she's raising the excellent point. Like if at some point in time you hypothetically were like, you know what, I'm over it. I want to go be with some other chick. Like she'd be screwed. Mm. You know? that's, that's a fair point. So like That's how, a fair point. Well, how, I mean, I would argue that, you know, child support could potentially come in and child support, even if you're not married, uh, they can claw quite a bit of, you know, in that case. Um, Look, I think there ought to be a, a, a healthy balance and when it comes to these sorts of laws, when it comes to alimony, and I just, I don't see it with the current marriage laws that there are. I'm not trying to convince you to get married. I'm just, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I think it's a great question mm. that you brought up because you know, you're, like you've said many times, you're a businessman. I'm a businessman. Mm. You're a businessman. I don't sign contracts uh, that, that don't benefit me. Yeah, you want, you want a good deal, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look at it like, okay, what if, what if I was a woman and I wanted to be with Brian? It'd be a freaking bad deal to invest my life with no security guaranteed from you. That's a pretty bad deal for a woman. Uh. It's a great deal. Fantastic deal. <laughs> Let me tell you why it's a great deal here. Uh -oh. Here's a, here's a great deal. She got shares, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> no, but Besides why? getting to be some, with you, some like foot it's, in your company, it's, maybe. it's very, very risky for her. Not that risky. Very, very risky. It's like, it's like you're spitting girl, on your hand no, and you're no, no. shaking hers and you're like, I'll never leave you. Don't the girl, worry. Believe but, me. But that's the same thing with marriage, though. No, 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 yes. no, no, no. No, that's the exact same thing with marriage. Do you know how much a divorce costs, though? What? You're not just saying, it's fuck not, this, it's I'm, not, I'm leaving. Look, I, I see cost, what you're saying. I see yeah. what you're saying. It's not the exact same thing with marriage because, like, there is, like, it's... You go through a whole process. There's a ceremony. Like there's a societal expectation. Yeah. Like part of you know part of why it's shameful to divorce is because you're making these vows in front of everybody right. that you know. Hey, I'm going to be faithful to you. You're going to be faithful to me. And mm -hmm. then there's social shame associated sure. with breaking that. So it's not exactly the same as like getting married. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm describing basically just a verbal agreement and a handshake. Hey, yeah, we'll be together for life. And then the, <laughs> I mean, the woman's like, okay, I. I hope he means it, you know? Yeah. Hey. That's, that's freaking risky, bro. Sure. And I, I would argue that in the past, this wasn't so much a concern right. because we had a better social fabric. People more were, I mean, there was far less divorce historically. Yeah. Um, now we see the divorce rate is crazy. Women overwhelmingly are the ones to initiate divorce. That's why from a male perspective, I have far greater concerns and worries when it comes to potential divorce than, than perhaps I could have expected 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 plus years ago. Um, also, I would say that the, the family court system is very gynocentric. There's bias against men that's in the true. court system. Yeah, that's true. So it's just, look. You know what I think you should do? Just I become should, a, a I think monk? Should, I think, no. <laughs> I think you should be the man of God that you say they are. Okay. Go find a good woman and be the social fabric that you want to see in the world, Brian. No, I, look, the nuclear family, great. Kids, marriage, religious marriage, great. But again, we have the state, we have the, this court system. Yeah, no, I see your point. And look- it's dangerous. And, and here's the thing, especially right? Especially in California. Especially in California. What are the vows that they say? Till death do us part. Uh, that has to mean something. Till death do us part. If I were to get married to a girl, that shit's for life. There ain't no, we, there is no divorce, but there is. But there's not, but there is. <laughs> I wouldn't get divorced. You remember when we had this conversation with Deborah and Sam and Gorlock? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, dude, I looked at, and we were talking about like, you, you, you made the claim that uh, 
Christian marriages like still had super high failure rates. Yeah. Dude, I so I looked this up. I started it's di- less. I started digging less, into the data. Families that regularly go to church together and read the Bible together mm. and pray together, the oh. divorce rate is less than one percent. Yeah. Chase, can I ask you a question? What's up? So I like you said I watched the show and I watched it. Uh. Dakota Kratzer donated $99. Hello, Jack. Bro, you fuck. I'm a 27 <laughs> year old Christian, and my oh, life three, is on track. Three chats are coming in I right now, by the way. I find you beautiful and interesting, and I'd like to get to know you sometime. I'm not much of a social media Yo. person, so feel free to text me at. F- That's the number. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no, go, you should, go watch it. Should head him up. Compliments. Thank you very you much. Should head him up. Nice of you. See if he's legit. Dude. That might be a <laughs> right there. Raven DT donated $100. In Judaism, there's a marriage contract called a ketabah. It requires a groom to provide for his bride on their wedding day, intended to protect the woman, primarily by establishing the man's financial obligations to her in case of divorce or his death. All right, Raven DT, thank you, thank you. Interesting. Eliminate no fault divorce. Oh, this one's coming. We got one coming in from Nasha Nabu. That's coming in here. Nashu Nabu donated $99. Thank you, man. Thank you guys. Appreciate Eliminate it. Eliminate no fault divorce. If the man cheats, she can divorce and get alimony. If she cheats and he's the breadwinner, he can divorce her and she loses any chance of alimony. If he beats her, she can divorce and get alimony. I agree with that. Look, I think from a guy's perspective when it comes to marriage, and I don't want to linger on it too long because I do have a lot of notes I got to get through, women overwhelmingly initiate breakups, initiate divorce. So my view is you never sign a contract with someone who is rewarded for breaking it. I think no sane informed man ought to sign that contract. The problem, the problem with sort of these like views on marriage is they feel to ra- the state, and I, already, I think I already said this, the state presides over the marriage, not the biblical values or your religion. So when the woman is unhappy, she's gonna go to the state, not God. And I think that's primarily where I have an issue. Um, I want to add something really real quick, quick though, really quick, just because I yeah, really got it. It'll, it'll be super quick before no, no fault divorce. If you wanted to get a divorce in the United States, this was like early 1900s. If a woman or a man wanted to divorce their spouse, mm-hmm. they had to build a case for why it was justifiable and then provide evidence for that mm-hmm. in court that you couldn't just divorce somebody like that. Like, I wish we still had that kind of society. Okay. You All know? right. Yeah. Um, let's see. Why don't we, uh, let's pull up. The two more videos from her, Nick. We'll just do them right after the other. Go ahead. Oh, also, before we, pl- before we play it, I'm going to do a pause on the TTS. I, I know we say instant, but I just want to get through this next section. Go ahead. First of all, I think that being single is not an insult. Just because you're single doesn't mean that you're not desirable. But I don't want just a boyfriend. I want to weed out all of the men who don't understand what feminine energy can do for their life. All of these men who are saying, what do you bring to the table? Haven't experienced goddess queen energy. A king will know that a woman in her true femininity adds so much more value to a man than any amount of money ever could. Next one. I like her videos. Lead me when I'm in the mood to be led, Nick, F11. I want leadership, but don't just like Scroll boss up. me around, oh. you know, like lead me, lead me when I'm in the mood to be led. I want, want leadership, is, is, but don't. Is that kind of like facetious or pretty accurate? Would you say? Um, I mean, the caption was you're transitioning into like your feminine era, your soft girl era. So you're like, lead me. So it's like, it's a joke. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) It's a joke. It's that clip of Ryan from The Office. It is. Yeah. Which is also facetious. It's The Office. (laughs) Got it. Okay. But there's a, there's a kernel of truth in the sentiment. Yeah. The kernel of truth is that it's a struggle to go from being hyper independent into being into your feminine energy. That's the truth for me. Mm That's understandable. I think yeah. a lot of women struggle with that. It's hard to let go because you also are like, I've seen all these boys who aren't in their masculine. And then once you like step into your feminine, then you attract different kind of energy. But it, the, the, any kind of transition is always hard. So. Yeah, I think a lot of women struggle with that because of uh, feminism, the residue of feminism. 
and how it conditions women. A lot of women have like just tremendous resistance to the idea of like yes. submitting to a man, submitting to a man's leadership. Mm-hmm. Really, at the end of the day, goddess, queen, energy. I mean, even the word queen, it implies that you have a king. And at the end Mm -hmm. of the day, the king's say is the king's say. You know what I mean? Now, that doesn't mean that he wouldn't consult his queen. But uh, I wish you success in making that transition into your soft girl era. Because the kind of men that you want, like women that are easily led, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know? I have been successful. That's good. Yeah, it's been good. Um, In the second video we reacted to, um, that's the one where you were talking about basically essentially the patriarchy that I think men have it easier, women are disadvantaged, it's a man's world. Uh, In the description of that you say that equality is not sameness, it's fairness. The sexy and fair thing to do is for the man to pick up the tab. Ladies, do not settle for less. We teach people how to treat us. That, that is accurate. Right, that's what you said. Um, and so, I, if I recall, did you say that you consider yourself a feminist? Yes, I do. So I guess my question to you is, how do you reconcile being a feminist, believing in gender equality, doing away with gender roles? I, I'm not sure if you believe in those, but mm-hmm. so how do you reconcile being a feminist, but also demanding that men pay for first dates? Um, I think that you don't have to be on one side like one extreme side or the other extreme side Mm -hmm. just like in politics like you don't have to be like ultra liberal or ultra conservative like you can kind of figure out the values that you believe in and believe in those values and i wasn't i didn't really i was like more in my like masculine more hyper uh independent era and then as i became someone who like the things that I wanted in life shifted. I'm like, oh, I actually do want a lifelong partner. And how do I get the kind, I just, through contemplation, not through any, tradi- I'm not looking to tradition, I'm not looking to now, I'm just thinking about what do I want? What kind of person do I want to attract? And through that is where I got my values of like, oh, I'm like creating this space where men don't get to like, feel like they're the the hero like feel like they're leading and i'm like i do want a man like that so that means i need to take a step back it has nothing to do with tradition or feminism like i'm just like that's the that's what i want to do i don't care if it's tradition if it if it's a traditional value i don't care if it's a modern value that's just what i want so i'm going to act accordingly so but do you believe in gender equality um i believe in fairness (laughs) i'm not totally following yeah i mean i think that why why would it be unfair to go 50 50. um it's technically you're doing the same thing but in the relationship that i want i don't want to do that so you don't want fairness in your relationship it's okay to say that that you don't want fairness i don't want sameness i want but that's the same thing they they mean honestly the same thing you don't want to pay 50 50 which is valid i i don't want to either but that's, yeah, they're, I think it's the same thing because if you were to be equal, then you would have to pay 50 50. And I'm yeah. just, yeah. I yeah. think we're arguing semantics. Well, so yeah. sure. That doesn't so, interest me. The words mean the same thing. But I mean, do you, do you believe in gender equality? Um, yes. Do you believe? I don't away? believe that the gender, sh- I don't believe that men and women should do the same things, but okay, I think. Sure. Uh, well, okay. But I think that women should have the opportunity to do what they want to do. Should, should men <laughs> if have, they want to go fifty? Do, yeah. If they want to go fifty fifty, then go fifty fifty. I don't give a fuck what you do. Like that's just what I want. Well, I guess just as a feminist, I, like I, I guess where I'm struggling is mm-hmm. why do you support a rather patriarchal traditional belief of men paying for a woman's time? I don't believe by, that it is a patriarchal belief. I think it's it, based it's, off energy based off energy the patriarchy i think says a woman has to do this she should do this i'm saying you can i would disagree as the patriarchy's spokesperson on the whatever podcast the patriarchy (laughs) says it's good for a woman to do this and a woman ought to do this it's not a woman has to do this it's it's good for a woman to do this Mm -hmm. it's in alignment with her nature Mm -hmm. and a man's nature yeah therefore she ought to yeah, I mean, I think that... Official statement from the patriarchy. Wait. Oh. 
Okay, so I, I don't know. I just feel like part of feminism is challenging gender roles. But let me ask you a couple questions. So, um, will you take your husband's last name? Um, I'm not sure. What? She wants a guy to you pay. You want him to feel like pay. the hero in your life, and you won't even take. You're not proud to take your man's last name. I haven't met a man who is worthy of. But me if you did, name. he I, would be you your did. husband. This would I be mean, your, the guy who you will marry. I don't know. It depends what his last name is. If it's like really weird. holy <laughs> smokes, why would a high value man want to woman marry a woman who won't even take his last name? I, why would any man want that? I don't. That's really, like the most humiliating thing in the world. I didn't realize that it was so humiliating. I mean, I would. I'm definitely open to having a discussion with the man that I fall in love with. I don't think that like me and you would be a match. I don't think that you and I would be a match, and that's totally fine. Okay. If I meet a man who is my match, and he like is like, this is so important to me, like this is what it would mean to me, I'm open to having that discussion open. with him. But you said if his name is kind of weird, that that seems like a very arbitrary reason to not want to take If I knew, If I knew that a woman was not interested in taking a man's last name, I would not even offer to take her on a, fir- a date in the first place. Well, luckily you're not offering to take me on a date, so. That's I think correct, we're good. but just, just generally speaking. <laughs> I don't like, want to find a man like you, so I think we're good. Just g- generally speaking though, yeah. like, like you have to understand it's. I understand it's that men like, like you want that. Yeah, I mean, uh, any traditional guy who's like oh, filling man. even a remotely patriarchal role I'm that you're interested. hold on please let me finish any <laughs> traditional guy who's filling even yeah. a remotely patriarchal role that you're describing like is going to want a woman who would be proud to take his last name that's like okay. a given i just i don't see like you want the guy to pay for the first date you don't want a 50 50 relationship but like the <laughs> most basic thing fair yeah the most it seems like look if if as a guy you want to like do the 50 50 thing with your girl then maybe in that scenario you should go in expecting hey she might want to hyphenate she might not want to take my last name but you have in the same way that i was talking in the same way that i was talking earlier about well what does the guy that you want what does he want and the guy that you want who wants to be that masculine guy who wants to be a leader who wants to pay for the first dates not do 50 50 I would assume that he's going to also be the type of guy that wants you to take his last name. Yeah. I don't think some of these things are Brian, super. Brian. You know what I would do if I was on a date with a girl and she told me she wouldn't date you. Though, no, no, I know, sorry, but you Chase. know that's that she's made that clear. I'm sorry, she Chase. finds me horrible, but like I never said that. If if I said we're not a match. If that's fair. Match, Chase, that's sorry. fair. That's fair. If I was on a date with a girl, you would. I hope I hope you'll appreciate this. If I was on a date with a, a first date with a girl. And halfway through the date, she told me, you know what? I'm not interested in taking a man's last name oh, when I marry him. No. <laughs> what I would say is, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize we were going on this date as friends. <laughs> oh. <laughs> let's go. Oh. Okay, thanks. Thanks for telling let's me. Let's, 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 split, let's split the bill. I mean, to, be, to be fair, like, I am transitioning into this. Maybe as I date. Wait, you're right. transitioning? I'm, I'm transitioning oh, so, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. into being more sorry, sorry, in my sorry. feminine era, and I'm I, exploring this apart. I'm exploring this apart from tradition. I'm not mm-hmm. thinking about any values that anyone's taught me. I'm not thinking about societal standards. I'm thinking about what do I want? What kind of energy do I want to yeah, invite but, in my life? But, Let me finish. Okay. And so, as I continue to explore this, as I've gotten more clear with my values, I've had a shift, and I'm like, oh, maybe I need to do this differently. Potentially, maybe that is something that I will have a change of mind. I am in a transition. I understand. I don't understand the male perspective when it comes to that. And I've never been even close to like wanting to take a man's last name. So I'm I'm open to having my mind shift about this. Um, and I don't think that you guys should like shame me for being in a space where I'm figuring it out. But you shame. You seem so solid on what the expectations of men are, but you don't seem to be very privy to that ty- what that type of man wants and you also shame I mean, men she's still figuring it out you, but I don't she, think she understands she, men no, the kind of man she's looking for she's, I don't think she she's figured it out what she wants but she hasn't figured out what the man that she wants wants yes that's but, correct but if you want that kind of treatment then you got to come correct on your end too let me tell you what i want what you do you what want I, you chase. know what i want chase tell us what you I want tell, i'll tell i'll tell you what i want i want i hope that you find the kind of guy that your heart desires and that he's the kind of man where you look at him and you're like you know what i want
like I want to take your last name. You that are my freaking great. hero. I hope you find that guy. Me too. Yeah. yeah. If I find that man and that's what he really wants, then great. Nick, if you can pull up that video, there's a video where you reacted to recently and then in the past. It's this progressive woman who's in a car and she's saying, I can't. Do you know what the video I'm talking about, Nick? Progressive woman wants. I hope by the time you find man. him too that you're ready for him. I will be ready when We've I find him. Twice, that's the only, time, that's the only reason we fit Here, together. I got another question. Um, will your husband be the head of the household? What does that mean? He is the leader and the authority in the home. Like he gets final say? On? Everything. Whatever. What? Everything. Doesn't mean he's a tyrant, but if there's an important decision that needs to be made, his final word is the word that goes. Um... His final word. So if we disagreed on something, so we're talking about something. Homeschooling. Let's say you're having a debate. Right. Okay. So let's homeschool our children. I'm like, I don't want to have the time because I have to do these performances. I'm doing my music, whatever. I don't have time to homeschool or whatever. Sure. And would I say, would I like just let him say, no, this is why, da, 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 da. And then be like, okay, sure. Is that what you're asking if I would I do? I feel like that's a bad example because mm -hmm. you guys, you would probably never end up with a guy who wanted to do I wouldn't, homeschooling yeah. if you want to perform while you're in yeah. marriage and having a family. Let's say um, moving somewhere. Sure. Let's say you want to move to Montana, but mm -hmm. he feels it's really important to move to Utah instead, just sure. hypothetically speaking. And sure. he's like, hey, babe, I have X, Y, and Z reasons. This is really important. Mm -hmm. And you're like, no, I want to move to Montana instead. And he's like, babe, I need you on board. We need to move to Utah. Yeah. Would you acquiesce? Would you submit to that? I think this kind of a situation is difficult to say what I would do because it's extremely hypothetical. But I will say in a hypothetical situation, say I meet the man, I'm like, oh my God, give me your last name. We have kids, whatever. Our values and our vision are aligned. I don't feel like I have to give up a part of myself because we're together. Like I'm supporting his vision and he is supporting mine because they're the same vision. We have the same vision for our family. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just gonna say, I think someone has to lead though, right? Like there's, it's usually one person lead. That's why when you file taxes, there's a head of the household. So mm -hmm. there's never just a part, like even though it's a partnership, one person takes the lead and it's generally the man, which is why he's asking if being the head of the household and then the homeschooling kids was a bad example because like like he said you would to be a traditional feminine woman like working a career while raising children at the same time wouldn't okay here i'll just fucking say it our child has come to us confused because they've been schooled publicly i'm, I'm gonna reduce i'm we're gonna take out the homeschooling component of it mm -hmm. our child comes home confused we have a biological son he's thinking oh the might be a woman. I'm here saying, no, we're not going to put our son on fucking puberty blockers. We're not going to put him Chop on drugs. We're not going to do any of that stuff. If, as he at 18, if he just won't listen to us and he can make those decisions once he's reached a majority of age, if he wants to do that, he can. But we are not, I'm not going to allow my child to do this. Would you? I feel like this isn't a great. This isn't a great example either. No, I mean, I suppose no. Example. It's it's important though because Would this you happens in households yeah. in it America. Does. Men it need does. to think about this. Like this is why this is but why I, I won't date. A, I don't know if it's a good example, but like, no, would you good. defer? No, it, would a, you defer to me saying, no, we're not gonna do this, or or or, or even uh, uh, to simplify it even further. You want your kid to go to public school. Your husband's like, no, we need to spend more money to go to private school. But you're like, I'd rather save that money so we can buy like whatever, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you have a different financial goal. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, like he needs to not go to public school because they're indoctrinating mm -hmm. children. Would you agree to that? Like if he's paying for the private school, sure. Okay. okay. All right. I'm Here, like, let me move I'm on. I'm down. Move. <laughs> there's one, there's one last cool. aspect of this that I think is like worth calling attention to. It's like, you're, you're saying like, no, I don't want patriarchy, but also at the same time you're saying I want to fully step into my queen goddess energy, but being a queen to the kind of man that you're describing implies a king, and that is a patriarchal structure. And if you want a king, a man who's truly embodying king energy, if you want him to step into that role, he's going to expect that you will submit as his queen. Now, that doesn't mean that he'll boss you around as his slave, but like a queen is subordinate to the king. Yeah. You know? I mean, I think that the word submit has a lot of uh, baggage with it. For of, feminists. Of, of men, like, because I've been 
in households and I know many men who abuse their authority and say submit to me they don't uh, they don't submission is given not taken but uh, yeah. right so that's just abuse that's not yeah, yeah no and I yeah. think a lot of people say the word submit but what they mean is abuse so that's what I'm against uh, like I don't know about no that. I think we're pretty confident in, in what we mean Here, by like abuse. no I'm not I saying you guys I'm just yeah. saying in general I do need to move this on a little bit but let me get these since grid one just sent to let me get these to come through here. Hold on one sec, Grid One. Grid One Motorsports donated $100. One of the worst crimes committed against society is the deletion of obey from love, honor, and obey in marriage vows. Without a leader, all ships run aground, all missions fail. Yep. While you should walk with Christ, you do not need religion to be a good wife. All right. Thank That's you, Grid One. Great, Appreciate it. Great comment. Got another one coming in from Grid One Motorsports here in just. Imagine oh, hold on. A wait, 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 wait. A cat. Here, I'll. I guess this is. I'll retrigger when she's back. That's annoying, but um, here I'll just re. Let me see. I had a couple notes here. Eh, she's gone. I, some of this applies to her. I don't know, but um, let's see. It's, I'll, su I'll it's such it. a good I'll point, though. It. Like the idea of having a ship without a captain or having a ship with two captains. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Can't work. Cannot no. work. Let's see. Captain, first mate. Uh, okay, we got through. Oh, we have one. Oh, okay. Curtis yeah. Sanders right. Corleone donated $100. Since we are on hypotheticals, Brian, if you went to prison for life, no chance of parole, and the governor said he may pardon you if you participate in a naked human pyramid with 15 inmates, <laughs> would you do it? What? Kiko is the verifier. What? Uh, That's such a funny prison for life. Would you do it, bro? Prison for life, pyramid. and I get a pardon? Yeah. I'm, uh, yes. Modest yes, I am. donated $101. You know, Chase, <laughs> just when I think oh you couldn't God. possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this oh. and totally oh. redeem yourself. Oh. Imagine thinking submission is abuse, WTF, oh. ladies. Oh. It's, uh, it's a dumb and dumber reference. Appreciate that, bro. Modest Jakama, much appreciated. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Thur. I respect the reference, dude. Grid she, One Motorsports donated $99. Huh? Copy Kiko, please yeah, do not sure, marry sure. a man who would accept you the way you are now. You will ruin each other's lives. Wait for the man that you want to change for, that you want to be a wife for. Feminism has failed you. The patriarchy is here to help. It's here to help. Chase is the representative. He's yep. the spokesperson for the patriarchy. Yep. Hey guys, I'm going just so I can get through. I'm going to mute, uh, mute the TTS. We'll get to it uh, later on in the show. So uh, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, Twitch really quick. Guys, go to twitch.tv slash whatever. Drop us a follow. Drop us a prime sub. Twitch.tv slash whatever. Pub, pub test. Thank for the gifts. Nike, thank for the prime. Uh, Rye, thank for the prime. Rinna, thank for the prime. Melons, thank for the prime. Ram, thank for the prime. Gaming thing for the Prime, Robin thing for the Tier One, Y Kick of Moo Cow thing for the Prime. Appreciate it, man. Um, let's see here. We had one last thing on this. Uh, I would say that I don't know if you want your man to be a gentleman, chivalrous, traditional. But if you're you're not willing to give back traditional values to him, taking his last name, it doesn't sound like fair trade off. Well, that's an interesting super chat. Speaking Yo, AB voice. check. Thanks for the gifted 20 memberships. Is it muted, Nick? Is it, is it muted, the audio? Oh, okay. Um, so, it's just like, uh, let me see here. I, you just, you cannot recoil at the very idea of gender roles, but then expect men to pay because men paying is a gender role. So you can't just discard all the gender roles that have to do with you, but then expect the man to still abide by every gender role that applies to him. Um, so, I don't know. I'll, I'll end it at this. I think that women want equality societally, and they want tradition romantically, insofar as that tradition stands to benefit them. Where said tradition does not stand to benefit women, they will not adhere to that specific tradition. They will desire and pressure men to adhere to their traditional gender roles. So they want to have their cake and eat it too. 
basically. That not basically. paying thing or the paying thing really gets to you, huh? Because <laughs> <laughs> I can tell that that one really like I'd, it ruffles your feathers. <laughs> yeah, pull your mic just closer. a little bit. It pull no, your pull your mic clo- to the edge of the table, please. Ooh. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. I don't. How does it ruffle my feathers? I can just tell because. Does it? Yeah, you go back to like that. Like that's like the base like mm-hmm. argument. Well, I mean for that's you, I've noticed. the primary yeah, video know, that I'm we're reacting saying. to today. But I can just tell. It doesn't ruffle my Brian, feathers. Brian has a good point though, in that a lot of women, almost all women, want traditional behavior mm-hmm. for men, but they're not willing to live up to traditional behavior on their own side. Yeah. You guys but want. But I think you, there's a lot of men that want good women, but also won't be good. Sure, absolutely. Like, and I feel like a lot of our experiences in modern day dating, unfortunately, aren't the best. That's why only one of us is in a relationship at the moment, and it's because we're dealing with men who claim they want these values that you're saying, but end up doing why, not why, great why stuff. Why are you pointing at me? No, yeah, him, because he says a lot of things that are good, right? Like that you want a woman and you're a certain man and all this stuff. But unfortunately, there's a lot of men who say this that aren't doing that. Look, and they're let me, lying. Let me, let me tell and you they're something. putting us. Ava, Ava, let me let me tell you something. I know a lot of guys, okay? And the bad boys that you guys are describing is a small minority. <laughs> The reality is that there are a lot of good guys out there that simply just want to find a good woman and treat her right. But most women, quite frankly, suck at picking dudes. (laughs) They pick the bad boys that don't give a damn about them because those bad boys spark their feelings. They they get you ladies feeling some type of thing. And you're like, ooh, I like how he makes me feel. And then you guys get into a relationship and he cheats on you, blah, 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 blah. When all of the red flags are present at the beginning. But not always though. And that's the thing. It's not always the case and vice versa. Like I hate making generalizations about anything. I do agree to a capacity for some, for sure. There's a lot of good guys out there. I agree. Most, I do most agree. men are invisible and I, to most women. I yes. will. You probably you probably have it. 500 men in your phone contacts right now mm-hmm. that would treat you so right if you would give them the time of day and give friend them zone. a date. The but good you, men are in the friend zone. You I, are friend not, zone. Actually, not necessarily. And I really do believe that with a very developed, like, you learn from your experiences, right? I at least hope. So I feel like as you get more confident and secure with yourself, you know what you want more so. And so you seek after that so you won't give these guys the time of day or you'll be able to pick up the red flags quicker, right? But it's funny so. how <laughs> now you see the red flags so often that it's just like wild how many people are, you know, trying to lie or manipulate to get you in bed or do all this stuff or say all this stuff. So it's just... It, it is a little bit more saturated at first that you have to weed through a lot of people claiming they want these values that you're saying, but they genuinely don't mean it. And that's why, like you told her, don't sleep with them right away. Wait a while, you know, because their true character will show. People can it's have a good literally personality. The perfect filter. Like it's, it, women would be able to filter if women waited a few months before having sex with guys. They would filter ninety nine percent of the bad dudes. And the thing is, though, but at the same time, yes, but also no, because you can wait. You can be friends with a guy for over a year and then decide to take it there, and they end up doing the same thing. So I think it's very situational. It's very much about the person. It's what their values are, how they've been raised, how they've decided, you know, like sure, but in the context, in the context of you know what we've been discussing, which is dudes cheating, being dishonest, lying, all that kind of stuff, you're gonna figure out real quick if a guy just wants sex and if he can't keep it in his pants. If you tell him no, we're not gonna have sex, and then he just immediately dips. But a lo- from my experience, that's not what happens. Like no. that doesn't happen. So you've had guys cheat on you that you've waited to have sex with. You- you've had guys pursue you for long periods of time and you refuse to have sex with them and then after you started then they cheated on you Mm -hmm. how many times has this happened to you a lot a lot yeah i think you guys honestly just suck at picking i don't think so i think it's just like a (laughs) lot lot of people are manipulators yeah no i don't really know a single woman who hasn't dealt with some sort of a horrible dating relation same with men if women if women no i'm not saying people don't deal with horrible dating situations but like yeah, if you date enough guys, eventually there's mm-hmm. going to be a guy that cheats on you. But the, my point mm-hmm. is that, like, y'all got to improve your pool of dudes that you're picking from. Like, I think, this is why I only yeah. talk to Christian chicks. <laughs> Wait, you one know? of you and one of you, I don't, I don't think we got here. Is it you that mentioned butterflies? You had butterflies for somebody? Or was it you? I don't know. But related to women picking 
not the best guys. I think a lot of women are looking for the click, the vibe, the butterflies, the spark, the chemistry, et cetera, the tingles, whatever, magic, fireworks, whatever bullshit term you want to use. Um, and I think the issue is, is that in addition to looking for like, because of women's hypergamous nature, you're looking, most women are all chasing after the top tier of men. Those men have all the options, so yes, they're more likely to cheat, but you're, you're looking, let me ask the girls a question. If you don't feel the, quit, the click with a guy pretty quickly, do you just not give that guy a chance? It's a good question. Uh... Like, I often hear women say, the vibe has to be there, there has to be a click, there has to be spark, chemistry, electricity, because I've heard women say, and maybe you guys can tell me if you agree with this, you've met a guy who, on paper, he's fantastic, good looking, good job, treats you well, good personality, but he's just missing something. You just didn't feel this click or spark or connection. It's like sexual tension. I've still given that person a chance. Okay. I've done a lot before. of women don't give that guy a chance. And that's actually probably the, the good guy you should go for. It goes back to you. You say you pick mm. terrible men. Mm. You like, you're attracted to bad boys and whatnot. Unfortunately. Right. So w that which exists in you, I think exists in a lot of women. Mm. You want this sort of excitement mm. yes they do you want this excitement yes. from a guy yes and a good guy can give you that but i think it's a, a little bit harder but the guys who are bad or toxic they can definitely give you that it's like a dopamine rush actually you're getting like an addictive drug response every time they do something crazy or make you wait for a response or something like that it's like feeding your your brain every time with those yeah happy chemicals. Well, and mm, with chemicals this mm -hmm. no chemistry he's boring I think that actually translates yeah. to he doesn't trigger your anxious trauma response, mm -hmm. which you confuse for love. Yeah, I think he's right. You should give those guys a chance because <laughs> be you have it. Yeah, sure. but honestly, also, I mean, it's brutal. very situational because like you can give them a chance, but then you realize their characters maybe not who you once thought of being good. Because also, I think you're going off a very stereotypical bad boy. Like that's like so cliche. Like they're but guys and triggers and toxicity comes in many forms sure. and many behaviors. And so, you know what I think it is? Sorry, if you want to finish. And so I just feel like that's a very generalized statement. Cause like, yeah, if you don't feel the spark right away, like I, uh, speaking from personal experience, I think that's a little immature. I think it's nice to get to know somebody and there might not be a spark right away and all this mm -hmm. stuff. But that's in fine. my experience, that has also not led to a genuinely truthful person, even if it's been waiting a year or waiting months to be with them or whatever. So it's like, there are just some people who are like that, you know? And yeah. that just kind of is what it is. This is what I think it is. I'm, I'm, I'm about to mansplain as the <laughs> representative of the patriarchy. Women are just, you guys are emotional creatures. You know, you guys mm -hmm. feel things very intensely. Generally speaking, when a woman meets a guy who sparks her emotions real strong, it's like you said, it's like, a it's like a drug. It's like, woo, like, whoa, you know, mm -hmm. if that's humor, if mm -hmm. that's confidence, maybe a guy drops like, you know, he has like good eye contact with you, says the right thing when you guys are meeting, you know, shoots those butterflies through your system. Women feel that super intensely. It's intoxicating for a woman to experience that. I think given the option between that, a guy who can like spark all those emotions versus a guy who's kind of like a bit more boring, nine times out of 10, women pursue that emotional rush. I think that's what drives a lot of this behavior, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. One last thing with Pearl here. You said some men are emotionally attracted to other men. Huh? But sexually attracted to women and tall men are overrated. Okay. Yeah, those are my hot takes. <laughs> some men are emotionally attracted to other men. What does that mean? Do you, like do you detect friends? that right here? Is there, do you detect it I here? didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but sexually attracted, okay. And tall men are overrated. You know, I don't often hear that. That's an interesting. I think that tall, tall men are men. overrated. You like short dudes? You like a short king? <laughs> um, it's not that I prefer a short king or a tall person, but I think you just that. just don't care? I think that women overvalue height with men. It's like they become <sighs> that's blind valid. to other stuff. That's, <laughs> that's all. That's you? super valid. Five, True. six. Okay. That's super valid. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, like, am I sexually attracted to someone who's very, very short? Probably not. But I think this whole, like, six, three and above, or I won't even talk to him is bullshit. Mm -hmm. Based. 
Okay. All right. There we go. Common ground. Wait, 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 wait. What's what are the what are the heights of the last three men that you've been with? Um, five eight. Okay. Six six. Oh. Five ten. Okay. okay. All right. So there's like okay. a cross section there. I don't discriminate. It's, it's fairness. Yeah, yeah, there you fair. go. There okay. you go. All right. Six six was honestly too tall. Yeah. Low key. Yeah. <laughs> Are you gonna say something? I do have to head out. Actually, I was gonna say traffic. But She's late and she has to leave I early. Know. I'm sorry. God love it. I wasn't late the other go ahead. times. It's all good. It's all totally. good. Yeah. Um, I enjoy oh, the panel 30. a lot. It's very nice. Ave good Marie, you. Uh, you said that you were tricked. Oh, sorry. I'm, yeah. You said that you were tricked into a double date once. I went on a date with a guy that told me he asks zero questions. I went on a date with a guy who showed up late, and then instead of going to dinner, we went to frozen yogurt, and he kept going behind me in line to get topping. Bro. Inevitable, what? leaving me to pay? Yeah, that that's was insane. Sick. Sickening. Bro, that super sick. chat that was there was so oh good. I need to hear that <laughs> story. Travello oh smooth that's super chat, one. so good. So I'll get it. Um, let's see. You said that being truly confident and full of self love can leave you alone for a long time. How so? Because, like, I don't accept what I used to accept anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Like I have learned my lessons, I've learned about the red flags, and so I say no a lot now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of guys who ask me on dates that in the past I probably would have gone out with, but I see the red flags. And I'm like, no, like you've already said something weird, you've already said something mm -hmm. that I know what you're about, mm -hmm. and so you're alone for a very long time, and especially someone who's pursuing a career very intensely, I can only focus on that and if you're not adding something truly positive and supporting and you're not really truthful to yourself I feel like a lot of the time in the past now looking I was a mirror for many men and had them face a lot of the hypocrisies that they would tell me but then not do mm -hmm. and I just feel like yeah I'm very confident in myself I know what I bring to the table I know I'm genuine and true I'm very much about my word and I'm not going to be with a man who's not and I can kind of subs I can pick up the red flags now like I've learned lessons so yeah have I not been going on as many dates as I used to yeah because I don't even want to do that I'm looking for someone who's Genuine. I want to have real conversation. I really want to get to know you, and I really want you to care about getting to know me and know that it's not some agenda or kind of fake. Even though in the past I don't think it was either, because I do think these men did care for me, but it wasn't in the way I needed. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I feel like I'm just saying no more. So that means I'm alone, but I'm not lonely. If that makes sense. That's good. I think I think women need to get good at saying no when it comes to guys. Yeah, and it's just about knowing your worth and like truly being confident and taking time to be alone and to yes. figure out what you want yes. in life, in family, in your partner, in your friends. I even know to friends too, you know, but definitely to relationships and dating. I'll tell you one of my uh, opinions on women. I think being able to say no is a trait of a high value woman. Yeah. Yeah, a hundred percent. Based. I, let's see. Actually, let me do some chats, and then I'll continue on with my notes here. We have Jesus saved me. Hey, thank you, man. I know someone who had an affair and got the woman pregnant and still did not file for, for divorce. His wife had to file for divorce. So that is one reason why women initiating divorce is high, because men will not leave even in a situation like that. Word. Thank you, Jesus. Um, damn. This is one reason why women is high because men will not leave someone who had an affair, got the woman pregnant, and still did not follow. Okay. Well. It's like my biological father. Wow. Grid One Motorsports. Dudes will wait in the friend zone forever to get a chance to bump uglies, but the guy you're dating will not wait for sex. Girls, listen to much, too much to what makes the pussy quiver. Oh. What? Excuse me? Quivering pussy. Ooh, that was cringe. What even is that? <laughs> I mean, it's crudely put, but he's right. Yeah. yeah. No, they, I mean, I think it was you that was saying, yeah, there's guys, even if you wait a long time. I think if the context of the interaction or relationship is romantic from the jump, not the case. But if he's just like quietly waiting in the friend zone for his chance, then certainly, yeah, he might just. Yeah, women, women want the romance. They want the feels. They want a guy who makes them feel something. Facts. So we have Travalo Smooth, Redhead is Beyond Delulu. Uh, 
if you had multiple situate yeah, actually no. Chase, sorry, could you read this? Yeah. Actually, Ava, how about you read it? <coughs> Red, I love how that they're all referencing me by my no, hair. Right. But <laughs> Redhead is beyond a Lulu. If you have had multiple situations where you pick trash men, then you have trash intuition, even though intuition is BS. This is why it's important to have your father or brother, uncle, et cetera, to vet men, blah, 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 blah to prevent this bad cycle. Um, first of all... Fantastic comment. I Wait, why are you laughing? It, do, you, do you think it's funny or... Uh, like, you, you disagree? Well, you disagree first of all, them? I never said I picked these men. Like, yes, eventually well, I did, but I can honestly say that the men I'm, I have been referencing on mm -hmm. this have pursued and pursued and pursued me so intensely that I was like, you know what, fine, we're going to go on a date. And, like... Whatever. It wasn't in like a creepy, scary way, but oh, they were okay. very consistent sure, sure, sure. and they really said a lot. And I saw also their characteristics, at least for what they were pursuing, they seemed very at least mature and healthy and blah, blah, blah with all that shit mm. going on. Obviously, I didn't know about the relationship stuff, but my intuition is what led me to figuring out all the bad, which led me to end it. Granted, I do admit there were red flags for some of them in the beginning that now, like I'm saying, I have learned from. Now sure. I'm saying no a lot to the things I wouldn't have before. But <gasps> just to clarify. Excuse me. Thank you. Uh, oh. Other oh my gosh. Modest Hikima donated $101. High, six, six figure, six figure. software eng, body count seven. Oh. Oh. Ava, you really think I want some random chick that has been with 20 plus dudes? Please stop lying to yourself, is generic. Also props to Jackie on the Amazon job. Corporate shill by day, badass oh. by night. <laughs> what? Yeah. Okay. okay. I don't really know that. Did you yeah, have the, a quick the, thing? The, the uh, Travello Smooth's comment, he said, this is why it's important to have your father, brother, uncle, etc., to vet men for you to prevent this bad cycle. So true. Hmm. What if I, those guys are shit though? Like, what if they're bad? Okay, like, what if they're the not thing. good you have men? To, hopefully, you have a good, good man to in your vetting, life. Hel helping good men vet your people is good. Yes. But your father, your brother, those your are uncle, not good men. I mean, it depends on the person. I mean, well, but if you? the point is that you, it's good to have <laughs> yeah, men and that getting care. Your stop. One hundred percent. Please For allow sure. me to finish my point. It's important to have men that care about you in your life yes. who also know how men are. Like, I've had female yeah. friends throughout my life. I, I knew that they were with bad dudes and yeah. I could sniff how bad their mm -hmm. dudes were from a hundred miles yeah. away. Yeah. It's very important to have guys like that for around sure. you in your That's life true. that can do that for you. Yeah. Also, we need to leave at 945. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, so here minutes. related to this, Chase, you say women suck at picking dudes. You're 100% right. That's why arranged marriages are standard. In so many parts of the world, I think this is somewhat related to Travalo's thing. The father needs to vet potentials for this reason, ladies. That was why, that, that's how courtship has been historically a guy if a guy wanted to pursue a woman her father had to be involved and he would oh, vet the guy because women generally speaking cannot vet guys properly my father would hurt. not have been a great person to vet for me though i'm sorry to hear that yeah that it sucks. sucks if all men were give, good at that give your great. kids give your kids that gift by finding a great man i will all right we have stifler here ask everyone to rate their looks on a scale of one to ten we're gonna go around the table on this go ahead ten we're rating Every our time. own look? Is that what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. like oh. objectively. Your looks, 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 looks. Uh, I, 10. I hate this question. How about zero? Don't, I'm gonna, I'm don't be honest. Yeah. Yeah. All yes. right, fine. Eight. Okay. No, I hate that question. Why? Because it's so like shallow and stupid. And Would you date a guy, who's, stupid. Stupid. Would you date a guy who's shorter than you? Absolutely. No, because shorter than me, I'm 5'5". Five, five. Would you date a guy who's shorter than you? Yes. No, you Stop wouldn't. the cap. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. You would not. I don't know. Okay, Why so are you so shallow? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I would say probably seven and a half to eight. Um, I'd say around seven. Eight. Um, six to seven, but I think seven when I smile. Oh. I freaking love your answers so much. I love your so answers. Love your awesome. answers. Uh, Chase, what about you? Seven and a half, eight on a good day. I give myself six, six and a half on a good day. I'm going to say it. Y'all, I'm not going to rate y'all, but y'all overrated yourselves a lot. That's not very nice. Why? It's just I heard, live, live I heard, in reality. I heard two tens right off the bat. Two like, tens off I'm the bat. Perfect. I'm not saying you guys are ugly, but like gets to me when every freaking time like half the panel rates do you, themselves 10s. Do you think all women should be 10s? Consider themselves 10s? No. You too, since you're the 10s? 
Do I think that all women should consider themselves as tens? Looks wise. Looks wise. Looks wise. Um, I think that how you perceive yourself is all about your self worth, and like your looks follow from that. Like my looks have grown as my self worth has grown, so I think it's all connected. Um, Wait, your looks have grown. Like I feel like my looks have that improved as my self worth has improved. Yeah. You improve your feminine energy. Confidence. You look more. Attractive. Yes, sure. I yeah. Like, do I have more to go? Like, yeah, maybe I could be an 11. Like, who knows? That, no, <laughs> that's not how this works. That's you you how said 10 is then. maxed out. Mm-hmm. Ten, he's ten, it's a 10 I out of 10. I think that every woman can get to a point where they perceive themselves as a 10, and it's a worthy goal to do. Uh, if, yeah. How do you think, how do you think the looks? average man... Looks. How do you yeah. think the average man would rate you out of 10? Um, I'm, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Okay. Wait, so, but you think all <laughs> I think women, looks is very, uh, subjective. But so yeah. do all, should all women view themselves as tens in terms of their fit looks, physical appearance? I think that every woman should work on viewing work. themselves as a 10. I don't think that from the beginning, maybe, I don't know, maybe from the beginning they feel like for a 10. Men too? For, for men, men too? For should, men too? Should, should, for men too? Like should men perceive themselves as tens? Yeah. I, I don't know. I can't speak for men. Okay. Um, Men can do whatever they want. <laughs> well, how would you have responded if Brian said that? Uh, yeah, I'm a ten. He was a ten. Uh, I I wouldn't. Yeah, Period. yeah. Really? Yeah, because you. I want someone who's like confident. I'm not gonna it's tear not about you down. Con- the confident thing. And also real that. though, but like at the same time, I think there's many factors that go into a ten. Like there. No, but it's just no, looks. Just purely just physical, physical attractiveness. <laughs> well. Women, like, dude. I don't know. Wouldn't, wouldn't the confident confident. thing be like, I acknowledge mm-hmm. that I'm not uh, amongst the most physically attractive people in the world. I'm a six. I'm a seven. I'm confident in that. I don't feel bad about my physical appearance, but I also acknowledge that I'm not on par with the most beautiful models mm-hmm. in the entire world. I'm not. A, if you say you're a ten, that means that you view your uh, your own self assessment of your physical attractiveness is that I am on par with the most beautiful people in the world. Yeah. Okay. It's not just I'm on par with the most beautiful people in the world. It's I am equal to the most beautiful it's people not the in the same world. Kind of same I don't know kind of why world. you want so badly for girls to bring their numbers down. Because like, why is that look, so look, like... Be, be, it's a, it's a <laughs> question of... And for of, you to say that we overrated us is so ridiculous how's, to me. How's that ridiculous? Because you don't even think of yourself as a 10, but yeah, you're trying to tell us what we are. Yeah, yeah. because I have eyeballs and... But I, I think there's a difference that beauty is the eye that behold confident and realistic. Ladies, ladies, the point that Brian's making is if you took a thousand men and you all lined up in front of a thousand men and then you connect you you collected each of their ratings so Mm -hmm. to speak the point that brian's making is your ratings of yourselves would probably differ from a thousand men's if you took the average of all of them a thousand men's ratings yes i agree with that statement i'm not saying that i'm a 10 by the way am i I already answered this was the was the question how do men perceive my looks or how do i know but it's like how do you okay hold on when it comes to when it comes to this question (laughs) let's say for example there is, to some degree, objectivity when it comes to beauty. So, what I can't say I have a million dollars in my bank account, and if I have zero dollars in my bank account, just because I think it or say it doesn't mean that it's true. There is objectivity to beauty. There's also convention to beauty. Sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, how are we, like... Well, okay, so I have a question for you. You have lip filler, correct? No. You don't have lip filler? <laughs> I got lip filler done two years ago. Okay. So maybe there's some left over from it, but it's just the way that I do my oh, makeup. Oh, okay. You had lip filler previously, Yes, though. I did, yeah. Okay, and so do you feel that, like, if you were a 10, why the need for, were you not a 10 back then? I, I think that looks I've grown wise? in confidence and in looks, yeah, since then. Okay. Yeah. But I I think if I perceive myself as a 10, then I like push myself to get to those standards every day. So I don't think it's helpful. You know what? At the end of the day, I don't really give a fuck what true is. I give I give more of a fuck of what is effective. You don't give a fuck about what truth is. I care more about what's going to be effective for me than what I care about being right or whatever, because right is the perception of what. Like, what is that even? You know what I'm saying? Like, according to a reality, objective reality according to who? To you? To the thousands of men? No, objective reality isn't according to anybody. I mean, objective (sighs) reality is just objective reality. To but who decides what objective reality? Well, so for example, for example, beauty is based on symmetry and the golden ratio. Okay. Right, that's objective reality. 
that's not something like it's nobody's perception like for example oh, okay so if that's the question my answer is i don't give a fuck <laughs> Okay. Yeah. In the beginning of the podcast, who rated us? I heard you call numbers out. Was that was some random some... super chat? Okay. It was a chat. Mm. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, the reason why, I guess to answer your question, why I think it's important that know. both men and women, you guys got to go. You can't yeah. stay another like 15, 20 minutes? No, maybe another five, but 15, Okay, we'll 20, do another no. five. We could do another five. We can do another five. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> well, not Look. four. Okay, four. All right. <laughs> You got, you got you got four minutes. I got four minutes to to make to my save the fucking, world, to save the fucking world. <laughs> make, make your points we're, while we're here, here, dude. Yeah. So clock's ticking. I think that both men and women need to be operating in reality when it comes to their own self-assessment of their yes. attractiveness in the yes. dating marketplace. If you're no offense, delusional when it comes to your own <laughs> physical attractiveness. Attra I'm not. I'm not saying you guys are unattractive or ugly. You're both attractive women. But however, if you think you are a 10, AKA you are perfect, you are on par with the most beautiful women in the world, yeah. that, that is delusion. And I think I'm an average looking dude. I don't think I'm anything special. You were trying to say, well, how can you as a guy who's not a 10 claim that we're not 10? First off, you need not be, in order to see something, you need not be that thing which you don't see in that person to be able to see it. Um, I think it's very important that both men and women are realistic about where they stand when it comes to their place in the dating marketplace. If you don't, I think that's where women typically end up getting burned by dudes because if you think you're hot shit, you're gonna get like these guys, you're gonna think you're, you're deserving or entitled to a certain caliber of guy. And if you think you're a 10, surely then you must be deserving of a guy who's a 10. Mm -hmm. Now you might, hold this view that you hold for yourself to the way that you the 10 in euro okay brian let me let me let me land it for you i know, sure, sure, I know yeah, what yeah, you're yeah. picking i know what you're putting down i'm picking it up a lot of women think that they're 10s a lot of women also end up sleeping with dudes that are 10s because those guys will sleep with them women it reaffirms this belief in their minds oh i'm a 10 and then these women hit cold, hard reality when they realize, oh, the kinds of guys that I could sleep with are not the kinds of guys that I can lock down for marriage. This happens across society as a whole. Mm. You shaking your head at that? You don't think so? That's not my experience. Look, it You're, might not be your experience, yeah. but it is for a lot of women. A lot of women, a, a lot of women go through. They reevaluate their self identity. They should, and a, a, a <laughs> lot of women will be with guys that are very high value who want to sleep. Are with they them. high value or are they good looking? Just hold on, both. A lot of women will be with a lot of women will sleep with guys that are quote unquote high value who want to sleep with them, yeah. but then they find the cold hard reality when they when it's time to settle down, they realize, oh, those guys that I liked that were willing to sleep with me in the past won't marry me. And that's yeah. a hard realization for a lot of women. I think that's a good argument for saying maybe you shouldn't think if that's if that's what's happening because of your belief that you're a ten, then you shouldn't do that. Yes. My experience of believing that I'm a ten is like five years ago. My, I mean, there's a, m m most women are insecure. The most beautiful women in the world mm -hmm. are insecure. Mm -hmm. So to me, the way that I combated that insecurity was saying, I'm hot shit. I'm the baddest bitch in this room. I'm a 10. And every time I walk into a room, I walk into a room with 10 energy. As I walk into a room with 10 energy, it attracts different energy because it's not really just about your looks. It's about the kind of person that you are, the ener energy that you bring, your confidence. And when you think, oh, I'm a 10, my looks are a 10, and then I start acting like it. I start doing my hair differently. I start doing my makeup differently. I start getting actually physically more beautiful. And I know I will become even more beautiful as I continue to think I'm a 10, I'm a bad bitch. So that's effective for me. If it's ineffective for me to think that I'm a 10 and I'm ending up in these weird situations, then I should reevaluate re and look at reality. But in my experience, it's only benefited me and helped me become more and more physically beautiful and better overall. Qu wait, question for you on this. Cheers, so, cheers to that. So Thank you're... You you're you're saying that you will become more physically beautiful um i mean just given the track record i think okay i have a question were you are you more physically attractive now at 31 than you were at 21 yes will you be more physically attractive at 41 than you are now i um think that my mindset should stay the same i think maybe it's, for a 41 year old can i compare myself to someone who's 25 no, at Beauty 41 versus, fades or whatever. versus, yeah, at 31. Well, you said you're more physically attractive now at 31 versus at when you were 21. Yes, yes. 
and you'll be more, do you think you'll be more physically attractive in 10 years at 41 versus now at 31? Um, well, I think as we age, you know, like our physical beauty does decrease, you know? So sure, when yeah. I'm 41, I mean, I hope to be a hot 41 year old. Am I going to be as like youthful and like whatever as I am now? I don't know. Probably not, to be honest. Okay. But I still think my internal like posturing should be I'm, t I'm a 10. I'm a bad bitch. You know, this is one of the few things you've said on this podcast that we can absolutely agree on. On the last Great. podcast, <laughs> on the last po last podcast I, I, I did with Brian, I said that it's really important for women to cultivate that inner beauty. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I can tell that's something that you've worked on mm -hmm. and it's something that you're intentional about. And I, I salute you for that. Thank you. You know, there's, there's, especially we live in a world where there's a lot of women out there that are filled with insecurity and self-loathing. I think those are just objectively speaking, those aren't attractive traits. Yeah. I don't think delusional self-confidence is good, but I think not. I think healthy self-confidence is very attractive. Yes. And uh, you know, I salute that. It's Thank it's you. it's a good trait to develop. Thank you. And it it as you know, I made this point on the last podcast. As a woman cultivates that inner beauty and also that inner femininity, mm -hmm. that does also make her more beautiful externally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just kind of. To, I guess to land the plane on what I was saying before. So I, if I had to distill down one of the primary issues in dating that I see, so women want the best man that they can get. Women will confuse sexual attraction for relationship attraction. So men will sleep with women who they would never have a relationship with just solely based on the metric of looks. So a woman can sleep with a guy who's out of her league in, term of, in terms of looks, status, et cetera, money, um, that guy's never gonna commit to her. So if you start, women can sleep up, but you probably aren't gonna like marry up. So if you think you're a 10, like I think it's important to be based in reality when it comes to your own self-assessment of your physical appearance, because if you think you're hot shit and Let's say you're not, you're going to be chasing after dudes who will gladly sleep with you, who are really attractive guys, who make a lot of money, who have high status. These men will never give you the ring. That's why you have women who are trapped in situationships with dudes who will never give you commitment. That's why I think it's very important to have an accurate self-assessment of your own attractiveness, your own physical attractiveness in the dating marketplace. That way you know here's the guy who I think I can realistically get a relationship from because men will gladly sleep with you, keep you on the, the back burner, just string you along, sleep with you. Uh, they'll never give you commitment. And that's why I think it's important that, that both men and women are aware of where they stand in the uh, sexual marketplace, the dating marketplace. So your league is the men who will marry you, not the men who will sleep with you. And as women, typically I think women you'll break a rule to sleep with a guy, he has to be, you'll break your rule like for sleeping with a guy quick if he's really physically attractive. Whereas men, it tends to be the reverse. So men will sleep with women of a, let's say, men will sleep with women that they would never be in a relationship with. They'll sleep with you, but just based on your looks alone, they would never be in a relationship with you. Whereas, I think it's typically the re it's the reverse for women. In order for you to sleep with a guy, he needs to be at least physically attractive enough for you to be in a relationship with him. So, anyways, I know you guys have to go. So, thank you very See much for coming. Is that gang signs? It's a hard Hi. Hi. Oh, Illy. dope. <laughs> oh, body nice. count. Nice meeting. Body you guys. count. Wait, really quick. Do you guys? Does body count matter? What do you mean? Do you, us? Do you think like do you object? <laughs> Do you, object, do you object to men caring about a woman's body count? Our time is up. <laughs> I think here I'm gonna do I'm gonna rearrange the seating here. Nice a little to meet bit. you guys. Thank you guys for coming. Um, drive, drive safe. So here I'm gonna just y'all are just gonna move okay. down this way. Scuffed that one. <laughs> well, <laughs> just trying to before they left. <laughs> Wait, Real. No. I'm <laughs> you back in. Hey. Sorry, you want the lights nah, just leave it on for now. I mean, maybe we'll do it. We're, 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 yeah. yeah, no, all the way down. All the way down. Ah, like 20, 30 minutes. I need to get through some of my notes. Yeah, you scoot down right here, and then I'm going to adjust the cameras. Um, damn, I had so many. I'm like so behind on notes. 
I'm gonna read some chats, guys. I'm gonna read, some, wait. Uh, hold on, no, you, sorry. You go that way. Can you guys just like go? You want me to? Yeah, there, and then can you Ooh. go, can you go over there, I guess? Okay, guys, I'm gonna do a couple chats. Travola, oh wait. Wait, yo, Nick, tell. All right, let me get these chats here. Hold on, guys. All right, we got. If you rate yourself, to Raven DT donated one hundred dollars. If you rate yourself a ten out of ten in your physical appearance, it automatically makes you a zero. Oh. Hubris and vanity are unbecoming. True confidence is accepting that you are a six and working on your personality so you can compensate appropriately. Raven DT, well, well put, well put. All right, hold on, we got some more coming in here. One sec, guys. Hmm. I'm not going to pause these anymore, by to the way, guys. So it'll just come in. To underscore ten s underscore him oh underscore gosh. three donated ninety nine dollars. I think her cute. But girl one, her fashion is really bad, and her they can hear and earrings scream dollar store. <laughs> a rocking Ethiopian cleavage, long and flat relative Jesus. to other women. Jesus. Objectively, you're a five, and with better cup plus clothes a six. I'm Red sure has you're a still, brow. still in the studio. I'm sure you're still a one. Still in the studio. Oh, wow. Okay, she says you're one uh, to the two tens. I'm sorry. Okay, we have... Saint underscore easy donated $99. Women know when they are attractive. Guys are shameless when it comes to showing interest. Women, generally speaking, will rarely let a guy know he is the shit. Hmm. Saint Reezy, thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. Oh. Sorry. They had to leave. I'm sorry for all these chats addressed. At Modest Hikima donated $101. Imagine thinking you are a 10 if you were a 10, you would have kids sorry. already. I'm sorry, guys. WTF. Have... If you were a 10, you would be so I'm far sorry. taken. If you think your looks are 10th, that's wrong. If they were, your personality takes you to a 3. Time to leave 304 bricks and W. I'm sorry that, we, that a lot of these were directed at the girls who left, but... Um, it's not, there's no pause anymore with the TTS, so we're full steam ahead. All right, um, let's see, I had some notes here. One sec, guys. So we had, not Michelle, Kylie. Yes. Finally getting to Kylie, Woo okay, at the very Yay. fucking end of the show. We, got, we had a lot of chats and stuff, so. Uh, you were in, oh, I need to adjust the uh, camera angles here, fuck. Uh, I'll wait till uh, Chase gets back, <laughs> I guess. Uh, you were in a relationship currently it's complicated with the same person but then oh that's when you first reach out but now you're single yeah the things change since the first since, oh, tilt, tilt the mic up towards you a little bit Weird. here scoot your mic closer to you please yeah good yeah yeah we're good okay. uh you said you have a super terrible dating story about the first guy you ever loved why don't you tell us that story okay um where do i start Okay, I met him at a Christmas tree lot. Mm -hmm. um, I pretty much fell in love with him instantly. He led me on, completely broke my heart. Was a he was addicted to drugs. Oh, um, yeah. Um, but pretty much was like messing around with me the whole time, and then seeing his ex-girlfriend behind my back um so basically what happened was he, he fucked me over pretty pretty gnarly but mm -hmm. um i mean you said that you were 19 you fell in love instantly correct pretty much i would say um you said you were 19 and newly sober yeah so when i was when i was 19 um i stopped everything i didn't drink i didn't really do drugs to be honest but I stopped drinking completely um, didn't do drugs and yeah so I had met him pretty like fresh sober yeah so so you had but were, did you like were you previously heavily drinking 
I wouldn't say really heavily. It was just kind of something that needed to happen. Like I like I don't think drinking really benefits. Like my, okay. it didn't really benefit my life. So yeah, and you he, said literally the moment you shook his hand and introduced yourself, you had insane butterflies. Yeah, I remember that. Okay. Um, what was it about him that gave you the butterflies? He was very, very, very confident. Okay. And he was, he was pretty short, too. He was about 5'6". How tall are you? 5'6". Okay, so same height. Yeah. Okay. But um, he, he's, he's really confident. Was he good looking? A lot of tattoos, charisma? No tattoos. No tattoos. Or maybe he might have had like one, but um, he... I. I wouldn't call him insanely good looking. Okay. It was more his He's personal- super confident. Yes. Okay. He had a, a, an amazing personality. Um, sure. But looks wise, he was not average, definitely. Like he was, average guy. Yeah, he was average. Okay. Um, average. And, but you said you had insane butterflies. So, you had insane butterflies for him. Yes. This was when you were 19. Mm-hmm. And you're how old again now? 20, 25. 25. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, have you felt that level of butterflies for any other guy? No. Okay. Um, you say here, the ca- what is the catch for this guy? The catch? <laughs> what was he the catch? Did, he, did, he didn't love me back, so. <laughs> huh? He did not. No, but there's him. more. Um, I'm trying to remember. What, oh, oh, I remember. Um, he ended up in jail. <laughs> and then I found out that he was in jail so I went to go see him Mm -hmm. pretty much knowing that he wasn't as into me as I was into him here let me I'll try to help out here but you said the whole time the catch is this dude the whole time was a meth and heroin addict oh yeah and secretly seeing his ex-girlfriend the entire time he was whoa okay those are some pretty big red flags um and you said the big thing that attracted you to him was his confidence. Mm-hmm. I'm talking like the heroin meth confidence. It's the heroin chic. The heroin meth chari- oh. chariz- <laughs> charisma. Um, you said we were never never officially together, mm-hmm. but we're doing all relationship things. Yes. So when you say doing all the relationship things, do you mean administering Narcan? <laughs> I never had to do that for him. <laughs> That's horrible. Wait, did you know? <laughs> what, is, what is Narcan? I don't even know it's what that like means. When someone's it's, ODing it's, on fentanyl, it's like what you administer to. Damn. Yeah, I don't yeah. like mm-hmm. scaring them back. To life. Um, oh, no, no, no. But no. so when you say doing all the relationships, what do you mean besides it? Yeah. Dates, sex, oh. PDA, like. Okay. Situationship. How long were you dating him? So um, I would say there was like a six month period. He kind of dropped off the face of the earth for a little bit, came back, and then Mm -hmm. started seeing him again. So total, I would say probably somewhere around a year or a year and a half. But but there was like, see, I don't even know how accurate that is because there was like a break in between there. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Wait, Wait. did you know that he was into drugs when you started dating? No, I had no clue. Wait, then why did you continue after you knew? Um, because I was in love so stupid in love with him oh it was i was i look back on it now and i like i i know it was stupid i would never do that now but um in the time i was super young so i'm 25 now but i was super young and i just kind of let my feelings take me and i think you probably are like i know like women or men or whatever you think that people are going to change mm-hmm. like if you have a conversation with them you think like okay now i've had this conversation with them they understand now they'll change right wait so okay yeah. how, how long were you dating him uh it was i'd say somewhere around a year but it was like split up there were it's on again off again kind of it was split up you said because he was in jail or so i was seeing him and then he he went to jail was still seeing him so that was like a six month period then he literally dropped off the face of the earth like I just don't know where he went right so that was 
about six months and then he showed back up and then I'd say probably like another six months. So it was like six months together, he ghosted you, I guess he went to jail. Yeah, uh, yeah ghosted. Then dated another six months. Mm -hmm. Okay, were you seeing other guys during that break? Like, did you date other men? I think I tried, but I... You were still caught up on feelings for... Yeah, it okay. took me a really long time to um, How that. early on into the relationship did you find out that he was a meth and heroin addict? Maybe... Can you move that mic over, please? You're... No, 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 not you. You. Move over the mic. Go ahead. I want to say couple months okay yeah. and that wasn't like a deal breaker red flag for you i knew it was but i didn't care you didn't care I... why because you were in love with him yeah okay mm -hmm. um so you said in your pre-show notes you weren't aware of the drug use in the beginning mm -hmm. and there was this one time on halloween six years ago that you picked up his really sketchy friend <laughs> in laguna niguel where we were driving and all of a sudden the friend who was in your back seat does what? So he unwraps a piece of foil and oh starts just randomly smoking. Can we say? Heroin? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if there was restrictions. Go ahead. Go ahead. So he just started smoking heroin in the back of my car. And <laughs> I didn't know what to do, so I didn't say anything. Um, How early on in the relationship was that? This was few months this and, was before the I ghost or whatever yeah this was before that okay yeah um and so you said you were in so much shock you couldn't even say anything mm -hmm. uh then your boyfriend guy whatever grabs the drugs from him and smokes it too yes okay so it looks at me disrespects me and it's like i'm yeah. gonna do it anyway can you get like you know how you can hotbox can you get like a I would assume contact so. thing? Probably. With like yeah, I would assume while so. While you're that's driving, scary. that's a yikes. Not even more. Um, that's, you were driving? You were driving. I was driving, yeah. For how long after the whole heroin in the car incident did you stay with him? I honestly don't think it was much longer after that. Well, no, but, but you said, okay, you said it was before he went, he ghosted you. So you said you were with him for six months and then there was the break and then you dated him for another six months after he got out of prison or jail or something? So or? It, it was so long ago that I, it, it's, the timeline is a little, sorry, that's, that's, that's fine. But you, so it was before the jail incident that the car in heroin incident occurred. I actually don't, I don't remember if the car incident was before or after jail. Okay. But. How long did you stay with him after that after incident? The, um, the heroin in the car incident, we'll call it. I want to say maybe another couple of months. And that I, wasn't like the immediate. <laughs> no, d dude, because I gave him like the, hey, that can never happen again. You know, like I talked oh, to him about it. And okay. um, I mean, that yes? that exact, well, that exact situation never happened again, you know, but then it was other things. Um, okay. All right. But also well. it's like this guy was never, he really was never my boyfriend. It was sure. It was more just like even worse. I know, right? Mm -hmm. I know it's even worse. He wasn't even loyal to you. And, Correct. Okay. Um, you said he ended up in jail and then eventually prison. Mm -hmm. um, the first time he ended up in jail, he dropped off the face of the earth. So I did some investigating and found out that he was indeed in jail. Mm -hmm. Had to use the chick oh, wow. FBI <laughs> skills. Anyway, I went to visit him. You went to visit him in jail. Yes. Okay. And you had your first ever jail visitation for a boyfriend that was it conjugal? No, I don't think you can do conjugals. What's that? It's like you can they in person. You can like they give you a little house or something in the jail. And That's can, only for married people. It's I you got to be married, yeah. Um, so, uh, so, oh, but okay. So you visit him in jail. Mm -hmm. Since you visited him in jail, uh, you noticed you indeed have a type crying laughing emoji. Yeah. Uh, you broke it off eventually because he was a piece of shit. <laughs> you said you've noticed you indeed have a type. What is your type? It's uh, definitely what I said earlier. I definitely like 
Well, it now is different than it was, but I like the reformed bad boy compared to what was then just the like, bad boy. Yeah, because like the bad boy is just gonna get you in trouble and fuck you over, right. and you're not gonna end up with that person in the end, most likely. Um, but I mean, honestly, like my my type is someone who has been through things like that, but has overcome. So maybe not currently in, like, it doesn't have to be drugs. It could just be, like, any hardship. Okay. So. But so like your past. type is past prison sentences? I, I do like prison dudes, not going to lie. <laughs> you do like pri- Why? I'm just curious, like, why? Well, what about them is attractive? So I find, and I don't do this on purpose, but I find... A lot of them are very organized, very kind to women. They're very chivalrous. They're clean as fuck. But I feel like there are non-prison guys that are just like that. Sorry, what'd you say? Oh, I, I, I feel like, like there's a lot of guys out there that didn't go to prison that's like clean and neat and treats women really nicely. There are. I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm just telling you what happens what i am attracted to um it's you have habristophilia what's that that's the phenomenon of an individual being sexually aroused by a criminal offender oh goodness modest hikima donated 101 dollars brixon plaza tell us which girls you want to have backslash forth with during reg show so we don't interrupt with tts when total bore forcing to pause jackie python is a virus Agree or disagree? Same W slash AWS. All hail Master Bezos and Piche. You're welcome. Uh, I, I, I actually don't mind Python, but I use a lot of Java. <laughs> All right, there you have it. Um, yeah, so, hold on, let me clear that. Chase, do you want to rejoin the... Yes. All right, you... You said you think modern dating is horrendous and mm-hmm. difficult. Women don't respect themselves and men are unfaithful, or so it seems that way. So how do women not respect themselves? Um, and how is modern dating horrendous and difficult? Do you think it might be... Oh, okay. Go ahead, go ahead. You're going to roast me, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you see, it, I, I imagine you like pass up opportunities with good men because you're like attracted to these guys who... You said your tr- you, your type is men who have a history of incarceration. Not not all of them, just it seems to be the case that most of the men you date are were previously incarcerated. I've only really dated like a few, like a, like less than a handful of people. Raven so. DT donated one hundred dollars. Find yourself an older military man if you want an organized man. The military is a lot like prison, except they volunteered to go and they are building a real career. Become a tricarer tops. Don't date anyone below E6, though. Those guys oh. are F-boys. Oh. It's yep. honestly, honestly good advice. Those guys are F-boys. How many dudes um, have you dated that have been to prison? You said a handful. Well, Res- no, I've only mean? dated less than a handful of guys. Oh, okay. Um, How many of them have been to prison? If All we're counting the, the first guy, then one, two, three, three four, five, seven. Two. Two. It's Just, two. Okay. Well, you yeah, said, but two. you said your type is, I've noticed I indeed have a type. It's because I, lo- I, I look at guys like that and I'm like, oh, he's, he's hot. He looks like mm-hmm. he went to jail. <laughs> <laughs> These girls have their bad boy but, tendencies. No, no, man. no, but... I don't love me, and I'm not, not I'm not about prison guys or anything. But well, you said you date bad boys a little yes. bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Um, so, you you say modern dating is horrendous and difficult. Mm-hmm. Don't you think you might be making making it, more it difficult, difficult for yourself it by, to be. by dating these types of men? Yeah. I think okay. my own but like brain choice is the- you have agency you have choice but I will tell you um, my longest relationship 
He went to prison. He was the most amazing guy. Wait. Which? At, like, ever. Like, I mean... He... he Wait, he is this the meth, kind, the meth heroin guy? No, no, no. Guy? Oh, different, different was, prison guy. Yeah, okay. we were together for like three and a half years. Yeah. Um, what did he go to? What? Drugs? Was it drugs for him too? or? Uh, he, he had a history of drug use, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Wait, but he's a, like the most stand-up individual. Sure. I will, yeah, uh, I, you can turn your life around. Absolutely. Yeah, he was proof um, of that for sure. But like, it seems like specifically going after these men and disregarding other men who perhaps don't have that kind of history seems to be a bit self-sabotaging. <laughs> I don't specifically go after them. Okay. I just right. find myself attracted to guys like that, but I would be open to way more than that because I know that there's other kinds of guys out there. I'm just saying that that I see a, a dude. Is it like, like, like is it the dangerous vibe? Like is it that there's like a hint of danger, not necessarily towards you, but you know that they're like they're bad men. Like they're not bad, necessarily like, morally bad, bad yeah, but because I don't like them. Like when they're in the doing the bad stuff i i don't i don't like that she like, likes the reformed version is it is it like kind of like the lawless cowboy vibe that you like like there's a little bit of danger there you know like <laughs> what what is it Would probably you say that's, a little that's, bit yeah 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 i think that guy's advice to go for military mm -hmm. men is honestly really good advice i would agree my grandpa was a military guy and him and my grandma were married for over 60 years so wow yeah, you should totally go for like military dudes, not under E6, like that guy said. But uh, yeah, don't yeah. make my mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Wait, are you in general okay with drugs with guys? I don't like I don't like drugs or alcohol. You like tatted guys? Um, sure, but I also like not tattooed guys as well. When you see a guy with tattoos, does it like signal something to you? Like, yo, this, this guy might be a little dangerous. No, because you can also have certain kinds of tattoos that make you very not attractive. So just because you have tattoos doesn't mean. Like what, what, kind, like, of, what kind of tattoos make a guy unattractive? I'll tell you, and I'm so sorry if anybody has these tattoos, oh, no. but um, <laughs> a, a dude, a dude with a lion Roses, black and gray roses and a compass or a, or a wolf. Have you had like specific experiences with guys with those tattoos or do you just generally find no, those I specific just, tattoos unattractive? I, well, I, I, I'm an artist, so I do these uh, for a living. And so you see like a certain type of personality that comes in through the doors that gets these tattoos. It's the weirdest thing. Okay. I don't know. What, what is that kind oh, of personality? Um, well, I'll just call it not my not my thing, not my what, style. What is, what is it? What is it? <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. Um, I would just say like super fuck boyish, maybe. Oh, okay. Or yeah. maybe maybe that, and then um. You're you're nodding your weird. head in agreement. Have you yeah. experienced the same vibe so, with dudes with those tattoos? So the one that got the other girl pregnant and all that, he had a compass tattoo <laughs> right <laughs> here. <laughs> and I'm not sure if he had a line. I don't think he did. But I always thought it was the most attractive thing in the world. And then I saw his brother get it because I was close with his brother because his brother did nothing wrong. And then once his brother got it, he turned... It was just, I was like, Wait, nope. so his brother got the tattoo and then turned bad? He turned into a, a different vibe for me. He always used to be that, like, innocent, like... He got a, tump a compass tattoo He got well. the compass tattoo, and then it all just went downhill for him. Interesting. What is it with the I will compass always, tattoos? I will always going on love there. him, because he was, like, a little brother to me, but, like, no. Not anymore. Okay. I'm trying to think if I know anyone with compass tattoos... It's such a strange <laughs> It's pattern. weird. As mm. soon as she said compass, I was like, oh, no, no. You want to keep rolling, Brian? Yeah, hold on. I had to adjust the cameras there. Although probably, yeah. Um, you said that there's a very apparent hookup culture and absolute hoflation going on. So mm -hmm. what, what is hoflation? Um, I think where meaningless hookups and sex are glorified and mm -hmm. I just see I mean like that kind of stuff was going on when I was a 
when I was a teenager, so like 10 years ago-ish, it was still a thing, so it seems to be consistent. Um, but I don't think... I mean, yeah, that's that's puffflation, just glorified casual sex and hookups and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then <clears throat> I think the last thing here... Let's see. Oh, fuck it. Well, shit, we had so many notes. I think I'll scratch the... There's, like, so many points I could... I wrote down, but I don't know if we have time. Do we um, have any super chats? No super chats. Uh, I did want... It seemed like you pushed back quite a bit on the body count thing, so it sounded like, do you object to men caring about body count? And we'll go around the table on this. Absolutely. Absolutely? Okay, what about you? I think you have a right to care if you want to care. Sure. Um, I mean, you can care if you want, but everybody has a past and people overcome their issues, so. Okay. So do you, do you object to men having that preference, like low body count in women? I mean, everybody has their own preference, so I don't object. I okay. Guess. Well, do you think it's insecure or immature? Hold on. Saints underscore easy donated $99. Women don't like guys that are good for them, or guys on a fixed income. Tell a girl you're not good for her. She will think it's sexy. (laughs) Do you think it's insecure or immature to care Um, about body count? I don't. I mean, I grew up in a very Christian household. Um, So, I mean, unfortunately, I'm not a virgin, so um, I can't give that to my future husband, but Mm. I, I wouldn't be upset if a guy was no i do not object because that's what i also look for in a guy i think guys have the right to care okay so do you why why do you object to it to Um, men caring about body count why do you think it's insecure shouldn't judge on the past what do you why yeah i guess i I think that's what i more so lean towards is that you're condemning someone for their past and you're not letting them grow or change or be who the person that they are now and to condemn someone for their past is just dumb like like you know like you don't you just i just think that's dumb you think it's dumb yeah to condemn someone for their past or for their past choices like you should like people can change and people can be someone completely different than who they were and you don't know if that was like a phase when they were like Okay, yeah. so when it comes to this whole it's in the past argument, we shouldn't judge people on their past. Mm. Let's not act like when it comes to dating that men are these judgmental pricks and women are for benevolent forgivers of all. Women are extremely discerning when it comes to who they date. Women are pickier than men. Women are more selective than men. Women disqualify men for numerous reasons. So I guess why is it okay then for women to have preferences, standards, and boundaries, but men are not? I guess it depends on like what, like what kind of, like I don't know, like. Well, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, when we ran, went around the table, did you say? R- remind me. W- did you say you would date a virgin? Yeah. You would. Uh huh. Did you say it wasn't? I said sex was teachable, so I okay, would. Okay, that's yeah. fair. That's okay. Well, that's fair then. Mm-hmm. Um, what about? I forgot about you guys, but okay, don't. Well, I would argue though that a lot of women who would say, "Well, we shouldn't judge people on their past," a lot of women would also judge a man on his past lack of sexual experience. A lot of women, know. like we had multiple women here, say they wouldn't date a virgin. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know their get down, but like for me, it's like even I'm not gonna talk about that. But like, uh, I've definitely taught people like like gotten into a relationship with somebody and like they're not the best at sex, and then I teach them exactly what I like. They can learn. Girl number two, fuck boy, is considered a slur as far as I'm aware, as I'm not allowed to say it without it being hate speech, even in an extremely right state, Utah, are you homophobic? You describe tattoos of lions, roses, compass, wolves as being, is, did you because say Because it F- is. I said fuck boy. Did you say fuck boy or yeah. something else? I said fuck boy. That got to him. I think he, he might probably have has heard a lion the other tattoo. F probably word maybe. Boy. Um, did you hear Mike say that? 
Yeah, and is somebody tapping on the ground? Just please don't tap on the ground. We have a... Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so you object. Like, if I preferred a girl who has a low body count, you object to that? It depends on what do you mean by low body count. Like, if you're saying, like, three like, to... Yeah. That's ridiculous. Three to five? Three like, to five is ridiculous. Why is, that ridi why is that ridiculous? Because how old is the girl that you're looking for? It doesn't matter. It, 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 I mean, like, what world do you live in that you think that you're going to find, like... I, I hear from 30-year-old virgin women all the time. I don't believe them. Oh, you don't believe you don't that believe a 30-year-old uh -huh. could be a... Vir I mean, look, there's some women do lie about that, but there, there are older, like, older women who are virgins. There's women with religious convictions. There's women who just why, choose not to sleep around. Why like, have they not found... If they have, like, these religious convictions or if they're so, like, such saints, why aren't they married and, like, you know what I mean? Like, how, how are you single well, and so that's still a, different, a virgin? Well, so that's a different question. We've gone from whether or not the women exist to now why are you still a virgin? Like, some people just choose not to have sex. They view it as a sacred thing and they don't want to sleep with people unless they're serious with them i know but why wouldn't they find that person then those people i get like i i know a lot of people like that like because i have family down in alabama but they get they get married when they're like 18 they get married when they're 20 and then like they they're banging their husband you know what i mean it's not like they're waiting until they're 30 and they're like i'm still a virgin like come on what 30 year old virgin that's like being a 40 year old virgin i mean sometimes they're socially awkward women that haven't found the right guy mm -hmm. sometimes they're women with yeah. very high high standards that haven't found the right guy for any number of reasons like it's Somebody could ask the same question of you. Why haven't you found the right guy? You're 33 years old. Well, like, I'm you know, not it's, a virgin. It's, it's the I know, but it's <laughs> it's the same thing. Like, why didn't those women find the right guy? I've wanted to find the right guy. Like, neither party did. But to say that it's ridiculous for a man to prefer that is ridiculous. I I think I think three to five is ridiculous. Like for me, like it's just so ridiculous. I can guarantee that both of you guys have way more than three to five bodies. She belongs way to more. the streets. No, way Mine, more. Mine's, I mine's, guarantee. Mine's not much higher. I, get, I wanted to ask you a question, if I may. Is it, What's up? Is it related? But go ahead. What's up? It's related to sex. Okay. So, like I said, I've been watching the podcast, right, for a while. So, I was following your story when you were celibate for a very long time. And then you met a lady that took that period of celibacy away from you. And I wanted to ask you if you were still with her. It's private information. Okay. I'm just curious. Bringing it back to body count, though. So you think it's crazy to think like three to five? Yeah. I mean, it depends. How old are you talking here? I mean, what do you mean? How old am I? How talking like here? about what? What woman? What's what's her age? Why? Why does what, it matter? I don't. Because if you're talking about an 18 year old, you sure, know what I yes. mean? Sure. Yes. Okay. Obviously, someone who's a bit older, she's had more exactly. relationship experience, she might have a higher body count, right? Yeah. If you're talking about a 30 sure. year old, like three to five is just. I don't know. For me, I, it's just so ridiculous. Cause well, okay. Here, we'll go around the table. I want to go around the table on this. Um, so I forgot everyone's individual answers on this. Well, okay. If body count doesn't matter, right? Body count does doesn't matter, it shouldn't matter. Does it matter? It what? does to many men, yes. No, I'm saying, I'm not saying it, sh it doesn't matter. Because, like, if you have, like, hundreds, like, okay, come on, bro. Like, or, like, 50, like, there gets to a point where it's a little excessive, right? But three to five, like... No, I don't think three. I didn't say three to five is high. Oh. I didn't say three to five is high. But you said th like three to five. You think that's insane for a girl to have a three to five body count. Yeah, someone said that. Am I you, pulling that out of air? I think, what? Did, am I pulling out of thin air? I thought one of you guys said three to five. S said is what? it desirable? No, range? three to five was like too much. Oh. Or maybe, oh, I, maybe I see I what you're saying. I, I haven't said I see that. what you're saying. Maybe I just pulled it. I don't know. I see what you're saying. Okay. I mean, maybe. there's, there are, I will say there are many men out there who, you know, it's a saying on the internet all the time, no hymen, no diamond. Like there are many men out there who prefer virgins. Now, obviously that's hard to find, particularly at 30 years old, but like many men out there do not want to be with a woman who slept with a bunch of guys. Where are they from? Like, these are just normal dudes throughout anywhere. all of Get America the and the Western world. Abdul. Yeah. Get the rocks. Get the rocks. You say, where are they from? But you have to realize this has been the preference of men throughout all of human history. I guess, I guess, I, I think that... Now, now, not all men, I will add, not all men. Some men don't really care that much. I would say a majority of men don't care. I would say the majority of men that I know absolutely do care. Well, that's a different community. It's not, I mean, yeah, I'm, I, I'm not friends with like a bunch of leftists, for example, but like the majority of dudes I know who even aren't particularly political like they yes 
across the board, generally speaking, prefer women with lower body counts. Well, yeah, and I mean, I mean, that's fine. I mean, like, I, I don't have like an astronomically high body count. It's just like, I, I don't like, I feel like that's such an ongoing argument with men and like body counts. And I think it just like triggers me because it goes back to like what I was talking about before about just like that. Grid One Motorsports donated $100. Body count matters, my body count is high, my wife's was low. I was 34 when we met and she was 23. Based. I do not feel like I am a particularly uncommon. My body count did not matter to her although she has over the years teased me about it while I did care. There we go. So. Thank you, Grid One, appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much because you just let me right into what I was going to say is that yep. it like it's such a double standard where it's yes, like it men is. and I don't like that. And I think it like, it just triggers me. Cause like that just gets under my skin. It's like, who the F are you to tell me or judge me on my body count when your body count is probably 10 times higher than mine. Like who, who the hell? It's just like, it just bugs me and triggers me because it's like, it's just crazy to me. Like how, how do you think you're in any position to judge when you well, know, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely smart. not you and not you personally. I just mean in general. I think I, I I personally find it ridiculous when dudes that have slept with hundreds of women like judge women super harshly over it. But also at the same time, you know, one of the things that we've talked about on the show many times is yes, there's a double standard, but it exists for a reason, and that reason is, look, I mean, you could go out tonight and find a hundred dudes that would want to sleep with you. You're a pretty woman, got good energy, guarantee you could get laid by a hundred different guys throughout the city. For guys, it's a totally different story. It's a totally different story. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm a decently good looking guy compared to the average. I don't think I'm like an ultra giga Chad, but like even for a guy like me, like it's the, the number of women that I could sleep with compared to the number of men that you could sleep with, it's a huge differential. And the reason why there is a double standard is because if a woman wants to rack up a, high, a very high body count, like if a woman wants to sleep with a hundred guys, all she has to do is open her legs. If a guy wants to sleep with a hundred women, he has to become an absolute stud in order to do so. Now I, that doesn't mean yep. that it's okay for him to do so. I, I don't, I totally disagree with men sleeping with tons of women. I think it's bad for society. I also think it's bad for society for women to sleep with a lot of men. But the reason why the double standard exists is because it's very easy for women to get sex it's much more difficult for, for men to get sex. And it's, I said earlier in the show that one of the signs of a high value woman is a woman who can say no, mm -hmm. right? If a woman can, can say no to men, that shows that she can express discretion. She has self-control, she has self-discipline, and those are desirable traits in a mate, right? A lot of women, <clears throat> You know, women, women like guys that are desired by many other women, you know, like, and, and one of the reasons why it's judged less, less harshly towards men is because if a woman, if, if a guy has a ton of options and he slept with a lot of women and he's like an absolute stud and he decides that he likes you, like women will often overlook it because they're like, wow, this guy could have like any woman he wants and he's choosing me. Mm -hmm. And so it gets judged less harshly. Right, but guys look at it differently because it's like, well, you could sleep with like any man on the planet if you wanted to, and if you have done so, it's like, that's not good. But if you have chosen not to, especially from like a partnership and marriage perspective, if a woman is able to say no, that's a green flag, right? If a woman can't say no or she won't say no, then it's a red flag because it's like we were talking about earlier in the show, it's like, you have to ensure paternity, like, I, as a guy, there's like biological mechanisms in my mind where I'm like, okay, I want to make sure that you're going to be saying no to other guys in marriage. Or, you know, if a woman has a high body count, it begs the question, are you the type of person who, you know, if a guy gives you the feels, are you just going to sleep with him right off the bat? Could I trust that you wouldn't cheat on me in marriage? Like that's, it's like, I don't even think people really consciously think about it, but that's kind of what's driving the thought process. And it's, it, you know, if, if a woman has slept with like 150 guys or something like that, it's like, whoa, red flag, that's dangerous. She might sleep around while we're married, so on and so forth. Like undesirable in that sense. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that's why there's a double standard there. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that like, again, it's good for men to sleep with a lot of women. I don't think it is. I don't think it's good for either sex to have a lot of partners. Yeah. But that's why the double standard exists. Yeah. I just feel like it's one of those things that men is like, like men just constantly like that's like their like... 
Modest Hikima donated $101. Angry feminist angry because biology. Do I agree with her? Kinda. But also like. Read a biology book about animals, not humans. And then read a book about human animals. Knowledge is wild. Men hit prime mid to late 30. Women, 20 to 25. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for those facts. Go, go ahead. Do you want to respond? Did you? To I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah. But well, yeah. I mean, just to address the double standard thing. So I, I think it would be a double standard if, for example, I didn't think it was okay for women to care about body count. I absolutely think I don't, if a woman doesn't want to date a guy with a high body count, that's totally fine. I think that's where the double standard is. Now, I see what you're saying about this double standard where men are to some degree revered if they can sleep with a lot of women and women are shamed for it. Chase already kind of pretty much addressed that. I mean, I would say that it really comes down to most women can sleep with most men. Most men cannot sleep with most women. Yes. Ergo, it's to some degree, like Chase said, a guy has to bring something to the table. He has to be impressive in some way. He has to be a stud in order to sleep with a ton of like a ton of women whereas the reverse it's very easy for women any girl here at this table could be a slut if she wanted to yeah you could just like we've had uh, like any woman could be like an insane sex addict but like we we had a girl a show with a girl who she was a sex addict she slept with five guys in a day in order for a guy to sleep with five women in a day he has to be like so insanely fucking attractive these were new guys by the way and she was doing this every single night for like weeks on end was my understanding you need to be like drake you need to be the top 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 tier professional athlete you need to be a famous musician famous actor if you want to sleep with that many women Grip that's the difference so it's not respected $100. um to add to what chase is saying when i was young i slept around because i could but chose women that i knew were not wife potential if they were going to give me sex, I was certainly not going to turn it down. However, they had zero relationship potential. Yep, there you have it. You're, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. So your guy, you're trying to tell me that your guys' inboxes or your DMs are not flooded with messages. You couldn't go out and bang 50 chicks tonight if you wanted to. No. No. I mean... No. I got a lot of girls. Gre DMs, Chase, but... Chase is a chat. <laughs> I'm Chase sure you has both a lot do. of DMs. Huh? I'm sure you both do no. from like, cause, you know. I have, but look, I mean, we're on a, a freaking super viral dating podcast. Like yeah. we're extreme outliers in the population. Before doing this, no, I did not have a bunch of women that were in my DMs all the time, you know? Like now, yes, there's a decent amount of chicks in my DMs. I won't lie, but <laughs> the point. That's not like an own though. That's not an own because like we can take an average woman who's 19 years old, who has a thousand followers on Instagram, who goes to college, she's getting the equivalent amount of sexual attention or, well, she's getting d DMs that is reserved for guys with like substantial social media followings. Like yeah, average 19 year old dudes in college are not getting DM'd by girls getting offers to be flown out and getting sugar sugar mama offers. That doesn't exist. It's, it's, it's actually crazy. Like there's 19 year old girls from here in the area that have come on the show and they've got like five, 10,000 followers on Instagram getting DMs from like football players and rappers and like all this kind of stuff. And ultimately what it comes down to in my opinion is like, it's if, like Brian was saying, if, if you guys want to sleep with a ton of men, that's very easy to do so. And I think, I think where the judgment comes from is it's like, if a woman, you know, you've been with guys that like you've, you've liked and you've been attracted to and so on and so forth. And some of those guys have been like bad choices for you, mm -hmm. you know? And the thing, the thing that's going to really impress a man who cares about your past is if he's going to see, okay, you were in positions of temptation and you chose to exercise self-control and you knew your value and your worth and you were not going to give yourself to men who didn't deserve you, mm. right? Because a lot of women, one of the things that I've noticed about, about women and kind of female psychology is a lot of women, 
you know, the body count thing is interesting because there's women out there who just like they're horny and they want to have sex. Like I, I met a ton of girls like that here in Isla Vista when I was in college. Like there were so many girls in my dorm complex. They just, they wanted to go get laid. Did you go to UCSB? No, I went to city college, oh, okay. but I, I lived at one of the dorms here in Isla, Isla Vista. And there were all these girls there that just like, you know, they just wanted to go get laid, you know, sometimes or oftentimes I think women will give sex in order to get love mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they will give, so you guys agree with that. Mm -hmm. A lot of times given women will give sex to men who do not deserve them or their sex, mm -hmm. right? Like uh, women will give themselves to men who are not good men. They don't deserve those women, but women crave love. And so they'll give their bodies to bad men and then they'll get burned. And oftentimes this will result in like an unhealthy pattern where it'll repeat over and over and over again. And I think a lot of women will rack up higher body counts because of this pattern, right? Mm -hmm. Which is why I've suggested, hey, like, you know, filter the bad guys by not having sex with them right off the bat. You'll be able to tell who actually likes you for you. and part of the reason why that judgment is there and why it's a red flag for men is because it's, I mean, speaking from personal experience, it's like if a woman has a high body count, it's like, are you able to exercise self-control? It's easy for you to have sex or are you able to turn things down even if you feel an emotional pull? Does that make sense? Yeah, do you think if a girl has a high body count that she lacks that control to? I think, I don't necessarily think like it's a guarantee that she lacks that control, but I think it begs the question, does she have it? You know, because if a woman's a virgin, let's say there's a really attractive woman and she's a virgin, right? You know that woman has self-control. You know damn well that that woman is like, there's probably a bunch of guys, if, let's say a girl's super hot and she's a virgin, you know there's a bunch of guys throwing themselves at her and she's shooting them down. You know that woman has self-control. You don't necessarily know that a woman doesn't have self-control if she has a high body count, but it is, a good guarantee that she doesn't have good judgment when it comes to guys and it begs the question is she a slave to her emotions or can she govern her actions does that make sense yeah and it goes back to the paternity thing that brian was talking about earlier we have a biological need and a biological drive to ensure our paternity because like if i marry a woman and i sleep with her but she also sleeps with another man and she cheats on me and then he gets her pregnant like i would be screwed raising that guy's kid if I didn't know that it wasn't my own, right? Get, we want to avoid that. Yeah, when, I feel like if I was a man, I would get a DNA test no matter what. Like I'm getting a DNA test, you know what I mean? Like that would be like my first thing as a man. Like if a girl was like, I'm pregnant, I'd be like, okay, DNA test, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, I, I think know? if you trust a woman and her character, it's not necessary. Like I don't even want to be with a woman where that would be a question in my mind. Yeah, <laughs> no, know? definitely. Yeah, and I think yeah, and I think like body, body count's just frustrating for me because it's like I'm literally like so loyal. Like if I'm in a relationship with you, I'm like the most loyal person ever. And then it's like. I don't know. Like, well, and I think on top of that too, part of the reason why it's probably frustrating for you is because you're like, okay, I can't go back in time and change my mistakes. Like yeah. what's, what's done is done. Mm -hmm. I think all you can do moving forward is change your, your future actions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which is why I've been like harping so much like, yo, filter guys better. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. filter guys better. Cause what you don't want is to get into a relationship with the wrong kind of guy and then have him waste half your thirties. Yeah. And then you're screwed at the already end of your thirties. <laughs> What'd you say? I said already did that. <laughs> yeah, like you don't have time to waste, you know? <laughs> yeah. I think all you can do is just like, I, I would recommend change your behaviors, start filtering guys better and just pray to God for the man that he created for you. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So the question, which now must be a oh, riven at, if body count matters, what is your body count? Ask you what you think a high body count is. Just answer the question. Oh no. Just answer. Fifteen. Okay. Do not multiply that by three. That's multiply not by three. She, she watches the show. <laughs> she watches the show. What about you? I am not going to disclose my body count. Range. And no range. Range. I'm not giving a range. What the heck? I didn't do know. It. I didn't know there was an option. <laughs> Just do it. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just <laughs> do it. Make your dreams come true. Just do it. To, does, has Shia motivated you? Mm -hmm. No. I love Shia. No, Probably like 15. 15? Okay. Zero. I don't want to say because it's kind of embarrassing. No, oh, it's not. Why is it embarrassing? Because it's too low or too high? I'm 
No, it's uh, no, no, no. It's Into the mic. Oh no, because I, I, I don't know. I just don't feel comfortable saying. Oh, it. I see. Okay. I did not know that was an option to opt out. Oh. Oh shit. I know, and no one ever opts out. Look, I can't force somebody to. You'll be like, if you don't feel comfortable no. to say anything, you're no, you're not going to be comfortable. You'll be like, why did you come on dating show if you didn't want to say your body count? And, I haven't. No, I've yeah. never done that. Never done that. That's a different one. I've, I've never said that. Uh, these girls did their research apparently. Uh, uh, she did. I didn't. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> multiply it by three, and that's the real number. No, that's <laughs> not true. Wait, you said fifteen. I said five. No, you didn't. Uh, five times three is fifteen, so five. Oh God, help us. And you said fifteen. Ish. 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 Oh, ish again. Ish. Okay. The pl- the I just didn't want to put the ish the there, ish but it's. I'm a hard. I'll say fifteen to twenty. F- oh, fifteen to twenty. Yeah. Okay. I'm not gonna explain. Do you have why. any brothers? I am actually an only child. Only child. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, From huh. a single mom. I I was screwed from the beginning. It's fine. Wait, fifteen to fifteen to twenty. Yeah. So what is How it? Is, is it 15? Range? Is it 20? Yeah. Oh, like you're not, you're just not quite sure. I'm Dating not on gonna, mode. I'm not going to disclose the reasonings why. What the heck? I would, uh, is it the you, military To thing? be honest with you, if 15 is true, it's not like astronomically high. I know. That's what I was saying before. I was like, it's not, my number is not like, like an astronomical There's a lot of guys numbers. that like wouldn't like be like oh my god you're ruined for life now if you had said like mm-hmm. 70 or 80 that's crazy who's walking around story. with 70 bodies i should have totally just been dramatic and been Ryan? like 200 there's <laughs> there's there are people walking around are you surprised. in the 70s range brian i do not disclose this oh wait disclose. so you make us disclose but yeah you that's, won't that's disclose? the name of the game that's that's I not hold how that the works <laughs> that's not how that works uh well i guess it is how it works all right we have oh my god bro i can't um, guarantee the morbidly obese woman's DMs are just, just as full as Brutal. Chase's DMs. Let that sink in, women. Look at what he looks like. Like, look at you. Yeah. You are Trav- so ugly. Ooh, like, Trav- who oh, are you to wow. call anyone like the potato. obese? Look at your face. Wow. Okay, <laughs> first off, I love <laughs> how everybody's face. taking offense to this but me. I know damn well yeah, I have no one in your I DM. really don't. I ugly. don't care, right. honestly. Here, last... Travola, if you want to fire back, uh, I'm going to wrap up the show here pretty soon. Curtis Leone, Amazon Girl X86 Assembly. It allows you to do any programming functionality. Prison Girl, Brian is a hypothetical prison inmate. So, huh? Chase, I'm not a religious person, but a lot of the values you present are spot on with any man. Great values. Beautiful. Much love, brother. Thank Thanks you, for Curtis. the super chat. Thank you, Curtis. Appreciate it. Can I ask you guys a question? Go ahead. What's up? What? Is, what? How? How high is too high for you guys? Like, what would you count? Ca- just, just give me an average. It's hard. Average. I mean, I'm a, I'm a just man. I believe in redemption. <laughs> oh God, that's so. Oh. But however, you know, look. Uh, I w- Modest Hakima donated one hundred and one dollars. DNA test no matter what is seen as misogynistic when asked for by the father. Why girl number one? Did she also say mad respect for sharing body count. Not very high all things considered. Jackie, please know you can move from WA and work remote 100% for higher dollar. Word. Thank you. I Wait, know. did you say it was misogynistic? He I said don't think DNA did. test, no matter what, is going to look as misogynistic okay. if you ask that. Right. I feel like I feel like a lot of women, if you ask them right off the bat to just do a DNA test, particularly if you're married, do them. Yeah, that's take, like amazing. extreme offense to it. That's yeah. like a fight well, waiting to happen. Were... That's like a huge fight. That's waiting like to you're happen. sleeping on the couch or actually just sleep in your car. Yeah. Like, uh, like if you trust your woman. And she trusts you, and you're like, yo, I need you to do a DNA test. She's yeah. going to be like, what? Yeah. I mean, it better be a joke. I mean, if I was... I'll like, give I you a moment to joke, so. but... No. Nickelodeon says, the question was total body count, not in one day. Platoon Booper. Also, I was trying to be nice, not calling her a name, but please ask Kim Chung Eel <laughs> to answer my nationalism question. What was his mm-hmm. question? Did your boyfriend what radicalize was... you on nationalism? No, he's a nationalist. He's like a Christian nationalist. Oh, based. Yeah, he's like America are the, first. Are you the girl with the groper boyfriend? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, well, sorry. What, so, what were you saying? You were at, you were gonna ask us a question, but then the TTS came in. Oh, what was too? What's too high of a body count? Yeah. The yeah. lower the better. Okay, but just, okay, just like, but no, that's don't. ballpark it. The lower the better. Shout out to my Christian nationalists. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, double digit. I start doing an eyebrow raise. 
once it gets into double digit territory. Um, Same. Major eyebrow raise more than 20. Major eyebrow raise like more than 30. That's, I mean, again though, very strong preference for like low, low, low body count, as low as possible. Brian, what is I'm your body count? Not revealing that. He's not going to. Not revealing Chase, that. Chase, what is your body count? I've said in the past it's eight. Really? You have said it in the past, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> You watched the last episode. I don't reveal. I don't reveal. I didn't watch the last episode. Oh, shit. Or did I? We're watching it on the way home. My, my, so I'll I'll give you the answer that I've given in the past. I was, I think the first episode I ever did, some girl was like, I I said, my limit is my own body count. Oh. And then I said that I would prefer a virgin. And then some girl that was on the panel was like, okay, but what if you met like a really amazing girl, but hers was higher than you. Mm -hmm. And I told her, she'd have to be really amazing. Mm-hmm. That's my answer. Yeah. You know? That's fair. Hmm. It's fair. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to wrap up. Fin- any final thoughts before I wrap up from anybody? Speak now forever. Hold your... No, thank you for oh, yeah, having Twitch. me. Thank you for having us. Fun. This I was appreciate really it. fun. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, t- we'll do Twitch really quick. Guys, go to twitch.tv. Drop us a follow. Drop us a prime sub on your way out. Uh, and then Dr. Sun, hey, thank you for the Prime Man. Appreciate it. Twitch.tv slash whatever. Guys, last call. Please hit that like button, please, on your way out. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in tonight. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. I appreciate that. Thank you to everyone who super chats, donates, supports the show. Uh, we Apologies to some of you. I know some of you sent in some chats. Those girls left, and some of them were just at them. We had to pause some of them, and your chat was related to a conversation that had already passed. Um, the frequency was just really high. I, so for future shows, might think about potentially, I'll have to figure out a way to address it. But I do want to thank uh, some of our more regular patrons, Grid One Motorsports, thank you. Raven, thank you. Cam H, thank you. Seaberg, uh, LPE, Modest Jacama. I think most of you actually were here tonight. Jay Butler, Whiskey Squirrel. Thank you guys so much for patronage. Very much appreciate it. Shout out to the boys. Thank you guys. Thank you, uh, boys. Thank you to the wonderful panel, those of you who made it to the end, I suppose. Um, <laughs> any women who want to be on the show and you can make it to Santa Barbara, DM out whatever on Instagram. We will be live again Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific. Uh, got a very good panel for Tuesday. Be sure to tune in. And uh, man, I had so many other things <laughs> I want to talk about, but unfortunately we're out of time. So we'll see you next time, guys. 07's in the chat. Good night. 07's